Uh, this should do. How do you feel? Oh, can't complain. After all, there's a cozy tree in my back. But I promise, this will be the last fire. After tonight, it won't be trees anymore, but walls and a roof. In Shiring, I will find a job. What if the bishop wants to hire you for life? To keep his palace in shape, but maybe strengthen the town's defenses? Plain things, Tom Builder. Just walls and roofs. There. Took me a lifetime to find some dry ones in this wet. Why didn't we just use your staff? The old thing would have done nicely. Because that thing is precious. It's not made to burn. And we might be able to sell it. Right, now let's see if this does the trick. Yeah, it should be dry enough. I told you. Hurry up, I'm freezing. Martha? You want to cut up some turnips? We'll be making soup. Mm, if it helps. Alfred, you go and look for water. We could just eat snow. No, it'll be proper water for my family. You sit, I'll take care of it. You still haven't answered my question, Tom Builder. What if the bishop offered you a job like they did in Exeter? Something that is beneath your craft, but pays for a lifetime. Easy work. Well, building something is never easy. You know what I mean. After Exeter, you said I could create something that matters. Something that stands for eternity. Or I could die setting up houses and sheds. But what if houses and sheds would feed your family? Would you stay this time? Or would you keep on looking? You know I could do so much more. You said the same thing then, and look where it brought us. Just promise me you'll think about it. Maybe we can sell the baby. Did you see a river nearby? No, it's just woods. <sighs> Can you see the sun yet? No, but Martha... Don't distract me, I'm working. Stupid snow. Why did it have to come down just now? Should never have left. Well, we're here now. Guess there's no use complaining. Aren't you forgetting something? Or are you planning to carry the water with your bare hands? Hungry? I'm fine. Yeah. 
<sighs> Too hard for my fist, but my pot should break it. <sighs> Houses and sheds. Walls and roofs. I could do so much better. But I have to feed my family. And did you think about what I asked you? I might never build a cathedral. Is that so bad? Why is a cathedral so special? Well, you've seen a few. You should know. Yes, but there are so many already. Why do you have to build another one? Is it because God needs more houses? <laughs> May I? If you must. Well. Actually, a cathedral isn't so different from any other house. It always starts simple, with some walls. And on top of that, you put a roof. Very good. A roof to keep off the rain, and walls to keep up the roof. Together that makes one big, long, but dark room. Like a cave. <laughs> So of course you may want some light coming in. Windows. Right. So the people inside can see what they're doing. Um, I think you forgot something. People can't get in if there are only walls. So, what do you suggest? Doors, of course. Right. And not only doors, but a big and impressive one to let in as many people as possible. By now, we've carved quite a few holes in our cathedral. Unfortunately, not every building can carry a roof like that and have so many windows. So what do we do? Good and solid work. That's what we do. If we don't want our cave to collapse, we have to make everything perfect. Not only strong, but consistent and perfectly even. The walls, the roof, the windows, everything perfectly proportioned. You shouldn't say big words like proportioned when talking to a child. What does it mean? It means beauty. Well, it means not only will it keep them dry, it will give them hope. Like this? <laughs> Mama? <sighs> the baby is coming. But it's not due. Have your waters broken yet? Soon after we started walking this morning. You should have told me. I'm so tired. 
I don't believe I can bring it into the world. Oh, look at all the blood. <laughs> right, what can I do to help? Cover me. W will she die? Sh she'll die, right? Mama. <laughs> Children. Alfred. Get more water. Take snow if you must and make it warm. Right. What can I do? Collect some reeds and make me two lengths of string, each big enough for a necklace. What for? You'll see. warm now. Put it next to me. Collect more wood. Let's have a bigger fire. More wood? Do what your father tells you. Y yes, mother. Remember when Martha was born and the Lady Isabella acted as midwife? You were building a chapel. And you asked her to send her maid to fetch the midwife from the village. Yeah, and she said, that drunken old witch will let her deliver a literal wolfhound pups. And she took us to our own chamber. And poor Lord Robert could not go to bed until Martha was born. It's coming! Help me, Tom! It's coming! I can see it. looks horrible. He's perfect. A perfect boy. You're still bleeding. It's all right. It will stop soon. Tom. Yes? Thank you for being my midwife. Do you remember the night I came to you, in your lodge, when you were working on my father's church? Of course. How could I ever forget? I never regretted giving myself to you. Never. For one moment. Every time I think of that night, I feel so glad. Me too. I hope you build your cathedral. I thought you were against it. 
I was. But I was wrong. You deserve something beautiful. Build a beautiful cathedral for me. Papa, what's wrong with her face? Agnes! Agnes, wake up! The year of our Lord, 1135, had come to an end. King Henry of England, son of William the Conqueror, had died. It was a time of poverty and death. In their despair, some had come to believe Christ and all his saints had gone to sleep. And that the pillars of the earth themselves had begun to crumble. Is there no one to welcome us? Who goes there? You just crossed the bridge, right? That'll be a farthing for you and a penny for your horse. Monks and villagers don't have to pay a toll. Ah, sorry, I'm not good at this. I told Brother Paul. It's not easy doing the Lord's work when you're hungry. It is not much, but I can share this with you. Now it will be easier for you to fulfill your duties. Oh, I'm sure it will. Will you take care of my horse, brother? I've come to see Prior James. 
Prior James? That's him the bells are tolling for. Leave the horse here. I I'll get it down to the Priory later. The fish should go nicely with that cheese. What? Why are they ringing the bells? Don't you know? The devil has come to Kingsbridge. The devil has come to Kingsbridge? Whoever is righteous has regard for the life of his beast. I'm sure there was someone moving behind a window, but most houses are empty. The monks of Kingsbridge and their servants, I wonder which of them led a more pious life. They lock it. Maybe the side entrance is open. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. The moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the pestilence that walketh in darkness. The pestilence that rode in on the lightning that struck our cathedral four years ago. Did you not all feel its presence here ever since? James did, and I did as well. But the Lord says, Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Our beloved prior James has served the Lord all his life. He shall be delivered from the darkness, from this darkness. Dark Earth. Prior James? Philip. Francis? Shh. For many years, James has been our prior. After the upcoming election, I vow to lead Kingsbridge Priory with the same steady hand. Amen.
Philip. We told your brother you'd come to Kingsbridge New Year's Day. I did not expect to see you here. I was on my way back to Gloucester and wanted to see you. A priest working in the world of politics. You must tell us about it, Francis. Of course. And his brother a prior of what now? Two years? It's been four years, Cuthbert. <laughs> I see. How are things in St. John in the forest, Philip? Our little cell is happy and healthy. Happy and healthy? Thanks to your brother, Francis, St. John in the forest is prospering. His novices are obedient, his monks humble and pious. Well, our own priory is in such a sorry state. You know James did the best he could. It was not his fault. Also, they make a remarkable cheese in St. John's. <laughs> Come by the kitchen later to see us, will you? Brother Cuthbert seemed upset. Well, we all are. The way James died was disturbing. Disturbing? How did Prior James die? Seven days ago, Brother Remigius found James's room empty. We all looked for him for hours. Then we found his footprints by the bridge and a, a hole in the ice. Oh no. No. In the small hours of Christmas Day, he must have walked out on the river. We didn't even find his body. The river took him, and the cold. I will pray for James. See me when you have time, Philip. I will be in the cathedral. And I should go and see how Brother Cuthbert is doing. It's good to see you, Philip. Maybe things will get better after the chapter elects the new prior. Hopefully. I will come by the kitchen later, Milius. So what do you think it means? I don't know. There is no reason to punish us for asking. At least it wasn't Remedius who punished us. You look like you want to ask me something. You are Philip of Gwyneth? Uh, yes, uh, but you can call me Brother Philip. You see? Told you he wouldn't mind. Yes. Now ask him. How about you ask him? I already asked Brother Andrew. That doesn't count. He wouldn't answer. Of course it counts. If you promise to lower your voices from now on. Oh, of course. We promise. Brother Milius told us you know the scripture very well. Could you tell us about God's temple? Brother Andrew wouldn't tell us. It must be a place. A cathedral. That's probably what the guest master was talking about. If you do something to a cathedral, it would be a sin. Each of us is God's temple in the way that he created us. And what, what if someone does something to God's temple? The scripture says, if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him even if he destroys his own temple of God. So for Prior James, there's no salvation as well. For a self-murderer, there is no salvation. What if the devil takes our souls too? Commit yourselves to God. Be humble and pious. Be without sin. God's grace will not allow the devil to lay hand on any of you. 
Prior James will face judgment. It is between him and God. Do not be afraid. No, Brother Philip. Thank you, Brother Philip. I believe they have enough to discuss. So, uh, again, we're all God's temple. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. I'm happy to see you, little brother. It's good to see you too, Philip. Your hair is starting to get a bit grey. Yours isn't. At least in this one case, I will be the one to boldly charge ahead of you. You've always been bold. You just don't admit it to yourself. <laughs> Francis, what are you doing here? King Henry is dead. I know. Word reached St. John shortly before I left. First the King, and now Prior James. The devil has come to Kingsbridge. What? Just something I heard. Something foolish. And yet, these are dark times indeed. King Henry's death caused quite a commotion in the world of politics. There will be war. Only we could stop the suffering. Maybe we can. I came not just to meet you. I was sent to look for a messenger of my lord, Earl Robert. Here? In Kingsbridge? Farmers said the messenger was heading for Kingsbridge two weeks ago. The knight was carrying a confidential document that might change the course of the conflict. People here trust you. Maybe the monks here know something? We will find him. One more thing. No one can know why we're looking for the knight. Our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
About that night. He was carrying an important document for my master. You have to find it. Locked. This priory is so much bigger than our small cell in the forest. Philip! Brother Milius. Come! Warm yourself by the oven. Is that Philip? Tell him to warm himself by the oven. Thank you, Brother Cuthbert. Ah, wonderful. I always put some extra stones on the stove to warm up water. Put one in your pocket, and you'll keep warm. Oh? Ouch! Careful, they're hot. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Praise the Lord. Hard at work, as usual, Milius? I have to serve salt fish six times a week now. We hear you have fresh fish every day at your cell in the forest. Every other day, we even have poultry. You have done wonderful work at St. John's, Philip. We, on the other hand, had a week prior for 13 years. May the Lord rest his soul. What you worked hard for at St. John's is wasted here in the Mother House. After the election, the new prior ought to put things right. Remedius, put things right. Maybe we underestimate Remedius. He's about to burn all the books and documents in the prior's room. Including the priory's ledgers. Remedius says James asked for everything to be burnt after his death, except for his Bible. What? Without the ledgers, the priory's finances will be beyond saving. Did you see a knight in Kingsbridge? You mean, aside from the nobles attending the Christmas service? No, 
I don't remember any knights visiting us. Was no one else nominated? Only Cuthbert. I refuse. I'm too old. No one else dares to follow in Prior James's footsteps. Not since he began talking to the devil. What? One day he started talking to the devil, as if they were standing side by side. He was bargaining with the devil for his soul, whispering about his sins. His sins? We'll talk more later. Brother Cuthbert. Ah, we were waiting for you. I hope you brought some of that wonderful cheese you make at St. John's. I... Uh, I gave it to one of your novices. Why would you do that? He said it's not easy doing the Lord's work when you're hungry. Greedy brother Marcus. You are too trusting, Philip. Has there been a knight to Kingsbridge recently? Hmm. Milius, wasn't there a poor soul found dead before Christmas? I don't know if he was a knight. He was put to rest in the cemetery. The cemetery? That was the right thing to do. Brother Cuthbert, you seem worried. Prior James was a kind man. But the Priory is in a terrible state, fellow. Philip knows. He was just too kind to say anything. Yes, I know. I wanted to use my New Year's visit to talk with Prior James about these matters. We should be rich. The Priory has much land and collects from many parish churches. But we are in debt. Our novices steal from us, Philip. The novices are stealing? Yes. Someone took my keys. Remigius blames me for losing them. But someone used them to steal food from the cellar more than once. Today I found something missing again. Let us continue another time, Brother Cuthbert. Of course. Brother Ronaldus, how are you? Huh? What? How are you? Are you well? Oh, Brother Philip. Yes, I am well. It's just that the dead won't stay in the ground. What? The dead. It's probably those badgers always digging up the graves.
My father gave the Priory a good deal of land to keep me fed. I won't eat salted fish all day. Me neither. Shall we go into the cellar again tonight? Yes, Brother Marcus. You still have old Cuthbert's keys? Indeed I do. I hid them right in the church. Stuffed them in the large crack in the wall. I could do some crack stuff in myself. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could. I asked not to be disturbed. Brother Remigius, I'm sorry I interrupted your service. You mean Prior James's service? Quite so. I heard he fell through the ice. Horrible. Yes. I was the one who found his rosary by the river. Now let me continue my work. Why would Prior James walk out onto the river at night? He was chased. Chased? By whom? The accuser. But why would the devil be chasing him? Better to not get involved in all this, hmm? Don't you have your own Priory cell to run? You really believe the devil killed the prior? Some of the brothers do, and I respect their beliefs. We may never know what happened, and that's that. Now let me get back to my work. Did a knight come to Kingsbridge within the last few weeks? Of course. Even the bishop and the earl were here for the Christmas service. I held the sermon. And the week before? Uh, that week I was not here. Andrew Sacrist and I traveled to Shiring to hire cooks and buy food for our guests. I see. Brother Marcus stole Cuthbert's keys. Brother Marcus. I will deal with him. You were right to report this to me. Theft is something we cannot take lightly. About the keys that were stolen by Brother Marcus. I will deal with him. You were right to report this to me. Say, has there been a knight to Kingsbridge? A knight? A knight? Yes. He's here. Right here. Uh, do you know who he was? How did he die? Brother Paul found him. Where is Paul? Down at the bridge. Freezing his walnuts off, I reckon. He talked to him. I only put him in the ground. That's all I ever do. Do you have any idea what the knight was doing here? Probably tried to jump off the end of the world. Wh what do you mean? There is nothing here. Kingsbridge lies at the end of the road. Nobody comes here. Hmm. 
No, no sign of the messenger. All of us. Because... Because God created us in his image. The novice said he hid the keys in here. They're here. I have them. This brother Marcus really did steal Cuthbert's keys. Let's see what we can find. No reason to be afraid. Nothing. These old cathedrals are bound to make strange sounds. Thought so. Nothing here. Nothing here. The saint rests in peace. Hello? Oh! What is that? of the child. Hello? Oh. Oh. An owl. Just an owl. The saint rests in peace. The cathedral, it is not for me to take that seat.
That's why we can all pray to him. We don't need to go to church for that. No, we are the temple. But why? What we have to ask ourselves is, can our Saint Adolphus still protect Kingsbridge in these dark times? He couldn't protect Prior James. Ever since that lightning struck the cathedral, he wasn't the same. When you take over my position as sacrist, you should implore the bishop to send us a new relic. By then, I'll be sub-prior. The new prior and I will support you in this. All Kingsbridge needs is faith and hard work. Philip of Gwyneth. I wanted to talk to you. How dare you disturb Brother Remedius' requiem? I'm... I'm afraid the choir is waiting for me. Stay, brother. There's no reason you shouldn't hear what Philip has to say for himself. I was shocked by the prior's death. We all were. Now, I'm sure at St. John's you're a good prior, but here we adhere to the rules. Brother Andrew, have you heard about a knight in Kingsbridge? Aside from the ones that visited for Christmas? No. If there had been an official guest, I would know. And no one stayed at our guest house. You mentioned a new prior. The election will be held in a few days, when we all convene for the chapter meeting. Let us continue this conversation later. Of course. There's a lot of planning for me to do for the upcoming election. Why cathedral? Why do we create temples if we are the temple? Isn't it almost arrogant to try and build a greater temple? Don't say that. Why not? We wouldn't be here if it weren't for the cathedral. It feeds us. Why is this locked? We are people of God, yet we need to eat too. We come together here, the pilgrims donate. These novices learn to close the door.
Ouch! Don't do that, you'll burn your fingers off. Nice and warm, and I didn't burn my hands, Milius. I knew you could do it. Milius, why do you keep a beautiful pot like this around? Oh, it, uh, it reminds me that we should strive for order and beauty. I started collecting some seeds and nuts because I wanted to start a new garden. A good idea. I never got around to collecting more, though. If you find some, let me know. Milius, may I have a word with you? What can I do for you, Brother Philip? You look like you have something important to do. I'll be here if you need me. Brother Caspers. Philip. Caspers, I believe I found your keys. Where did you find them? The thief hid them in the cathedral. That is a sacrilege. Will you report the thief to Remigius, Brother Philip? I already have. Keep them until we know what to do, will you? I will leave you to your work. I will leave you to yours. Brother Paul? Philip. Ah, ouch. Oh. What's wrong with your foot, Brother Paul? Oh, just a chill, brain. It will ease when the spring comes. You should have a fire. It's all right. It's not that cold. Don't take it lightly. Many will die this winter. For lack of food or shelter. Remigius thinks the Lord is testing us. Only the sinners perish. No, the poor perish. And those that he has freezing out here. Don't say anything to Remigius, will you? If he thinks I've been complaining, he'll be displeased. Have you heard about a knight in Kingsbridge? A knight? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. He was just lying by the road, just a mile away from the priory. He must have fallen from his horse. Where is he now? He died. We buried him in the cemetery. Did he have a name? Did he say anything? Oh, 
He could not speak, but the look in his eyes told me he was afraid. I held his hand and prayed with him while he died. Did the knight have anything with him? Uh, there was a letter. I gave it to Prior James. Remedius will probably burn it with the rest of James's papers. James insisted that all his books and documents shall be burnt after his death. Except for his Bible. I heard about this. I think that would be unwise. Sometimes I wonder if it was because of that letter. A few days later, Prior James fell through the ice. Right here. Philip, maybe I brought a curse on Kingsbridge. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Have faith in the Lord, Brother Paul. You did well. Thank you, Philip. Here, Paul. Oh. Ouch! Oh. <laughs> A hot stone! <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's a mercy, Philip. Thank you. Remedius should give you a fire, or not have you sit here at all. I don't really mind. Winter is bound to end sometime. Philip, if you ever run into trouble with Remedius, be careful to answer him. Do not stay silent. Silent? Nothing makes him angrier than someone who doesn't answer. He becomes weak and defensive. It's not fitting for a sub-prior, let alone prior. What is it? Can you not see that I'm working? I would like to take a look at Prior James's documents. And why is that, Brother Philip? Well, uh, our little cell has given much to the Mother House. I would like to ensure that all is accounted for. So you do not trust us, Philip. Is that it? The state of this priory. The state of this priory is the concern of the prior of Kingsbridge. I still would like to see the prior's documents. They will be burned tonight. I heard about that. It was Prior James's last wish. I'm following his request. But the new prior will be lost without the ledgers and contracts. After the election, I'll be the new prior. For now, you are not. Only the chapter meeting can decide on these matters. Of course. 
brother Andrew will surely understand why you would go against James's last request. <laughs> About the chapter meeting. Oh, talk to brother Andrew. He will be just as pleased as me to have you around. Now leave. Temple to feed the temple. Yes. We must take good care. I am looking for a document that was in the possession of Prior James. How does that relate to my tasks? Talk to Remedius. We can't allow Prior James's books to be burned. That, Philip, was Prior James's wish. This priory is in debt. And without the ledgers and documents, that will never change. Besides, the wisdom in his books is priceless. It is not up to you to make decisions in this priory, Brother Philip. Do not domineer over those in your charge, but be an example to the flock. 1 Peter, Chapter 5. You are right. You shall argue your case in front of the brothers in a chapter meeting today. Thank you, Brother Andrew. When I'm done here, I will tell all the monks to come to the chapter house. Would it help if I went and told some of them? Feel free to do that. But I insist that the choir finishes practicing before we start. They're already behind schedule. We must. There was something. He's right. You seem troubled, brother. They won't... They won't sing. It's Adolphus. There was nothing, believe me. I heard him crying in the crypt. I think I heard him too. No, you are mistaken. It sounded like a whip, like he was chastising himself. It's the end of days. Brother Philip, please help me. Prove to them that there is nothing and no one down there. There is no need to worry, brothers. Adolphus is resting in peace. It was just an owl. I, I told you it was nothing. God bless you, Brother Philip. I knew I heard something. Now, be silent, concentrate, and... Thank you for your help. How could I not help you? You're my little brother. I knew I could rely on you. The sacrist agreed to a meeting, today. That way I might be able to get the letter you were looking for. Good thinking, Philip. I will attend, of course.
brother Andrew has arranged a meeting. Yes, please go ahead. We will be there in a few minutes. God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. The saint rests in peace. Waste of time. There will be a chapter meeting in a few minutes. Oh, yes, we will be there. Thank you for letting us know. Brother Arnaldus, there's a chapter meeting today. Today, I'll be there. Wouldn't miss that. A waste of time. About the chapter meeting. Oh. Talk to Brother Andrew. He will be just as pleased as me to have you around. Now leave. There will be a chapter meeting today. You convinced Andrew? Miracles do happen. We will be there. You have our support. There will be a chapter meeting today. Excellent. I can't wait to see you and Remigius quarrel. Brother Cuthbert? Do not worry. We are on your side. <laughs> There will be a chapter meeting soon. Ah, thank you for letting me know, Philip. Remember my advice about Remagius.
I found some beech nuts. Ah, we will grow a beech tree then. Wonderful. If we ever get round to starting the garden. I'm sure you will. Has finished singing. The cantor should find time now. Are you ready for the chapter meeting, Brother Philip? If you have any other business to take care of in Kingsbridge, do it now. The meeting could take a long time. The chapter meeting is more important. And this is why Prior James's wish must not be honored. Kingsbridge Priory would be beyond saving without financial records. I think we have all understood the reason for your concern, Brother Philip. But before we come to a decision, let us hear other voices of concern. I would like to know why you would doubt the wisdom in Prior James's decision. Maybe you didn't know him as well as we did, Philip. I can say I knew him well. We all here knew him. So did you know him. How wise was Prior James, really? Philip, you are going too far. I will tell Brothers, you now. Let him speak. Brothers, please. Let's wow. hear what he has let to let say. Speak. Oh, heavens. Hear him out, brothers. I was stubborn as well, but he made me see it. Well, that's not an easy thing to do. Really is. I owe James much. He was the one who asked me to take care of St. John in the forest. One of the most prosperous cells in all of Shiring, if not England. It was a wise decision, then. But his last wish was not? Well, was it? What are you waiting for? Answer me! Is walking on thin ice wise? <gasps> Who does he think he is? May the Lord forgive him. He knows not what he is saying. No. Philip was very hesitant to talk about the state of this priory with me. Usually, he is as careful in his words as he is in his actions. Yes, Philip asked us a question. Was it wise to walk out onto the ice? God was testing Prior James. I say the devil chased him! Do you doubt that? Do you doubt that, Philip? Surely you must have an answer. I know because Prior James confided in me. Then, the devil had a hand in his last wish as well. Yes, I think this is going to be the most certain. So sure. sure. Well, I'm not, not so the sure. The devil. If the devil has come to Kingsbridge, we must cast him out. He has come in the ways of neglect and self-righteousness. Let us look into the books and ledgers. 
Let us look into the problems that have ailed Kingsbridge for much oh, too long, don't you? Oh, nice well, I suppose. How yes. dare you? I agree. Just... Here, here. <laughs> yes, we must be more pious. Only then will God keep the devil from harming us. The novices would be better advised not to speak up. Philip is a good man. He was the only one to say I should have a fire. But did he do anything besides talk? Yes, he brought me a hot stone. That's our Philip. Very well, Philip. But why don't you tell us the real reason you have come before us? You not only came to save these books, you have another motivation, do you not? We deserve the truth. What are your true intentions? I am here only to help this priory. This priory, of course. I say it is not a coincidence that he should make his voice heard now, shortly after James's passing and before the elections. What are you saying, Brother Remigius? This is not about James. It is about him. He wants to be prior. No. I came here to talk to James. I think that is a wonderful idea. I nominate Philip of Gwyneth to be the new prior of Kingsbridge. Eh? Oh, I can't yes. disagree with that. Well, yes, obviously, eh, my choice. Excellent choice. What about Remedius? Oh, eh, That's surprising. Great Prime idea. Philip. <laughs> Brother Philip, do you accept the nomination? Thank you for your kind offer, but we would not want to impose on you, Brother Remigius. Oh, but, but I insist. I will help you. No, you really must not. We will see you later. Thank you. We don't have much time. Evening Mass will begin soon. Should I not have accepted the nomination? You've never been good at saying no. And Milius is right. Kingsbridge needs you. What about St. John's? I will ride there tomorrow. I will let them know you will be staying in Kingsbridge for a few days. Thanks to you, these documents and books will not be burned. Now, we have to find that letter. You truly think the letter can help prevent a war? If the message says what I think it says, then yes, I do. Now, let us look for the letter. The writing here is strangely distorted and illegible, but it must be James's writing. Age can be a troublesome burden. Hmm. Francis, I think I've found it. In the Bible? Revelations. The Apocalypse of St. John. And they called to the mountains and rocks. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. And who can stand? The Lamb? What was James afraid of? Was it this letter? No, the letter is still sealed. Break the seal.
Oh, this is it. You found it. The Earl of Shiring is about to start a war. Yes. He's made contact with my own master, Earl Robert of Gloucester. Who is this King Stephen that has taken the throne? A nephew of King Henry. Do you ever think of the day our parents died? Francis, you know I don't like to talk of that. I know. It's just that I think of them all the time. And I've always blamed King Henry. The church suffered under his rule as much as we did in Wales. Philip, you have to show this letter to the Bishop of Kingsbridge. The Bishop of Kingsbridge? Why? Our late King Henry was opposed to Rome's influence in England. King Stephen, on the other hand, swore to preserve the rights and privileges of the church, and we can help him if you tell the bishop to protect Stephen. You want the bishop to help the new king, King Stephen? I want a king who supports the church. I want these dark times to end. I want to stop the Earl of Shiring from starting a war. He could set the whole of England on fire. My Lord the Earl of Gloucester can never know what I was doing here. You must not tell the truth about how or where you got this letter. Don't tell anyone I was involved. Do you really think the bishop will help? Tell him you found the letter by coincidence. And if he does not believe me, what then? He will believe you. The question is, will he really try to stop the Earl of Shiring? I will write to St. John's and tell your monks you will stay in Kingsbridge until the election. What if the Earl of Shiring finds out what I'm doing? What if the bishop tells him? Philip, calm down. He is your bishop. I'm a simple monk. Who am I to talk to a bishop? Yes. My name is Jack. 
For a long time, it was the only name I had known. I was born and raised in a cave by my mother. We were used to getting by, but that year the winter had been harsh. I was proud to have killed my first deer that day. And while waiting for mother to help me cure it, I decided to practice my reading. The Lord and King of all France, Charles the Great, has spent seven long years fighting in Spain. <laughs> he has conquered the highlands and the plain. Uh, he... The Lord and King of all France, Charles the Great, has spent seven long years fighting in Spain. He has conquered the highlands and the plain. Before him, not a single fort remains. Afternoon was approaching fast, and Mother still hadn't returned. So, if I wanted to cure the meat, I had to do it on my own. Else it would all go to waste. I can't eat it raw. I need to cure it. Meat goes bad fast. There he is. Charles the Great, the protector of my town. You're coming with me. Good. It's warmer. Now I need some wet wood to make it smoke properly. Huh? What's that? Mother will be proud. Now, what's that noise?
Easy now, it's just someone little. No need to be afraid. I'm going to follow him. You go home and wait for me, little cub. Mother? Don't move. We killed the pig thief in Salisbury. We can kill you too. Bloody outlaw. Where's the baby? Did you eat it? I don't have the baby. Right. What's this? Give it back. What do you want with this? You can't read. Give it back. Leave the boy be, Alfred. He... He took the baby. I saw him take Mother's cloak. He's the only one around. Who else would have taken it? Wolves. Give me my book. Go on, give it to him. And now come. If we walk steady, we'll be in Shiring by tomorrow. It was a monk. What? A monk took it. A monk? Yes, on a horse. Is that true? <laughs> Where did he go? He should take us there. Leave him alone. He's just a boy. What is your name, boy? Jack. Do you live in these woods, Jack? Then you know this place better than us. Please. I don't know why I left the child. I thought I couldn't take care of him alone, but I cannot leave him to die either. I have to know if he's all right. Will you help us? You're a good lad. I owe you. You got your toy back. Now you better keep your word. For now, I had no choice. The girl was sobbing while her father remained tense but quiet. The boy kept on pushing me, which confused me greatly. I had never been hated before. If I had any plans of getting away, it would be like hunting deer. I had to stay sharp until the others forgot to be. monk had crossed a small stream, or he had followed its course north, which would have led him towards the next village. 
Either way, the tracks ended at a riverbed as evening was fast approaching. The big man looked at me. Which way, boy, he asked. But I could only guess. The stream led us to a more convenient crossing. Here, one could easily pass without getting drenched in icy water. Suddenly, the boy called out. He had spotted something on the other bank. A set of fresh hoof prints. He laughed triumphantly as our eyes locked. So, we crossed the river, the boy cheerfully mocking my skills as a tracker. What is it? He got us lost. Did you? Papa, I'm tired. That's all right. Come on, up on my shoulders you go. No, I'm too heavy and you're too tired anyway. I will remain steadfast. You should all get some rest. Alfred, stay here with them while I take a look ahead. No, don't go. I won't be far, dear. Besides, you can do me a favor while I'm gone. Have an eye on the lads and make sure they get some sleep, all right? All right. See? You are steadfast. I won't be long. You stay where I can see you while my sister rests, and no tricks. Hey. Uh, huh? What is it? Did, did you hear something? The fog is lifting. I don't like you. Tell me, why do you care about your book so much? You're an animal. You don't even know what it is. The Lord and King of all France, Charles the Great, has spent seven long years fighting in Spain. He has conquered the highlands and the plain. Before him, not a single fort remains. What are you rambling on about? It's from the book. How do you know this? You're an animal. Can't you read? Hey, you see that? O over there in the fog. There is something there. What is it? A deer. It broke through the ice and died. Children! Martha, wake up, dear. Mm. Who's she? We met in the forest. I'm Jack's mother. Come here, Jack. Did you find him? Yes, dear, we did. The baby is safe. The monk brought it to a small cell not far from here. But we won't go there now. Ellen offered us shelter for tonight. I have. Follow me.
If I'd known you lived this close, my Agnes might have been saved. Don't fool yourself. When a woman is bleeding inside, it either stops or it doesn't. All you can do is keep her warm, and you did that. I'm sorry, but the living must take care of the living. Jack, give the children some soup, will you? Will you be able to get work soon? Uh, hard to say. People don't usually hire a new master builder in winter. Too cold for stirring water. Sometimes you get lucky, but Thank you, Jack. not this year. Some time ago, I had work in Exeter. They offered me the post of builder for the Castellan to keep the walls and defenses in shape. And it would have kept me busy for the rest of my life. We would have lived like bishops. What happened? I refused. All I cared about was working on a cathedral again. I was a fool. <laughs> You can do better than to build churches. Well, I worked on one once. That was good work. Uh, I won't ramble on now. But if you ask Martha, she'll tell you everything about it. You know, a man like you should not beat himself so hard. No. No, there is no excuse for leaving my baby son behind. Women die in labor. Men abandon their children all the time. It is rare that they return. Is that what happened to you and your son? No. That is an altogether different story. One I haven't even told Jack yet. All I can say is, I raised him alone in this cave. Outside of town law. Just us and the forest. How do you get by? We hunt, we gather. It works well enough for us, too, to survive. You can thank Jack for the meal, by the way. My little cub caught his first deer today, all by himself. I'm impressed. What? Have you not told me yet? Oh, just some old tale. Like Tristan and Isolt? A bit. But not quite. Come on, eat up. Eat well, children. We'll need your strength. And so do you, Master Builder. Go on, tuck in. I will. Thank you. Well, they're asleep now. So, what is it? I told you that the monk had taken the baby to a small cell nearby. It's true, but I advise you to stay away from there. What? Why? Because you abandoned it. That counts as murder. Then... then I have to steal him. I have to own up to what I've done. I have to take back my son. Think for a moment. You have been out of work since summer. A baby needs a lot of care. More than your other children. How will you feed him? But what am I to do then? Live like you? I don't know a thing about hunting. I'm a mason. Even in a castle I'm more at home than here. Leave the baby with the monks. He'd be warm and fed. You wouldn't have to carry him while you look for work. And when you do find something, you can come back and fetch him. I... I, I don't know. Since Agnes died, I don't know anything anymore. You're a good man, Tom Builder. You're kind and gentle and strong. You will do the right thing. You also don't have to go through this alone, you know. Jack and I will have to leave this place soon. The winter is too cruel and we might not survive if we stayed. We could all travel together. I don't know. I have my hands full with my children already. I can help you take care of them. If you promise to teach my son how to get along in the world of men. We may be strangers now, but we would be at each other's side, helping out however we can. The living must take care of the living. Yes.
That night I dreamed of a strange world. There were small castles, dead deer, and a giant called Tom. In that dream I was happy. I tightly held my mother's hand, watching the kind giant and learning his mysterious ways. My brother is as stubborn as you are sometimes. But I trust him. The bishop has to see this letter. Who am I to approach the bishop at dusk like a thief? Must I be so nervous? I trust Francis. He knows about these things. How can I help you? I have come to see the bishop. Who may I tell the bishop is visiting? I am the prior of St. John in the Forest. <clears throat> and what, may I tell Bishop Whalerin, is the reason for your visit? The bishop insists that I ask. I am afraid I can only tell the bishop himself. The bishop wishes to know beforehand. In this case, we will have to make an exception. <sighs> Wait here. Why would the bishop see me? St. John's Chapel is smaller than this side building. My pony should be fed. Do I just take some hay? My pony needs to be fed. I may lead only a small cell, but that does not mean my matters are of less importance. My pony needs to be fed soon. Should I take some? I will take just a couple. Hello? Yes? The bishop will see you now. The Right Reverend Bishop Whaler in by God. Please, sit down. <clears throat> Thank you, Right Reverend. Please, call me Whaleran. <clears throat> Timothy informed me you are the prior of... St. John in the Forest, Right Reverend. 
Then you must be Philip of Gwyneth. <coughs> I'm surprised you know my name. As bishop, I am the ex officio abbot of Kingsbridge. So, I am bound to take an interest. Well, God has blessed us in St. John. I wish God would confer similar blessings on Kingsbridge Priory. Tell me, Prior Philip, what brings you here at such a late hour? Timothy said that you will only tell me. I expect you know that Stephen of Blois has claimed the throne of England. <coughs> With the blessing of the church. Already? I had heard of plans and of aspirations. This is very good. I have met Stephen. As bishop, I am much involved in politics. Of course, the church can never be involved enough. Hmm. Now, how do you know of this? Ah, your brother Francis is working for Earl Robert of Gloucester, is he not? Did he tell you? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, Francis mentioned this to me. He is indeed working for the Earl of Gloucester. But why are you bringing up politics? Tell me, Philip, why are you here? Oh. Was I wrong to come to you, my bishop? Maybe I should have taken the letter to the Sheriff of Shiring. Eustace is ungodly, arrogant, grasping and corrupt. So are all sheriffs. Philip, how did you get this letter? I found it among Prior James's documents in Kingsbridge. I am staying there for a few days. Prior James? May he rest in peace. Did he not order everything to be burned? You know about this? Sub-Prior Remedius mentioned it once. I asked them not to burn James's books. The brothers agreed. Well... And there you found the letter? Yes. Timothy, leave us. And did you find anything else? No, just the letter. The messenger carrying it had an accident and died near Kingsbridge. Hmm. And your brother Francis told you about it? No. Philip, you've already told me you have talked with him about this. From the letter I see the messenger was employed by your brother's master. That is why it is understandable that you would want to protect him. But there is no need to lie to me. <sighs> A war would cost so so many lives. God thunders wondrously with his voice. He does great things that we cannot comprehend. The book of Job. But this is not the work of God, but of Earl Bartholomew. <laughs> you are truly the man I have heard so much about. I will call on friends of mine. Pray for us that we can put an end to Bartholomew's plan before it is too late. You did a brave thing for our church, Brother Philip. A brave thing indeed. <sighs> You'll go back to Kingsbridge Priory now and forget about the Sheriff, won't you? I will. And uh, don't speak of this to anyone there. I shan't.
There you go. You're still hungry, aren't you? Here. Time to leave, old friend. Did you pack enough food? It will be a while before you get to eat smoked venison again. Yeah, yeah. I took some. Anyone seen Martha? She said she had to piss. All right. I'll uh, go get her. You're a mason too, right? Uh-huh. So, what have you built so far? I'm sure Jack would love to hear about your work. Houses. I mostly carve rocks. I haven't built much yet. That must be hard work. <laughs> They're looking for you. I don't want to leave. It's so dangerous out there. I don't want to get robbed again. I've got a slingshot. <laughs> Maybe you could teach me how to use it. I will. Papa usually protects me. But he can't always be around. He needs to take care of himself too. You need to learn to defend yourself. I want to, but I'm still so small. And I want to stay here where it's safe. This knight is Charles the Great. He will protect you. Oh. Am I his princess? You are. Together, you are brave and smart, and will never give up. <laughs> All right. I have to stay steadfast. Thank you, Jack. Martha! Where are you? Come on. We're going on a great quest. On our way, I told Martha the names of my trees. There was the birch, Jerusalem, and the oaks, Alexandria and Byzantium. When I pointed out Rome, she laughed and named an apple tree Southampton. The farther we walked, the merrier she became, christening all the new trees Winchester, Bath, Salisbury, while I grew quieter and quieter. Finally, we arrived at a large road. This heads towards Shiring, Tom said. The strangest name of them all. By noon, we had reached the edge of town. Mother gave us some dry prunes to chew while she argued with Tom whether we should head directly to town or past the palace of the so-called bishop. Tom was hopeful to find work at the palace, but Mother seemed uneasy.
Mother seemed happy to head directly into town and avoid the palace. These churchmen are all crooks, she said. But Tom answered with a worried expression on his brow. They might be the only ones willing to hire a mason around here. A servant to the Bishop of Shiring agreed to talk to Tom. He was hesitant, but not unwilling to hire a master builder for the winter. His expression changed, though, when he noticed Mother and me. I am sorry, he said, not unkindly. Maybe the Earl of Shiring will hire you. His castle is nearby, and I heard he may be in dire need of people like you. He smiled encouragingly, then sent us off, claiming his bishop had business to attend to at Kingsbridge Priory. You don't know me. You're misjudging whatever it is I did. I'm willing to forgive your mistake if you accept my offer now. This is all about family honor to you, isn't it? Perhaps I should tell you about my mother. She was a happy person who loved to laugh and tell stories. But father made her miserable. Oh, he's not a bad man, but solemn and strict. She hated him so much she died from it. Are you saying you don't like me? You're so self-centered. You never think about anyone else's feelings. You have no refinement, and you can barely read. What were you expecting? One day, you will see that you are wrong. And then, I won't be so forgiving. All right. Let's hope it's true and the Earl needs us. Yeah, I'm starving. Alfred, keep an eye out. I'll be right back. And boys, try to get along. An eye out for what? Papa wants him to look for things that are broken. Some people don't know they need a mason until you show them. Papa could fix their walls or build a house. One man can build an entire house? <laughs> I want to see. Learn what you can, but don't stray too far. <sighs> Why won't anyone just give me something to eat? Jack, be careful. Don't get too close. <laughs> I can't believe the Earl allowed his daughter to refuse him. How scandalous. Well. William Hamley is an idiot. I wouldn't marry him either. She deserves someone better. Such a very bright and charming girl. No, she's an arrogant Hello, one. my Just name is Jack. Father. Don't see that. It's not arrogance. It's nobility. You have to be like that if you want people to respect you. I agree. She will do fine. Night. We are? Why, you want to be like us? Like you? Tell you what, snatch us some food from the keep and we might train you. Very good. That should be a valuable first lesson. Watch your step, you little twit. Don't mind him, boy. That's just William Hamley. He was hoping for a princess, 
but all he got was a boot. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? Do you think he forgot something? His dignity, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you strike me as an honest worker, but we have a right who does all the repairs for us. Then something else, maybe? I heard rumours that there's all kinds of work here. Well, unfortunately, it's not builders we're looking for. Actually, it's quite the opposite. I understand. Thank you for your consideration. Walk with me, boy. I'm sorry, boy, but Lady Aliena won't see any visitors today. Lady Aliena? A charming young woman. She lives on top of the keep. Like a princess? Well, no. Although, I suppose she would make a splendid queen indeed. For now, she is just the Earl of Shiring's daughter. And quite good at her role, if I may say so. I want to see the lady. My, you are just as rude as her previous visitor, aren't you? All want, but no manners. Can I see her? May I see her? May I? As I said already, she won't receive any more visitors today. At least not any scoundrels. Not after that Hamley boy tried to propose to her. Again. She'd rather enjoy some quiet than another wide-eyed piglet who thinks himself a minstrel. Now don't start singing, please. Hamley? Yes, Percy Hamley's son, William. Now, off you go. May I see the lady? I told you, she is not in the mood for pushy boys right now. She'd prefer someone a little more pleasant. And farewell to you. We have followers all over the south of England. Of course. You're the Earl, after all. A title doesn't guarantee anything, my son. I don't understand. Is that why you sent all those letters? Stop right there. I'm sorry, boy, but Lady Aliena won't see any visitors today. We only know what's happening in the south, but Earl Robert is in the west. Together we control the entire southwest. Not all of it. But we have messengers in place to keep us informed about everything. Now, be quiet for a moment. I need to think.
So, have you heard about anyone else who might need a mason? Hmm. Last summer they were building at the monastery in Shaftesbury, but they might be finished now. I found this in the keep's kitchen. Can you teach me how to be a knight now? Uh, shit. Oh, Already no. too many masons You're for too little work. Shit. shit. You can't just steal from the Earl. We come. were messing with That's your lad. The Earl just messing. Put that thing away. Quick. Let's pretend we didn't see it. Even a fool can see these buildings need work. If the Earl's not worrying about his stalls and his kitchens, it might be something else. Did you know there's a princess living here? Well, I heard the Earl has a daughter, but that's about it. What do you need work for? It pays. It buys shelter and clothing and we don't have to starve. Not everyone can live in a forest, boy. No? No. People need to be around people. And for that, things have to be set in stone. Like the laws in towns, or rents, or wages. If everyone did whatever they liked, things would get very bad very quickly. Can't you work somewhere else? Not if we want to eat tonight. They refused you. Oh, just because work rarely falls into one's lap, that doesn't mean there is none. I'll give this place a look over while you tell your mother to be patient. I'm going to talk to some people. You just keep an eye out. And if you see something I can fix, let me know. Jack, have you ever been to a castle before? No. Castles are very safe places. People don't rob you so fast. Hmm. Mother told me stories about castles, about knights and princesses. Oh, like what? Like the one about Tristan and Isolde. They drank a potion and had to love each other for three years. I know that one. Jack, do you think there's a princess in this castle? It would be so nice to see a real princess one day. There is one. What? There is a princess here. Oh, show me. My lady? Yes, Matthew? There are two children downstairs, desperately wanting to see you. Children? A rather cheerful little girl, and an annoying boy. Well, considering that it is my role to tend to my father's guests, I believe I can see them. Your father let you renounce a wedding. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if you declined this as well. <laughs> but a cheerful little girl? And an annoying boy. We will get along. You may bring them up. it's you. I noticed you and your parents from my window. What can I do for you? Um... You're quite shy, aren't you? Would you like something to eat? But 
They won't serve food yet. They do what I tell them. I will have Matthew get you some bread. Yes, please. <clears throat> Where's your mother? My mother died. Aren't you sad? I was, but that was a long time ago. My brother Richard can't even remember her. My mother's dead too. When did she die? Last week. Oh. Who's that woman with you then? That's my mother. And where's your father? Did he run off? Some men are such beasts. I never had a father. <laughs> Where did you come from then? From my mother. All young things come from their mothers. What have fathers got to do with it? I think you should have a word with your mother. Come on, I want to show you something. Have you ever been up this high before? No. Wow. All the people look so small. Like little mice. You must be up here every day. I used to. But nowadays I try to hold myself back. Why? We are about to make some great enemies. If our first assault fails, I may want to lay siege to our castle, so I will have to get used to staying up here for a long while. I suppose this view will bore me soon enough. Till then, I'm trying to keep it special. And you're sharing it with us? I don't think that I'll ever get bored by this. Come on, let's go back down. Matthew will take you to your parents. How did it go? Oh, she was so pretty. Don't you agree, Jack? Hmm. What is it, boy? What are you looking for? Something to convince the Earl that keeping things the way they are won't do for long. Could be something small, like washed out mortar or a loose column. Now, I need to see the hole before I can carve the rock. Lady Aliena is expecting an attack. An attack? So, the Earl is planning to go to battle. That's very helpful, Jack. Now, why don't you help me find some damage to the castle? The Earl might not want to fight if his defences are in bad shape. You can build castles? Well, if I have the money and the people, yes. Maybe one day I'll show you how it's done. Hmm.
What is it, boy? You just want to stand there and stare? All right, then. Let's see what you've got. Are you a knight? No talking. How to be cheating. Ah, reckoned you'd be as ballsy as your ginger, but my mistake. Another time, perhaps. Cheers, lad. Where did you get that? Just eat it. <laughs> I can see we're going to be good friends. The battlements are broken. I noticed that already. Anything else? There is a wall without mortar. If that's true, you have a very keen eye. And the well is in bad repair. It is? Yeah, very good, Jack. That is one thing the Earl needs to get fixed for sure. Well, that should do for now. Now, yeah, stay sharp. You did a very good job, son. Now, come along. You deserve to see if it works. Look, I'd like to give you work, but we don't need you. I just hope you're not expecting a siege soon. Why do you say that? Your defences are in bad repair. Be specific, man. The mortar in your walls has come away in places. This leaves an opening for a crowbar, and once there's a hole, it's easy to pull the entire wall down. Anything else? Yeah. The keep has an undercroft with a wooden door. If I were attacking the keep, I'd go through that door and start a fire in the stores. And if you were the Earl, how would you prevent that? I'd have a pile of stone ready shaped and a supply of sand and lime for mortar. And a mason standing by ready to block up that doorway in times of danger. Matthew, may I have a word with you? Well, we have a home, for now. You know, this is all thanks to your son, Ellen. What did he do? He did what you were supposed to do. He kept an eye and an ear out, and finally helped me convince the Earl. Grab your things, everyone, and follow me. It's time we put a roof over our heads. And thus, Tom Builder had finally found work. Little did we know then that it wouldn't last for long.
It's good you sent your brother to tell your flock in St. John's about your nomination. If you'd gone yourself, they might not have let you leave again. There is a good chance I will return to St. John's after the election today. Why so pessimistic? Many of the brothers still want Remigius to become prior. Ferret. Yes? There was an incident with one of our novices. What kind of incident? Remigius caned him. He was bleeding all over. He could barely walk, but walk he did. We called out for him, but he did not turn around. He never looked back. But he ran away? He is not the first. And it wasn't the first time Brother Marcus was punished either. Brother Marcus? Yes. He stole my keys and food. You reported him to Remigius. I did, but he is practically a child. <sighs> Remigius really goes too far. Last year, he hit a novice. The poor soul became deaf in one ear. <sighs> Tell me, Philip, what will be the first thing that you do when you're elected? We must not cane our novices. No, no, we must not. Deus caritas est. I remember that I found words carved into wood in the mill. A brother named Thomas wrote them. He wrote about canings as well. Thomas? Yes, he left as well, over a year ago. It was the same as with Brother Marcus. Remigius. Yes. I will talk to him about it, no matter if I'm elected prior or not. You cannot go in there. What was that? Who are these people? Hey! Step back. Step back, I said. What is going on out there? Soldiers? Did they start a war again? Those fools. Philip! It's Francis. They have Francis. Francis. They said they're looking for someone. They were questioning some of our brothers. What is happening here? Return to your brothers, monk. We'll question you soon enough. I'm afraid these soldiers are looking for your brother. He has just arrived. Two of them followed him into the cloister. No, no, no. What's your name? It would be easier for us all if he just came with us. <laughs> what about the child? Is it yours? <laughs> Francis. Like it or not, you'll be coming with us. We were looking for you. What are you doing here? And who is... Who is that? I found him. In the woods. Hey! Hey! We fed him goat's milk in St. John's. Johnny Eightpence did. 
He says he misses you. He was always very sentimental. Hey! Philip, you must not tell these men my name. My Lord Robert of Gloucester believes me to be in Winchester. I gave the letter to the bishop. He said he'd help. May God have mercy on us. I was wrong to send you. I... What is it? These men are with the bishop. He is here in Kingsbridge. The bishop is here? Hey, you two. You should listen when you're spoken to. Who are you? And what about the child? Did you make it? Did you two do it and make a little baby? <laughs> By God, you look so funny. Oh, come on. Let me hold him. <laughs> a name. Or both of your names. Come on, you two. Give us something we can work with. The child is under my protection. Oh, is it now? <laughs> Good for you, Monk. What's your name? And don't pretend you can't talk, because I'm sick of listening to you. I am Philip. Philip of Gwyneth. Hmm. It's him we're looking for, not the other one. Monks, they all look alike. We were looking for you. Bishop Whalerun wants to see you. Oh. We found him. He's here. Tell the bishop. I found the monk. The bishop. Tell the bishop. Go on, monk. We'll all keep an eye on you. You will be safe. That's a monk. Tell the bishop. Amen. Amen. I thought he would at least be taller than me. What is going on here, Philip? I, I don't know. The bishop knows he's here. We told him. He's expecting you, monk. Philip? There you are. The Right Reverend Bishop Whaler and Bygot. Philip and I are already acquainted. You were looking for me, my bishop? <coughs> I was. Remedius, Philip does look distressed, does he not? Yes, he does. Tell me, what is on your mind? Soldiers have invaded the Priory. Invaded? Oh, of course. I have gotten too used to the presence of knights and nobles. The work of a bishop. The reason why these men are outside right now is your letter, Philip. <sighs> As I suspected, it did convince my allies to go against the Earl of Shiring. These allies of mine insisted that their knights should accompany me along with their son, and very soon they will ride against the Earl. I understand, my bishop. Philip, I have the feeling that there is a storm rising. Right here, in Kingsbridge. And in the eye of that storm stands one man. You. Around you, things... things begin moving. Don't they, Remedius? Yes. But there is one important thing you have kept from me. There is? My bishop! You did not mention that you, Philip, were nominated to be prior of Kingsbridge. I... The brothers here will elect their new prior today, will they not? The election will take place in a few hours, my bishop. 
We need a strong prior. James was my friend, but a strong prior he was not. We are in agreement on these matters, are we not, Remigius? Of course, right, Reverend. Uh, the bishop and I agreed you should have this. Very well. Now, when your distinguished guests arrive, what will be the subject of your first sermon as the new prior of Kingsbridge? I think what I would talk about is... I beg your forgiveness, but I do not understand. Most of your brothers agree with me on this matter. Remigius has talked to them. They will vote for you. As will I. And I will support you in your duties in my role as sub-prior. A role you have fulfilled wonderfully in the past, Remigius. Wonderfully. My bishop? Philip of Gwyneth. You will be the new prior of Kingsbridge. Oh. In humbleness, I stand before you, most humbled by your trust and humbled by the great tasks ahead of us. We must restore Kingsbridge to do justice to the glory of God and to his mercy, the desperate and the hopeless everywhere shall hear our bells. They shall see our towering cathedral. Our great church will become a guiding light. But first and foremost, through our actions and our faith, we ourselves shall be such a light. A light to the lost, the hurt, and the suffering on their path to God. The Earl of Shiring is not in attendance, it seems. He is not. Shameful. He's busy preparing his siege of Winchester. I trust he does not know we are about to foil his plans, Percy. Answer the bishop, my husband. No, no, he does not expect us. Not at all. My men are ready. So is our son. Excellent. There you are. What's the matter? Did I have a father? Yes. Everyone has a father. What happened to him? He died before you were born. How could he be my father if he died before I was born? Babies grow from a seed. The seed comes out of a man's prick and is planted in a woman's cunny. Then the seed grows into a baby in her belly, and when it's ready, it comes out. Why did you never tell me? About father, I mean. I needed you to be older. Trust me, once the time is right, I will tell you everything. I promise. What was my father's name? Jack. The same as you. They called him Jack Sherberg. So, if there's another Jack, I can tell people that I'm Jack Jackson? <laughs> you can. People don't always call you what you want them to, but you can try. What is that? Jack, find the others, then hide and don't come out till I tell you.
Oh, there are at least 200 of them at the river. Knights, again? What colors do they wear? They are not knights, Philip. They say they cannot pay. It is all right, Brother Paul. I told them that there's a toll. Who is your leader? Who will speak for you? No one will speak for us, monk. We were chased from every village. They are outlaws. We are no outlaws. <laughs> we come from Earl's Castle. They killed our men. My child. They killed my child. By God. We cannot feed you. We barely have enough for ourselves. We will give them shelter. Philip, we have not enough room. We will give you all shelter, all of you. I wish I had more to give. More? We've given away almost all the food we have. What will these poor people eat tomorrow? Before they came here, they fed themselves. They worked. Surely they can do that again. <sighs> there are more coming. Word is spreading fast. What do we do now, Philip? Give me the rest of the bread. But... Here, Philip. Then, help to clean out the empty houses, and tend to the injured. You heard our prior, brothers. It was the Hamleys. They couldn't get their rotten son married to our young lady. If there is any justice in the world, the King will punish them. The children are all alone. None of them are crying. Earl Bartholomew was a good man. How they humiliated him in front of his children. It was not right. He will come to help us. No woman, they will hang him. But why? <laughs> How do we deserve this? Why has God forsaken us? He has not forsaken you. But our children are sick. Our husbands were killed. <sighs> Take some bread for your children. This is not enough. He has more bread. I saw it. Please, our children are starving. Give us bread for our children. Thank you, Prior, for your clemency. Uh, I know there's only so much you can do. <coughs> they must have seen horrible things. Children, take some food. Please, take it. You have to eat. Here, I will put it here. Eat when you're hungry. They said the Hamleys attacked Earl's castle. Who are the Hamleys? Take some bread. Only one loaf of bread for all of us? In Wigley they spat on us. And now you want to complain when this monk shows mercy. But I... Thank you, Father. Please, give some to those give people over to there. Us. We have Why nothing. did this happen? What did we Our do Our children wrong? will die in this cold. Oh. Wake Please, up, oh. let us stay. We, we can work.
Philip, we are running out of room. Have you done as I told you? We have cleared out the houses and put up fires. All houses are occupied, and our brothers are treating the sick and injured. There is still some room in the guest house and in the dormitory. Tomorrow, we will open the cathedral. We need all the room we can get. Prior Philip? Yes? I am Tom, Master Builder, and I'd like to rebuild your Northwest Tower. Dear God, they look even worse than the others. Like they haven't eaten in days. They just don't stop coming, do they? I have worked on Salisbury Cathedral. My last employer was the Earl of Shiring himself. I know my craft. If you let your tower collapse, it may tear down parts of the nave. Hire me, and I'll make it strong again. I wish I could hire you. Repairs would cost much, and we have nothing. That child? You are raising a child? My brother found Jonathan in the woods and brought him here. The poor boy would have frozen to death if it hadn't been for God's great mercy. Jonathan. Look, I am sorry, but all I can offer you is a place to sleep. I'll accept, but I'd rather earn it. We didn't come here to beg. Ask God, then. That wouldn't be begging, it'd be prayer. You remember what I told you about the kindness of monks? Ask God. That wouldn't be begging, it would be prayer. <laughs> oh, I will pray. I'll pray for a thunderbolt to strike the church and level it to the ground. I wonder if they refused us because of me. Do they know you? I used to live close to here, so it is possible. Why can't Tom repair their church? Because these monks want to hold on to their coin as long as they can. Well, they can't see that it's about to collapse. If it did, I'd have worked for a lifetime. But no, they believe it can all be held together by prayer. Maybe that monk will change his mind. He seemed nice. He won't. I could see it in his eyes. He's a stubborn one. Can I look around a bit? Yes, but don't stroll too far. Be cautious of those monks. I told you the baby would be safe. What baby? Monks may be whips, but they take care of their own. He will grow up to be a monk? He will. Well, I guess there are worse things than growing up close to God. Fall over already! I am not a ghost, little redhead, even if I am at death's door. If you go first, I will put you in the ground. It's what I do. I'll make it a nice grave. You'll like it, but you must dig me one, too, when my time comes. Agreed? That's good. Good. You must not be afraid to die. Death is not the end. There is more after. That's the secret. That is what all this here is about. You see?
Yes? Oh, hello. Ah, I'm afraid we're out of food. Who is it? The Mason's boy. I'm sorry, but I cannot help you. Come back in the morning, will you? Those poor souls. They can hardly sleep. At least they don't have to take care of a baby. thing <gasps> Who are you? You're one of the refugees from Earl's Castle, aren't you? Did you see how they killed people? I don't think I could take it. We Munch do not do things like killing. Maybe it was Brother Marcus, stealing food. No. After that beating, he would never come back. What if it is Prior James? James is dead. He's still in the river. We couldn't put him to rest. Could that be? Philip said, for a self-murderer, there is no salvation. Maybe you are right. Maybe it was him. But we should not fear him. We should pity him. Pray for him, brothers. I will not change my mind on this matter. We will help them, all of them. Remigius, do you truly want to leave these people to die? We should remove ourselves from the world, my prior. It is for God to decide, not us. We will help these people. We must. And remember, I will make sure that you will not unleash your anger on our novices anymore. Hey, what are you doing here? Remigius here is right. This is no place for children. Now I remember her. What is it now, Remigius? This woman. She came with the Builder. Yes? She is not a refugee. What do you mean? She's an outlaw. She's been here in the past. Prior James warned me about her. She is not from Earl's Castle. She's from the forest. But her husband? I doubt they are married. Young man, are you not the Builder's son? What's your name? Jack Builder. See, he is the Builder's son. Well then, off you go, Jack. A strange child. And as suspicious as his mother. When in doubt, we shall believe in the good of man. 
Fornicators. That's what they are. That woman must be expelled from Kingsbridge. I will let them prove themselves like everyone else. I'd rather not. I wish someone would just tear that cathedral down, so we could start afresh. That would require a miracle, and I really don't know a thing about them. I'm so tired. Come, I'll sing you a lullaby. Actually, it's Jack's favorite. A lark caught in the hunter's net sang sweeter then than ever as if the falling melody might wing and net dissever at dusk the hunter took his prey the lark his freedom never all birds and men are sure to die but songs may live forever very dry. It won't move.
If they need to build a new cathedral, Tom will get work. And we can stay here. Tom always talks about wanting to work on a cathedral. What? <coughs> so much smoke! can barely breathe. There's a breeze coming from the back. It is you! By God and the devil! <laughs> I sent you back to punish me. I told them we must repent for what we did to you, to all of them, for my sins. Cast me into the lake of fire. My dear brother, only two days have passed since you left our priory. Much has happened in these two days. Many desperate men, women, and children have found refuge here. The Earl of Shiring was arrested. His castle taken by my bishop's allies. The people that we shelter were driven from that castle. Francis, I know this was not your fault, but I, myself, cannot but feel responsible for their fate. Milius and Cuthbert have taken it upon themselves to feed the baby. They called it Jonathan, the gift of God. Johnny Eightpence was right. He loves goat milk. A gift of God. And yet someone gave up on him. I will not give up on him, or on anyone else.
Not on us either, brother. Even if the hope for my own redemption is as small and frail as Jonathan is. I pray that this letter finds you in good health. In consideration of my own, I ask that you not talk about our parents again. One must let these things rest. I've made my peace and won't hear any more of it. I heard from you that only three in Earl Robert's employ can read. One of them is my brother. Your brother, Philip. No, no, no! Get out of there! What? What is that? My God! Save yourselves! The, the saint! We must save the saint! Fire! The whole roof is in flames! My God! Don't go in there! Adolphus! The, the saint! We must save him! No! No! Don't go! While the monks and refugees cleaned up, I kept hidden. I hadn't expected that a magnificent building like this could so utterly collapse. That the ignorant little boy that I had been could so easily turn it back into a pile of dirty stones. I knew then that I had done something wrong. And no one could ever find out. Prior Philip, I uh, had the site cleared. It should be safe now. Good work. Thank you, Master Builder. This concludes a very long night, then. Uh, many people left already. They asked me to thank you for your kindness. They're sorry for what happened. Well, they should thank God for his mercy. No one got hurt, no one died. Forty-five monks and eleven novices, all accounted for. No one's missing. No one? Milius and Cuthbert even saved our saint from the crypt. Do you know what caused this? Someone set fire to the roof. Do you suspect anyone? No. The church was empty when we locked the doors. Oh, no one got hurt. The books were saved. Even the bones of your saint were unharmed. Maybe this happened for a reason. What do you mean? Here. Let me show you something. I want you to look through the loop on top. Tell me, what do you see? I see a burned down cathedral. Look further. I see dawn. Right. Prior, I am deeply sorry about what happened to your church, but you must remain steadfast. And stare at the sunrise? <laughs> no, no, you're only seeing the sunrise because you're facing east, straight east, like a church. Now, I know you have no money, and that helping people is more important, but we could start right here. Take the stones we've got, and the people who want to help. So, what is it I am looking at, Tom Builder? It's the aisle of your new cathedral. I see it. I see now.
A few weeks later, I received an invitation from Bishop Waleran. In Winchester, we and Waleran's allies were to meet King Stephen himself. The bishop seemed assured that, because we had helped the king, Stephen would support us in return. And that with his help, we would be able to rebuild Kingsbridge Cathedral. Percy Hanley. Bishop Waleran. Good morning. Ali! It's them! Over there! The Hamleys! Again, thank you for your assistance in Kingsbridge, my son. We have to thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. Right, Mother? Of course. Well, don't just stand there. Walk out with me, but very calmly. We can't let them see us. Oh, children, pardon me. Now we're only missing one more. Here he is. Good morning. Bishop Henry, this is my prior. Philip of Gwyneth, prior of Kingsbridge, my Lord Bishop. You won't have to say much today, Philip. Leave the talking to us. No, leave the talking to me. King Stephen is my brother, after all. Let us make haste. My brother is an early riser. We must make haste. I want to go hunting in the new forest. England is full of game. No comparison to Normandy. This country is still wild. This is Whaler and Bygood, the Bishop of Kingsbridge. Whaler and I remember you. We've met before. And Percy Hamley. My king. He brought Bartholomew to justice. And it's not the first time he's helped me. He has Norman blood in him. <laughs> we should hunt together someday. Indeed, sire. Bartholomew, on the other hand, will not leave the jail alive. Uh, Percy Hamley did not do it without help, my lord. It was I who told him of the plot against you. And now you come to be rewarded as well. I see. My brother, the Cathedral of Kingsbridge has burnt down. Waleron asks for a reward, not for himself. He asks for our church. I take it your church cannot afford to rebuild that cathedral, Henry. Neither can the crown. I, or rather Bishop Waleron, had an idea. You could give the Earl of Shiring's lands to the Bishop of Kingsbridge to finance the rebuilding of the cathedral. I like the idea. But Percy and his men were the ones who took Earl's castle, not Bishop Waleran. Right, Percy? Uh, yes, my king. He knows the area, and he will be a loyal Earl, will you not? Of course, my king. You ought to give thanks to God first. God made you king. Don't go on like that, Henry. Don't do that. You know what happens when you do that. It was a long way to this throne. A long way. Yes, my brother. Now I will hunt. My Lord King, I thank you for being willing to reconsider the future of the Shiring Earldom. When shall we hear your decision? Tomorrow. Bring my bow. Tell the men we hunt.
Philip, Waylon and I have much to discuss. All right. But what can I do to help? Well, my brother asked me to get a confession from the traitor Bartholomew. A confession would be helpful against those who believe Bartholomew's arrest was unjust. And it may help us to convince my brother to forget all about his promise to Percy Hamley. Ah, Philip. What is it? About Bartholomew's confession. Maybe you can get him to confess. I do not believe my prior can do more than you could, Henry. Perhaps he knows he will die, no matter what he says. Please excuse me. Of course. Hmm. From what I heard, this is about the cathedral in Kingsbridge. It burned down. Yes. Then the king should help in some manner, but not by giving away English land to the church. Did you not say Bishop Henry was the richest man in England? Then why is he not paying for the cathedral? God has very tight purse strings, it seems. <laughs> No, I won't just leave. I must do something to help our Priory. They don't believe Waylaren's plan will be successful. Tomorrow, the King will announce his decision. Until then, they won't allow a simple monk like me into the keep. Could you let her get away? That little bitch! I will find her mother. She was here? Why? To see her father, of course. But that won't help her. She has already made a fool of you once. Don't let it happen again. No, mother. Good day. You come to visit someone in my jail, father? Or do you want to pick out a nice warm cell for yourself? How dare you? Oh, I'm just pulling your leg. See? A smile. Just for you, father. Monk. It's about time you showed up. Huh? Reagan Hamley? We have not been formally introduced. You are a fool. Is that formal enough for you, monk? You don't understand any of this, do you? It's as if you've never you set a single foot father. outside. How you let yourself be used by those two greedy bishops, I'll never know. <sighs> Waleran wants the lands of the earldom for himself. Henry knows that. Say something. You don't believe me, do you? You are only monk? worrying about your husband's land. Well, of course I am, and you should be too. If Waleran wins, we both lose. I know you don't trust me, but your bishops are no do different from me. you have a way to me. prove any of this? Ride with my son, William. Just a few hours. I will prove to you that Waleran will betray you. All right. I will ride with your son, if only to prove you wrong. Very well. Maybe you're not a fool after all. But do not let the bishop see you. William? What? Ride with Father Philip. Do as I said. William Hamley declined to tell me where we were heading. 
He enjoyed keeping me in the dark and forcing me to follow his lead. Sometimes he sped ahead on his war horse and it took me some effort to catch up. But sooner or later he would stop and wait, sneering as I rejoined him. On one occasion he stood there urinating against a rock. When I caught up with him he turned without covering himself. He found my shock at his shameful behavior comical. He laughed, got back into the saddle, spurred his horse and rode off. Again I followed, hoping this journey had not been another horrible mistake. Near a bridge, I found William with a group of washerwomen. He was shouting at them. When I arrived, I could only hear their replies. They said that they had not seen a girl or a boy fitting his description. A younger, blonde woman said that even if she had seen the girl, she would not tell him. Apparently, she had heard of William Hamley. William grabbed the startled-looking woman by the arm. He shoved his right hand under her skirt. She started crying. The other women asked William to stop, but were afraid to anger him. William turned and grinned when he saw me approaching. When he heard my words, William's grin faded. He pushed the young woman away. The other women looked at me in a strange way. They must have asked themselves why a monk would ride with such a man as William. We rode off, and William stared at me full of spite. I told him I pitied him. I did not tell him why, because I had no words for it. We did not talk after that. Not for a long time. William talked to more strangers along the way. First, I believed he was asking for directions. Then I realized that money was changing hands. William was paying these people for information. I was glad that for now he had lost interest in hurting others. Then I saw an old woman pointing William to a bearded man on a horse. William called the man a horse thief. Then he grinned and signaled the puzzled man to get on his horse and ride with him. They rode faster and faster, and I could not hear what more they talked about. William bluntly threatened to have the man hanged for stealing a horse of his, and then ordered him to hunt down the real thieves in exchange for his life. The man laughed as if he had made a great bargain. William even paid him. Before the man rode off north, William mentioned a name. Aliena. And I prayed that whatever William's plan was, that it would fail. Then William waved at me to ride faster. I reckoned we had to be close to where Lady Hamley wanted us to go. Not long after, my stomach turned as I realized just where exactly we were bound. Just a moment. What? You know very well that Bishop Whaleran is in Winchester now. So what are we doing here? No idea. Mother never tells me anything. She treats me and father like damn children. It's a wonder father ever got to fuck her in the first place. But here I am, and I'm starving. Damn, I'm starving. Where are you going? In there. No! I'm sure the bishop would want to see me well fed. We won't be staying long, so whatever it is you've got to do, do it fast. How can I help you? How about you step aside? <laughs> Hmm. 
William forgot to close his saddlebag. I shouldn't even be here. I shouldn't even be here. Is that? Is this why Regan Hamley thinks that Waleran wants the lands of Shiring for himself? He is the bishop. He can do as he pleases. Perhaps he is just building a guest house. No, it is too big for that. What in the name of Christ is he building out there? What in the name of Christ is he building out there? What are we doing here? What am I asking you for? You just did what you were told. You! Please! You were here before, weren't you? Yes. I remember you. F Philip, isn't it? Yes. Please, uh, you have to help me. I what happened? He forced me to serve him food. He took the Lord's name in vain, and he pushed me and touched me. Oh, God. Ah, the monk. Oh. Did the boy call you? So what? Did he ask you for help? He didn't have to say anything. I knew you would get us in trouble. Trouble? Me? We're young men, he and I, and I play rough. So what? I asked you to leave. And that is what we will do. What will the bishop think of your behavior? Listen, we're all on the same side here. We are not. You, me, him, we're all working for the bishop. He won't mind. I play rough, so what? <sighs> we are all men of God. Well... You are a sinner. So what? Everyone is. 
the bishop told me. But my sins are forgiven. Why would you think that? I took Earl's castle for him. Your parents agreed to arrest Bartholomew because they wanted his earldom. Who cares what they think? I felled Bartholomew's men with my sword. The old man was begging me for his life. On his knees, he begged me. I did it for the bishop. But hey, I'm sure you did great things for him as well. <laughs> you think my father took Earl's castle? It is time to leave. Is it? This is the second time you've spoken to me as if I was some snot-nosed child. Get on your horse! Come on, say it again! I would have fucked that woman if it hadn't been for you. And what would that have achieved? She'd have learnt her lesson. And don't you think I noticed how you spied on me and that horse thief? I should kill you for that. I should. Let me tell you. I will fuck Bartholomew's whore of a daughter. I will fuck her good. I'm a man! Damn it, I'd fuck the boy if that was the only way to put him in his place. Hell, he looks like he'd enjoy it too. Not even God would forgive those sins. Of course he would. He already did. The bishop told me. Then the bishop is wrong. <gasps> hey, we're on the same side here. Now, we will stay here a while longer, as I've not finished eating. Shit. If the bishop finds out about this, he will not be pleased. I have to fix this. And if anyone's name was not found written in the Book of Life, he was thrown into the Lake of Fire. What's that? It's from the scripture. The end of days. The second death of the sinners. Bishop Whaleran said that if a sinner stares into the flame, the devil stares back from the lake of fire. What? Hmm. I can't see him. Me neither. What's he supposed to look like? <laughs> Throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What? Hell. It is a depiction of hell. The bishop said the relief intimidates even his most impious visitors. They all fear death. I'm not afraid to die. Do not fear those who kill the body. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Who's he? The devil. A fallen angel. I have nothing to be afraid of. The cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars. Their souls are the devils. They will all go to hell. Stop it! Hell is far away. I'm not afraid. Better. Hmm.
Yeah, that looks better. Make him go. I want him to leave. Now. We should leave. I'm not done here yet. We stay. Has Bishop Whalerin ever shown you the scripture? He told me of it. What do you think? It looks so alive. Perhaps the artist has actually seen the devil. Are you afraid? It's just stone. Hell is far away. better now. We should get going. I think you have overstayed your welcome. So what? What are you going to do? <sighs> For some, hell is not that far away. Is it? I... We ride back to Winchester. Now! What happened? Maybe he saw things to come. How can I thank you? Tell me... What... Is being built out there. What? A substantial construction is underway, it seems. Yes, but... What is it? A castle. Uh, the bishop is building a castle. A castle? Why a castle? I don't know. It is not for me to ask or question the bishop. Of course. And I doubt it's for you to question him either. That man, William, had no idea why you two came here, had he? You came here to spy on the bishop. You brought this man here. I... Leave! Go! There you are. My son seemed thoughtful when he returned. You priests and your talk, <laughs> you always get to him. He seemed more excited after talking to your bishop, though. Then again, we know Waleran is good with words, don't we, my husband? Of course, yes. Speaking of Waleran, what did you find, monk? A construction site. Ah. So Waleran has a building project of his own. Did you also find out what he is building? A castle. Yes. He is building a castle for himself. And he used up every stone and every tree on his own lands. He claims he wants Bartholomew's land for your cathedral. But what Waleran wants is a castle. He's always been like that. Not long ago, you accused us of being selfish. But what about your bishop, eh? What do you want from me? As prior of Kingsbridge, you will agree that my husband shall have the whole earldom of Shiring. And why would I do you a favor like that? Because we will support the rebuilding of your cathedral with our stones 
and our timber. The king can live up to all of his promises, and Waylorin gets nothing. That is our offer. What do you say? No, we have no deal. Why not? We made you a good offer. You need me. The king still considers giving all the lands of the earldom to Waylorin to rebuild our cathedral. You need this deal with me just as much as I do. This is... Oh. We taught this fool well, it seems. What are your terms, father? No terms, no deals. This is not who I am. Suit yourself. Remember, I warned you. I know you started all of this, not Waylorin. You will see his true face when he does not get what he wants. And remember, what happens next will be on your head. Would you not rather build a castle, my bishop? What? A castle like this, I mean. Do you not find this place remarkable? Winchester Castle? Of course. It is. Please excuse me. Percy Hamley will have the Oldham of Shiring. But would he make a good Earl? Who cares? Stephen wanted the throne for 20 years. Now that he has it, he must be loyal to those who are loyal to him. Who knows? Maybe Percy will make a good Earl. From what I've heard, Lady Hamley pulls the strings. They don't believe Waylorin's plan will be successful. Bartholomew and his followers would have only been the first wave. Robert of Gloucester remains, and he will attack. And that's what you keep telling us. Maybe because the king likes to hear that you share his worries about Robert of Gloucester. Robert of Gloucester wants to see his sister on the throne. He will attack. And the Welsh will fight on his side. You mark my words. I must do something to help our priory. No need. We said all there was to say. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Francis and I wanted to help King Stephen to protect the church. I doubt these people share our motives. No need. We said all there was to say. I can't let anyone know what Waylorin and Henry tried to do. I doubt anyone would even be surprised what a fool I was. Bishop Henry sends me. The bishop, eh? 
What does he want? He wants me to talk to Bartholomew of Shiring. Bartholomew of Shiring? Ha! Ah. It's only Bartholomew now. It's his fourth day without bread. Soon he won't even be Bartholomew anymore. Bartholomew, I am Brother Philip. We have never met, but I am responsible for your fate. No one ever chose my fate for me. I choose my fate. Why did you go against the king? Stephen sent you. Why would you side with the usurper? I was asked to make you confess. <laughs> Stronger men tried that before you. Why should I confess to you? I am responsible for your arrest. I found a letter you wrote to the Earl of Gloucester. My Bishop Whaler and showed it to Percy Hamley. Oh. And why? What? Why would your Bishop do that? To prevent a war. And to help the Church. Of course. <laughs> I have no sins to confess. My only regret is that I failed. I will not tell the king that. They will kill you. They have already done that. Monk, tell them that I confessed. To what? All of it. Treason. But... The son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father. Tell Stephen that as well. You... know the scripture? Richard and Aliena, my children, they must live. And a good day to you too, father. to everything, but he asks for clemency for his children. Good. I will let my brother know what we have achieved today once he returns from the hunt. Good, Philip. You did well. About Bartholomew's children. My brother was never one to judge a man by the deeds of his father. Still, I shall mention Bartholomew's request to him. Maybe I should come back tomorrow. Yes, there is not much a monk can do here. Yes, your bishop and I will do what we can to help your priory. My loyal subject, Percy Hamley, today becomes the Earl of Sharing. Of the former Earl's possessions, Percy shall have the castle. And all the land that is tenanted to knights, and all farmlands, pastures, forests, and quarries. I swear by all that is holy to be your liegeman, and to fight for you against any other. M my king... Ah, yes. Of course, I have not forgotten the worries of my bishops. <clears throat> the Earl of Shiring himself, Percy here, solved this problem for me. Thanks to him, I can uphold my promise. Don't worry, Bishop Waleran. Kingsbridge shall be rebuilt. Percy told me of a man here whom my brother has not yet introduced. 
Come forward, Prior. My brother, may I present to you Philip of Gwynedd. My king. You seem afraid. What are you worried about? I'm worried about my priory and the cathedral. I heard about the fire. How are you managing? On the day of the fire, God sent us a builder, but we cannot pay him. Don't worry, you can. Now, about the arrangement between you and Percy Hamley. He told me that he wants to support you in financing timber and stone for your new cathedral. I wholeheartedly agree with the plan you two have devised. It shall be done. But... Thank you, my lord. It seems unnecessarily complicated to give the land to the bishop. Percy told me that you, Father Philip, share that sentiment. He told me it was your idea to take up the burden of managing the rebuilding of the cathedral yourself. I... Wonderful. I'm glad that we all were able to help you, Bishop Whaleran, in this pressing matter. After all you have done for me. Thank you, Lord King. Bartholomew lost everything in his attempt to end my reign. This morning he was found dead in his cell. I have heard that you, Pra, worry for his children, Richard and Aliena. While they shall lose their status, their name, and their land, they shall go free, wherever they are. You must be very proud, Lady Hamley. Of course. Father Philip has been very understanding in all this. Yes, he is remarkable. Very remarkable. My husband and I were terrified when we heard about the fire in Kingsbridge. It is a blessing that we can help him in his priory now. You sowed the wind, Philip. Is everyone ready? Yes, everyone will be there. But how are we to pray and contemplate like this? I don't dare even to send my choir out there. We shall get used to it, all of us. We must be thankful for all of this, for each noise, each face that disturbs us here. We shall start with the chancel, then gradually work our way from east to west. That's the way it's done, the way I was taught to do it. I value your enthusiasm, my dear Mason, but so far we're only cleaning up. I haven't even considered hiring a master builder yet, neither you nor anyone else. May I show you some drawings? By all means. Look here first. If you were facing the cathedral with the front wall torn down, you would see it like this. Interesting. What's that coming out from above the entrance? The nave will be about 32 feet high will appear even higher. Drawing the eye heavenward with its loftiness. Well said. A chamber worthy of God. I always wondered how walls this high could hold up so well. Do you recognize the aisles? Of course. I've been in quite a few churches in my time. Did you know then that their purpose is to support the nave? Fascinating. I must say, you do know your craft, Master Builder.
That's the tower, of course. I thought so, but why is it right above the nave? Shouldn't it be closer to the transept? Oh, don't be fooled. The tower is, of course, farther back, but one can't show depth in a drawing. Ah, of course. How high will it be? Three halves of the nave. That sounds reasonably modest. What about the other drawings? When we walk around the site, we mark where the walls will be, the pillars, the doors, and buttresses. Now for that, we need a plan like this, to tell us where to place our pegs and string. Is this how birds would see our church? Exactly. Here, you can see the transept. I noticed, yes. It is remarkable how much you can reveal with so few lines. <laughs> Thank you, Father. The chancel will have four bays. Hmm. What about the nave? The nave is on the left. It has six bays. Hmm. 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 I can see the transept is two bays wide, so it will be twelve in total. It does look splendid, but isn't that rather small? Oh, can you afford to build it bigger? I have trouble affording it at all. Percy Hamley would support us with timber and stone, but how do we pay the workers? But only God knows if it will be enough. I don't suppose you have any idea how much this would cost. I know exactly how much this would cost. It would be no more than three thousand pounds. I've spent the last few weeks working out the annual income of the Priory. Here's the answer. Three hundred pounds a year. And we spend every penny. Go on now, show me the rest of your drawing. Imagine you're standing in the center of the nave, looking at the wall. This is what you see. Are those windows? Right, but that's not all. On the lowest level are the pillars of the arcade. They're joined by arches, making up the bays. Through the archways, you can see the windows in the aisle. Starting right in the middle is the Tribune Gallery. Shall I go on? Yes, yes, of course. I was just thinking. Keep going. On top are the clear story windows. I can see you have put a lot of thought into this. I was just wondering... How long would this take to build? You can take your time with that answer. Well, that depends on how many people you employ. If you hire 30 masons with enough laborers, apprentices, carpenters, and smiths, they will be done in 15 years. I wish my monastic officials had your ability to think ahead and calculate. So, I need to find 200 pounds a year. It doesn't sound so bad when you put it that way. You really want to build this cathedral yourself, don't you? Yes, Father. I want you to appoint me Master Builder. Why? Because he wants to give people hope. Is that so? Then answer me this one last question. If people were to enter your church, what image would they see crowning the tympanum above the entrance? 
one of Judgment Day to teach people to be good, or one of Paradise to remind them of God's mercy. Show them hell, so that they're afraid to do bad things. Hmm, I'd rather see trees and animals. It should be the promise of a better life. Therefore, it will show heaven. Yes. Milius, is there news of my brother? No, uh, unfortunately not. No one has seen or heard from him since the bishop and Percy Hamley were here. Papa, will there be statues inside? Statues? Oh, that's enough, children. It's time you went out and played. Prior. Yes? My first wife, Agnes. She died without a priest, and she's buried in unconsecrated ground. Sometimes a man builds a chapel, or founds a monastery, in the hope that in the afterlife, God will remember his piety. I just wonder, do you think my design might serve to protect Agnes's soul? God no longer asks for blood sacrifices, for the ultimate sacrifice has already been made. But the lesson of Abraham's story is that God demands the best we have to offer, that which is most precious to us. So you must ask yourself, is this design the best thing you could offer? Except for my children, yes. Then rest easy, Tom Builder. God will accept it. Jack, do me a favor and give Paul these herbs, will you? But he's a monk. You don't like monks. Well, it turns out not all of them are bad. <laughs> Still, be careful before you trust any one of them. Uh, there he is! Give her a prior the welcome he deserves. Oh, um, you know, I am only following God's will. Prepare to raise the bell. Make the prior proud. <laughs> well, um, thank you. Go on, Jack. Don't forget about Paul's herbs. Where have I seen that woman before? What do you want? I want to help. Too bad. There's nothing you can do. I don't get why Tom likes you, you useless little turd. For all I know, you were behind that fire. What? What is it?
I'm leaving now. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, good day, boy. If you see your mother, tell her the pain's gotten worse. I think I might take her up on our offer now. Oh, oh don't you ever get as old as I am, boy. Tis not natural. This is from my mother. Oh, bless her, boy. Whatever Remedia says, your mother is a saint. Oh, is that the bell? Can you see it from here? A bell without a cathedral. Your father certainly had strange ideas. <laughs> it might be. What's a bell? Excuse me. You. I remember you. You're the boy with no father. Actually, I have two fathers now. Is that so? Yes. Tom Builder and Jack Sherberg. I thought you weren't the Builder's son. Well, I am now. I have to say, Prior Philip told me there would be a lot of sheep here. I can see he wasn't exaggerating. You know Philip too? I do. He's the reason I'm here. Is he around? He should be around somewhere. Busy man, that fellow. But don't worry. You probably won't have to look for him for long. All right. Thank you. Shall we go after them? No. Now we know where we can find them. Ha! Ho! My bishop, William Hamley, has returned to see you. Send him in, Timothy. We have much to discuss. My name is Aliena of Shiring. I'm the daughter of the Earl Bartholomew of Shiring. At least, I used to be, before my father was arrested for conspiring against the king. And a man I had once refused to marry took control of everything my family had ever owned, including ourselves. Where's the girl? 
She is where you put her, you fiend. <laughs> Once the king finds out, Here's the key. Now go get her. I'm starving. Lady, are you awake? Why am I fooling Lady myself? Is back. He wants to see you. There is nothing left. May I enter? You may come in, Matthew. Dear God, did he hit you? Well, I suppose he's getting more daring now that his father is about to see the king. This is taking too long. Go get them. Right. Milady, I must ask you, do not provoke him. Not yet. Not until you're properly armed. How is Richard? They treat him like a dog. I gave him a cloak so he wouldn't have to freeze through that storm. There are weapons hidden in the yard. Near the gate, look for a red piece of cloth. Get down here, and no talking. And don't cause any trouble. I just clean my sword. Well, that was quick. You certainly do know your place, don't you? Ugh, what's with your face? Your arrogance makes you ugly. Did you know that? You reap what you sow. Oh, there are a few things I would like to sow with you. She didn't mean it. Your father will be the new Earl soon. This castle will be yours. There's no need to keep the lady and her brother hostage. Matthew. Save your words. He won't listen. <laughs> Oi, Walter. Looks like the princess needs a servant to do her talking. Can't imagine why I ever wanted to marry that ugly boar. A real lady. That's what I deserve. Maybe even Empress Maud. Yes, I'll marry the Empress. But I will keep on fucking her. As if Maud would ever marry you. Shut up! I won't. You have no say around here anymore. I am still the daughter of your Earl. You're a common whore, that's what you are. Oh, how you must enjoy your revenge. You're just getting what you deserve. <laughs> All this just because I wouldn't marry you? Shut up. Shut up! You are a sad man who knows nothing but cruelty. God shall punish you for this. <laughs> I am the cruel one. You renounced our wedding and made me the laughing stock of the entire Shire. Stop, both of you. Go outside, girl. Walk it off. All right. I shall do so gladly. Anything you need, William? Tell the bitch to get me something to eat. I'm starving. You heard him. Go! Now! I always told you your stubbornness would be your end. <sighs> Richard.
Did they let you go? Have you sided with them? Don't be ridiculous. I will never succumb to these beasts. Beasts? That's a bit rude. How are you managing? I'd be managing a lot better if you gave me a sword. <laughs> Did he say something funny? That boy with a sword. Look at his back. He can barely lift his own head. Teach a chicken to fight. Might as well just step on it. Have you seen my red scarf? Is that all you worry about? I think Matthew had it last. He said he lost it somewhere. Then ask him. I'm busy trying to come up with a plan. You really haven't seen my scarf? Ali, drop the nonsense. This is serious. It won't be long. I will get us out. Getting us out won't be enough. We need to reclaim the castle. You can't be that stupid. They have to pay, Ali. Even King Stephen. King Stephen may not be aware of this. He needs to know the truth about these people. Trust me, Ali. I have a plan. Don't! You can whisper and plot as much as you like. As long as my men are guarding the gate, you'll never get out alive. Don't do anything stupid. I won't. I'll be back soon. Don't lose hope. Yeah. Nothing. Maybe Matthew meant the other gate. You stay down here with me, do you hear? in here. Oh, a dead chicken. What a horrible smell. Someone must have trapped it in here for fun. What a waste. These are all rotten. I'm not putting my hand in there. Disgusting. Let's see. A loaf of bread. And it doesn't look as bad as everything else in here. Not even worth trying. It's obvious these are inedible. Mealworms. Disgusting. No, the room smells bad enough already. Here, girl. Don't you recognize me? Ah, oh, good girl. It must be hard to catch my scent in this rain. Nothing. 
nothing in there but filthy water. One more step and I'll assume you've got a death wish. Did you get what he asked for? Yes. Good. Don't waste his time then. Your food. <laughs> what is this? This is all I've found. You really think you can play your silly games with me? I am still the daughter of the Earl, and by the law of the King, you are my subject. Oh my. Forget what I said about your arrogance. It actually makes you quite pretty. Huh? In the name of my father, you will die for this! Master Richard, don't! <laughs> stupid boy. Almost as stupid as his sister. I'd rape you if I could. <laughs> but you're not my kind of lass. What's with her? She dead? Leave her. The king has not yet spoken. Wait till your father is an earl proper. Then you can do with her whatever you want. Damn! To hell with it. She's so ugly, no one would ever want to take her anyway. Put them with the animals until the king has decided. It's just out of reach. Richard. Richard. Wake up. It's too high. I'm chained to a post. I can't reach it. If only it was closer. It's just out of reach. No, there are no weapons here. And no sign of my red scarf. I need you to wake up. Hey! Ali? Ali, my ear! How do you feel? Hot. The wound is boiling your blood. 
We need to get you someplace dry and cool so you can heal. Ali, they shackled us. I will die here. Calm down. You'll only make things worse. How did you free yourself before? I don't know. When they put me here, they had the shackles fitted to my ankles. But today, I somehow managed to slip through. These three weeks must have made me very determined. Yes, and very thin. Don't give up. We will get out of here. And what then? We'll find Father. He'll know what to do. I heard them say that he's with the King in Winchester. Then that's where we'll go. You'll see. He'll make things right again. Don't give up. We will get out of here. I don't know. What were you thinking, charging William like that? I had to protect you. That was very brave of you. I don't know. It was. Father will be proud when you tell him. Richard, throw me that horseshoe. It's not hard enough to break the chain. I already tried. I'll think of something. Just give it to me. Do you think it might break like this? It's not hard enough to break the chain. I already tried. I'll open yours next. Can you stand? I'll try. Good. Then wait here. I'll find us a way to get out of here. Let's take his horse. Yes. Good idea. But first we need the weapons Matthew hid for us. There used to be all kinds of weapons here, along with Father's Knights. Now there is nothing. Matthew hide the weapons.
I have to say, that battle was a bit short for my taste. The knights weren't prepared and the peasants scattered like chicken. What I wouldn't do for a good kill right now. I found it. Matthew's piece of cloth. Guess you left. Hungry. Want to eat? It's calm now. Try to mount it, Richard. But where do we go? To Winchester, of course. We need to find Father and talk to the King. They must find out what's happening here. Now climb on. It won't eat forever. The thought that they could catch up with us urged me to ride onward. It rained relentlessly. After a while, Richard's moaning got weaker, but I did not dare look back, for I feared to see William Hamley right at our heels. I forced the horse to go faster, hoping that my brother would not succumb to his wounds. We headed toward Winchester. The King would make things right if we explained them to him. He had to. It wasn't long until Richard almost fell off the horse. Touching his forehead, I realized he had a high fever. His mutilated ear was red, hot, and swollen. A sound startled me. From the thicket of the forest emerged a woman. I was ready to draw the dagger that was flush against my forearm. I asked her to give us her name. This was her forest, she said, so we should be the ones introducing ourselves. I proclaimed that I was the daughter of the Earl of Shiring, traveling with my brother. I can tell your nobility by your manners. She smiled and revealed in turn that she was the wife of the local verderer. Seeing Richard's ear, she said that he needed help. Luckily, their hut was nearby. She offered us food, shelter, and care. I told her that we were expected by relatives. Richard only understood what I was trying to do when I gave him an urgent look. Then we left at a trot. I turned my head when I heard a whistling from behind. At that moment, something jumped in front of us. Richard and I were pulled off the saddle and landed in the cold mud. It was a man I'd never seen before. I jumped up to defend myself, but was stopped by the cold blade of the woman's knife against my throat. 
she'd caught up with us and hadn't come to help. When she started searching me for valuables, I took the chance to reach for my own dagger. She then stopped and stepped slowly backwards to join the man. After they mounted the horse we'd stolen from William, they rode off. I knew that I couldn't catch up with them, so I remained, shaken by what had happened. As I calmed down, I started to feel the bruises of the fall and a great tiredness. Richard was still lying in the mud, so I pulled him away from the road to find shelter underneath a tree. His face looked pale and distorted by the swelling around the open wound, but he insisted that he'd be fine, his voice faltering with embarrassment. No matter what I told him, he wouldn't hear any of it. A wound like this was nothing to a real man, he said. He was tired of being treated like a helpless child. We huddled together and rested some more, so we could walk on in the morning. We walked for two more days with only brief rests in between, but we finally arrived at the city gates of Winchester. Richard was weak, but at least we were still together, and we were sure that together we would find a way to escape this nightmare. made it. They can't harm us anymore, can they? Uh, after all, there are laws in place to protect us here, right? I think so, but we shouldn't risk finding out. Then let's go. Where are you going? To our townhouse, of course. Ali, there's someone here. Maybe it's father. Do you think so? Well, they must have put him somewhere. I have a bad feeling about this. Come now, before anyone sees us here. Father, may we come in? I can hear someone. Hello? We're lost and looking for shelter. They don't seem to want us here. It's so quiet. Shouldn't the monks be preparing evening mass soon? Ali, this is pointless. There must be one kind soul in this town. What is it? Oh, uh, good evening. Um, we're sorry to disturb you, but my brother and I have been through a lot and desperately need shelter for tonight. Hmm. Please. Wait here. Are you mad? Do not let them in. They're thieves. What did I say? Oh... There's a warm corner in the back. You can have a blanket, but there will be nothing to eat. Is your wife all right with this? It doesn't matter. The Lord struck her with a troubled mind. She will accept my decision. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
You're a kind man. When I woke up that morning, I was alone. I hoped that Richard had risen early, maybe to go to the castle. I left to search for him right away. That old man had quite a bit of fight in him, I heard. They whipped him for days. And when it was over, he just asked for a mug of wine. Didn't beg, but asked, hurry up, I'm thirsty. Like it was some kind of feast or something. Makes you wish he was still on our side. What a shame. I have to find Richard first. On our way here, we heard the stair at an inn. They made us eat peasant food. Gruel? Not a pinch of meat. Isn't there a law against that? Richard? Oh, it's you. You're up already. Of course I'm up. What were you thinking, running away like that? Shh, hush, Ali. The people are watching us. How's your ear? It's pounding like a drum. I'm sorry. I thought I could talk to the king before you woke. You did so much yesterday. I didn't want to wake you. Please, don't be cross. That was sweet of you, but also very stupid. Did you talk to the king? No, I... I haven't tried yet. I was feeling too dizzy. My whole head hurts, even my teeth. Let us do it together, shall we? And where do you think you're going, my girl? We're here to petition the king. Let us pass. Hugh, wearing a pair of clogs that my gran would be ashamed of? I don't think so. Get out of my way, guard. Every citizen has the right to petition the king. But the poorer sort are generally not foolish enough to exercise that right. You're talking to the son of the Earl of Shiring. I'm his daughter. If you don't let us pass, we'll have you locked away and make you rot in a dungeon. Like your father, you mean? What? You know where he is? Of course. And you should too, if you're who you say you are. He's in the jail right here in the castle. How do we get there? Go left before the gate and cross the yard. You'll need to talk to the jailer, though. His name is Odo, and he's got deep pockets. Deep pockets? Well, you lower sort cannot expect any favors for nothing. Better get used to it, if you want to survive. I know them. This is all such nonsense. Maud as queen. What was the old man thinking? I believe he just got too comfortable with King Henry. Did you like what you saw, mistress? Of course not. But my husband seems to be in good health. I hope it'll stay that way. I hope so too, but you know, nowadays good food is just so hard to come by. Oh, you're so kind. That'll help to keep him fed for a while, surely. Take good care of him. I'll be at the market. Will do. Good business, mistress. What are you staring at? Your ear. You should take better care of yourself.
was that all about? I don't know, but we have our own problems. So come on. Um, uh, are you the jailer? Your humble servant. What is it? We're... We're here to see our father. He is the Earl of Shiring. Is he? Look like just plain Bartholomew to me. So he's here? Look at us when we're talking to you. How much have you got? We've nothing. So don't bother asking for a bribe. Then you can't see your father. Sorry. Please, let us see him now. Sorry, can't make an exception. Each time someone wants to see someone, they have to pay. That's the rules. But they're your rules. Right, but that doesn't make them any less rulesy, does it? Must have been dozens so far, each one slipping me a penny. If I let you in for free, the others might think I treated them unevenly, that I am an unjust man. <laughs> Can't have them think that, can I? Um, who was that woman? That'll be two pennies. What? Ah, gotcha. <laughs> That's Meg. Her husband tried to trick a fellow merchant out of his purse. Wasn't good at it. Now he's lost everything. Then where does she get all her coin? She took over his business. Works as a merchant at the market. Funny that she still cares so much for him. I wouldn't. I'll get a penny, and I'll bring it to you as soon as I can. But won't you let us see him now, just for a few moments? Get the penny first. Shouldn't be too hard. One of you must be worth something. How is he? Just tell me that, please. Is he all right? No, he's not. He's dying. Now get out of here. Are you crying? Didn't you hear what he said? Yes, but he was lying. The last time we saw Father, he was very much alive and healthy. Sometimes I wonder what is going on in that head of yours. So how are we going to get a penny? We could beg. Beggars usually ask for food or clothes. I never heard of anyone giving them money. Well, how do people get money? The king gets money from taxes, lords have rents, priests have tithes, shopkeepers have something to sell, craftsmen get wages, and peasants don't need money because they have fields. Apprentices get wages too. So do labourers. We could work. But Ali, I can't work like a common man. I'm the son of an earl. Not anymore. You heard what the jailer said. We're no better than anyone else now. Thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four... Are you sure this is right? Don't patronise me, Meg. I just want to be certain. See? You've nothing to worry about. Your business will be in good hands. Let me see yesterday's list again. All right. Hmm. Oh, we can't afford it. Thirteen. Fifteen. Excuse me, mistress. Oh, I've seen you before. You're going to see someone in the jail, right? It's the only explanation why they'd let you enter the courtyard dressed like that. That wasn't very nice. What is it? Could you lend us some money? Unlikely. What for? We need to talk to our father. He's a prisoner in the castle's jail. And the jailer won't let us see him until we give him a penny. Once you get back to him, it'll be two pennies at least. What are you saying? Once Odo sees that you really want something, he'll start overcharging for it. 
In the end, he's just another businessman. At this rate, we'll never see Father. Could you help us talk to him? Ah, uh, sorry, but no. Oh, uh, what were you doing at the jail? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to pry. You know, my husband is a prisoner as well. He used to run this business, but he was caught selling underweight. Now I have to travel to Flanders and tell my husband's agents that they don't need to worry. Leaving my entire business in this man's hands. A wise decision. A man whose calculations leave a lot to be desired. <clears throat> I tell you what. I will give you enough to pay Odo if you help us count the fleeces inside. Do you know how to count? I told you my calculations are right. There are 23 sacks. Yes, we know how to count. Then go into my stall and tell me how many there are. Thank you so much. Come on, Richard. Let's do this together. One. Six. Nine. Thirteen. Fourteen. Twenty. All right, I got it. I'll tell you when you're done. How many have you got? Twenty-three. Uh, are you certain? I think so. Let's tell them then. We're done. Good. So, tell me. All in all, there are 22 sacks of wool in there. Ali, are you sure? Tell me again, Aldous. How much did you pay per sack? As I said, for mixed quality such as this, it was one pound average. One pound per sack? Ah, selling wool is good business. With the coin you have here, this means... I'm right. We're one sack short. The children miscounted. It seems everyone miscounts apart from you. Here's your coin, girl. You confirm my own calculation, so I'm giving you more than what you asked for. If you're smart, you'll find out what Odo wants more than money. Then he might not ask for so much. What would that be? Let's just say, he likes to feel like a good person every once in a while. It makes him feel less like the monster his job has made him. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And good luck in Flanders. It'll be all right. You really gave them money? I can do with my coin whatever I like, unlike you. So don't follow my example. I won't. We can't leave yet.
Hmm? Here. Well, that's one for you. It'll be two pence if your brother wants in as well. Are you mad? I didn't expect that from you. Why not? I thought you were a decent person. Well, I... I am. But I'm also a very funny bloke. Was just fooling around with you. You can get in for free, of course. Have fun seeing your father. Who's there? Just. It's still very fair. Are you both well? How have you managed? <coughs> Where have you been living? <coughs> they wouldn't tell me anything about you. It was the worst of the torture. We're fine, Father. Don't you worry. We've been living in the castle. Matthew has been taking care of us. But you, you can't live there anymore. By now, the king has probably made that dumb oaf <coughs> Percy Hamley, the Earl. <laughs> but where's Matthew? Why isn't he with you? He got away with us. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> he deserves some peace after everything I put him through. Father, we have to ask King Stephen to release you. No! I swore an oath to King Henry. <coughs> Princess Maud and her sons will rule. I shall not swear allegiance <coughs> to Stephen, and neither will you, even if the other parents did. <coughs> Do you hear me? Yes, Father. Stephen is not our king. Not... not mine, and not yours! Please, Father, please, calm yourself. Children, 
When the Hamlets brought me here, I hid 50 peasants on a belt under my shirt. <coughs> I gave that belt to a priest. 50? What priest? I don't know his name. <coughs> I gave him the belt and demanded that he keep it safe for you. <coughs> he was near the West Gate. What about after we get the money? What should we do? Your Aunt Edith lives in the village of Huntley, on the road <coughs> to Gloucester. You are to go there. Richard, you will be a squire to her husband, Sir Simon. You will learn the arts of knighthood. <coughs> Aliena, you will... You will be lady-in-waiting to Aunt Edith until you marry. What about you? <coughs> I will die in this cell. We won't let you. You will. And before you leave, I want you both <coughs> to swear an oath. We can't leave you like this. You can, and you will. Richard, pull out your sword. <coughs> now, put your hand on the hilt, my son. Swear by Almighty God and Jesus Christ and all the saints <coughs> that you will not rest until you are Earl of Shiring and Lord of all the lands I ruled. I swear by Almighty God and Jesus Christ and all the saints that I will not rest until I am Earl of Shiring and Lord of all the lands you ruled. Now you, Helena, <coughs> Swear by Almighty God and, and Jesus Christ and all the saints <coughs> that you will take care of your brother Richard <coughs> until he has fulfilled his vow. I swear by Almighty God and Jesus Christ and all the saints that I will take care of my brother Richard until he has fulfilled his vow. There. Now, you need never come to this place again. No, don't, don't say that. You have promised to rebuild what we have lost. Today, I will confess my sins, pray for my soul. Now, go. Richard. Richard. We have to go. We have to go. God! Open up! Fine, Ali.
Percy Hanley. Bishop Whaleran. Good morning. Ali! It's them! Over there! The Hamleys! Again, thank you for your assistance in Kingsbridge, my son. We have to thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. Right, Mother? Of course. Well, don't just stand there. Walk out with me, but very calmly. We can't let them see us. Oh, children, pardon me. Now we're only missing one more. Here he is. Ali! Ali! Those horrid people are about to talk to the king. We knew that they would, didn't we? Yes. Yes, we did. Father was right. They are all tied together. The Hamleys, the King, even the Church. Do you think Father's priest is also in on this? Well, we'll have to find him first. Then we'll know. Oh, look at that handsome young man. Ah, uh, good day, my ladies. So well spoken. And look, he even has a battle scar. <laughs> <laughs> like what you see, handsome. You can ride two of us, young lord, if you can pay. Have you seen a priest? Our father met him here at the Westgate. He owes us money. Oh, you're talking about him. That's where he got all that money. <laughs> what? He even paid for Mary's dress. He didn't want to at first. All she had to do was stroke his bald head. Where is the priest? What's his name? Don't know his name, but he's a regular at that one inn. The Boar, close by the North Gate. Smells like piss there. Shall I teach you, love? How to fuck a man? Or a woman? You can make a fortune with that little mouth of yours. But in a year, you'll look like me. <laughs> We'd better not linger here. We might run into the Hamleys. This is the place, but it looks closed. Um, excuse me. We're looking for a priest who stole our money. Word is, he comes to this place regularly. A priest? Uh, I, sorry, dear children. I, I don't seem to be able to recall anyone, uh, anyone who fits that description. But that little stable boy might know. He knows everyone who comes and goes. Oh, where can we find him? 
when he's not working at the boar, he's doing small chores around town. He's always busy, the little chap. Where's the green cap? It's adorable, I tell you. <laughs> Well, look at that. I knew we'd find you here. They're here. Damn, you lost them. William will not be pleased when he hears this. That's what you get when you work with halfwits. How am I supposed to move this barrel? If it's twice as heavy as me. Ugh. Let me help. Very impressive. Thank you for that. I'm always telling them, if you want me to restock your kitchen, don't let them cram the barrels to the brim. So, what was it you wanted to know? Um, do you know a monk who frequents the boar a lot? The boar? I used to work there. The boar, the lazy mayor, and two private kitchens. You're talking about Father Ralph. Thought the women had sucked him dry, but he always comes back with more money. But he only spends it on beer and ladies. Never has a tip for me. <sighs> Where can we find him? He's a priest at St. Michael. One of them churches round here. Which one is it? It's close to the East Gate. But don't look for him inside. He likes to light around in his back alley. Oh, thank you. You've been very helpful. Pleasure. See you around. Are you Father Ralph? What if I am? Does that mean yes? I guess so. He's the only monk around. What do you want? Well, I am the son of Bartholomew, the Earl of Shiring. So? Our father gave you money for safekeeping. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Now piss off. You're about to commit a great sin. If we don't get that money, we'll starve. Start begging for arms, then. You may not know it, but a lot of people live that way. So you're saying there's no money? Right. But my father said... Your father lied, then. We should talk to the sheriff. <laughs> It'll be my word against the word of a jailed traitor. And now give me some peace. I'm hungry. He's right, isn't he? We need proof that he's lying. Like what? Maybe something he recently purchased that a monk couldn't normally afford. That's smart, Ali. And then? I don't know. At least we'll be sure that he's lying, right? Maybe if we expose him, he'll give in. Are you sure? No, but you can see the guilt eating at him already. Keep an eye on him. I'll have a look around. It's too heavy. Hey! Oh, is this yours? 
Oh, I didn't think a poor monk could afford something like this. Hmm. I'll call the sheriff. Richard, you go over there. What? Why? Make sure no one's watching. Help! Sheriff! Shut up! Get the sheriff! Father Ralph needs help! I'll tell them the truth about you. You've got no proof. No one will believe you. You will hang for this. Ali, they're coming. It's too heavy. Hey! Oh, is this yours? Oh, I didn't think a poor monk could afford something like this. <laughs> Richard, I found it! Oh no! He took all the money. What now? Don't pretend you didn't see, Monk. I found this under your barrel. You are a thief! That strap proves nothing. You seem very certain of this. Sheriff! Hush, you stupid brats. The sheriff is a bastard. He'll take everything for himself. But first, he'll take your hands. Sheriff or no sheriff, you won't get your money. Ali, this isn't going anywhere. Well, at least we know now that he won't call for help. Give us the money. It belonged to a traitor to the crown. By giving it to me, he paid his debt to God. We will make you pay, you monster. You wouldn't hurt a man of the church. I warn you, I have friends nearby. If you scream, I will show them your beer-soaked belt and tell them what a thieving liar you are. You wouldn't harm me. He... What? You're a devil! I'm going to cut out your eyes one by one. First, the left eye. No! Oh, oh, please don't! Where's the money? Here, here, I got it on me. Where's the rest? Gone. Gone where? I spent it. Let's take what we've got and go. Uh, all right. I may come back one day, and then I'll collect what you owe us. You were wonderful, Ali. You scared him after death. Yes, well, now, come on. Father wants us to find Aunt Edith.
On the road to Gloucester, my feet started to bleed. I remembered a cobbler who lived nearby in the town of Haystead who could sell us some boots. But taking the detour would cost us both money and time. In the afternoon, the sky darkened and the temperature dropped drastically. We considered setting up camp to allow us an opportunity to warm our worn down feet. However, we were already running low on food and would soon need to reach our destination. Richard had been silent for a while when I offered him our last piece of bread. Uncle Simon will make you a knight, I said. But wouldn't I have to fight for King Stephen then, he answered, taking a bite out of the dry crust. I watched him for a while, then turned away, wondering how difficult our lives had become and how infinitely more complicated. In the hills, there are a lot of poor small holdings. We asked a shepherd for directions to Huntley. It's just down the road, he answered. I thanked him and gave Richard a hopeful push. It's all burned and rotting. Auntie and Uncle must have left some time ago. Maybe they built their new home nearby. A proper one made of stone. They always had coin enough for a stone house anyway. Maybe this isn't even the right house. It is. How would you know? It's been a long time since we came here with Father. These houses all look alike. Shut up, Hallie. Please. They're gone. Probably killed. Whatever happened to them? We will never find out. It's over. There's no place for us to go. Don't give up. Mm. Oh, good day again. Good day. Huntley is just down that road. You can't miss it. I know. 
We just found out that the people we've been looking for aren't there anymore. Oh, that's a shame. What are you doing? Getting all the work done. My wife is ill, so I have to do it alone. Needs to be done by nightfall, otherwise I won't get them to Winchester tomorrow. Why are you asking? We were supposed to live here with our uncle and aunt, but since they're gone, we need to find another way to get by. Do you know what happened to the owners of that burned down house down the road? It's not Simon you're looking for, is it? Why, yes. A while ago, some knights came to his house, nasty bunch. Burned it down, said he was part of some scheme against the king, like his brother, the Earl. What happened to Simon and his wife? Dunno, haven't seen any of them since. I understand. Thank you. We could take the wool to Winchester for you. You could stay at home and look after your wife while we sell your stock. Well, that would be kind of you. But I couldn't trust you to negotiate the right price and bring the money back safely. What if I bought the wool from you? You'd get the money right now and wouldn't have to go to market anymore. And whatever more we can negotiate will be the pay for our travels. Well, that's an interesting thought. But for that to work, you would need to buy my entire stock, and I doubt you have coin for that. Now let me get back to work. The sun will set soon. How much for one sack? Just name your price. One and a half pounds. I want to see the wool first. All right, have a look. Let's see. Huh, these fleeces are quite thin. I put the cheap ones on top, in case of rain. Mm, the ones deeper down don't look that much better. Well, I couldn't wait for the wool to grow any thicker. My family is hungry and weak. I had to shear my sheep early this year. All right. I can offer you one pound. That's less than what merchants in Winchester would offer. You can't expect me to pay as much as a merchant would. Why not? Look, I'm not only offering you money here, but also the chance to stay here with your wife. You wouldn't have to worry about your wool anymore, because that would be my problem then. But it'll only work if I can sell everything for more than I paid you here. Hmm. You're smart. Well, all right. It's one pound per sack. Here. I'll finish shearing old Mabel here, then bring out the rest I've got. Maybe you also want to talk to the other shepherds around here. They might want to sell too. Ah, all right. Thank you. By the way, there is a man looking for you. He came by just shortly after you. I told him you went to Huntley. What man? Dunno. Brown scruffy hair, beard, black horse. Could be he rode right past you. That old hut is not easy to find. Shall I give him a message if he turns up again? Tell him we left Huntley for good. I will. Now let me get those sacks for you. I wonder what Richard will think of this. I'm not feeling very well. Let me see your ear. Don't touch it. I feel weak. My face hurts so much. Have you still got some water? Some. But it hurts when I swallow. What did we do wrong, Ali? Why is God punishing us?
We will get through this. If we came this far, we'll get even further. We just need to stay strong and be patient. But there is nowhere for us to go. We're commoners now. Commoners who never learned to do common work, and... We both swore an oath to Father. If we don't get the Elden back, we will go to hell. We could become wool merchants. What do we know about wool? We know from Meg that a lot of shepherds complain about their walk to Winchester. What if we did that for them? And what about me becoming a knight? Uncle Simon's not the only one who'd take you as a squire. If we collected enough money, we could pay another knight to teach you. It might work. Right? We've had some bad luck till now, but surely not everyone is a fiend. It'll take some time, but we should be able to gradually increase our income. All we need to do is have a lot of patience and pray to God. Ah! Richard! Lord Amney caught me riding the horse you stole from him. Ah! He told me before I take you back, I can have some fun with you. Ah! Ah! Get away from him! No! <laughs> Richard! Richard! <laughs> I failed you. If only I had run faster. If only I had known how to treat your wounds, your ear. If only I had known how to save you. But how could I have? I'd known as little about the world as you had. Now all that remained for me to do was to stay with you. To hold you until your skin had gone pale and the burning veins clutching your neck had grown cold. I don't remember much of the weeks that followed, until one day I found myself back in Winchester. May I ask what you're planning to do with all that wool? Mind showing me a piece of your stock? I'd like to establish the quality before I make any promises. Hmm, not bad. That's quite some wool you've brought along. I hope you're not planning to set up shop here too. Meg would kill me if I let you. I came to sell this wool to you, not to compete with you. 
It comes from the shepherds near Huntley. They gave it to me so they wouldn't have to come here themselves. I see. All right. I'll give you a pound per sack for this. What? <laughs> Only a pound? Ah, that's a fair price. But that's what I paid the shepherds. This doesn't even make up for the cart, taxes and travelling. Oh. Then you've made a bad business decision. What? I can't pay for your mistakes, can I? You have to handle that yourself. Say, uh, where's your brother? Did he not help you? I... um... well... He's... he's not here. Oh, I'm sorry. I could buy your cart off you as well if you want. Fifty-five pence? What do you say? My... I'll... Just... I'll take the wool somewhere else. Shiring, perhaps, or, or Gloucester. I'm afraid they won't pay you any more than I can. Maybe, maybe even less once they see your battered hands. Then I'll prove that the wool's quality is worth the price. Just let me look at it once more. <sighs> I've got to work out what signifies high quality. Remember what the shepherds said. Oh, if Richard was here, we'd remember it all. It's from a good breed of sheep, they said. What else? Um... It's clean. No grease or dirt. It's dry, light and soft. It's strong. The wool is very durable. Hmm... Have you thought it over? In this weather, some cartloads of wool would arrive damp. I made sure that this is dry and undamaged. It's light and easy to transport. Hmm, and customers are hesitant to buy wet wool. Wool is often full of grease and dirt. But this batch was scoured very thoroughly. It's very clean and soft. Hmm, even picky customers would be delighted. That is true. Some sheep produce brittle fibre, but this wool is strong. Its sheep had good, healthy lives. Hmm, hmm, it's suitable for finer and durable fabrics. All right. What pricing did you have in mind? One pound and ten shilling per sack, then. <sighs> well, tell you what. I'll give you one and a quarter pounds for every sack. You've brought up some good arguments. Your wool is exquisite. Ah, uh, but not a penny more. All right? Yes, agreed. One and a quarter pounds it is. Very good. Just so you know, if my mistress gets angry, I'll have you tell her the same things you told me. Thank you for your business. I've earned 60 pence for each sack. I know why Meg likes you, Aliena. You're just as ruthless as her. I must say, that was impressive. Can I help you? Forgive me, I didn't mean to barge in, but... You are the Lady Aliena of Shiring, are you not? And who are you? My name is Philip of Gwyneth. I am the Prior of Kingsbridge. Ah, oh, I've heard of you. You helped a lot of people after the Hamleys attacked my father's castle. We only did what was right. I met your father. My father knew many people. Not all of them were his allies. I know. 
I'd like to invite you to come to Kingsbridge. Our own wool trade has fallen somewhat into neglect, God forgive, but we have plenty of sheep. I am sure we could come to an agreement. Me? Trading wool for you? You wouldn't work for me. You would work with me. I can see that you are not afraid of hard work. I don't know a single novice who would have been willing to pull a cart like that on his own. My friend, Brother Milius, would be delighted to speak with you. He always goes to markets for our priory. What do you say? I'll consider it. Please, do consider my offer. You will be most welcome in Kingsbridge. It is the least I can do. Thank you, Father. Not much later, I found a home in Kingsbridge. I remember when I got there, there was Jack. You! I remember you! You're the boy with no father. Actually, I have two fathers now. Is that so? Yes. Tom Builder and Jack Sherberg. And then the days just went by. Little did I know that the best and the worst was yet to come. So, you have returned from Rome, Bishop Whaleran. Yes, it was a very illuminating time. What do you want? The Pope was very pleased to hear how I and you have worked together in the past to support our king. We did not do it for your church. He was less pleased, however, to hear about the bargain you struck with the Prior of Kingsbridge. Why should he care? Once and for all, we will not support you in your personal quarrels. The deal we made with the Priory of Kingsbridge has the blessing of the King. Of course, and you would never change your mind on that matter. Tell me, has your son returned from the Holy Land yet? We have not heard from him. Ever since he set out to join that crusade of yours. If he dies, your church will be responsible. Do not underestimate your son, Lady Hamley. That would be a great mistake. Not long now, and you'll have a ceiling. Wonderful. Then we will no longer have to hold our services in the crypt. You could even begin to plan the paintings for the wooden ceiling and the walls. Why a wooden ceiling? So the whole thing goes up in flames again? Philip decided on that because it's cheaper. And these walls can only hold the weight of a wooden ceiling. I love you like a brother, Alfred, but the apprentice shouldn't have to tell the master craftsman things like that. Jack, for once, focus on your work and finish it. Just for once. Or you'll stay an apprentice for the rest of your life. Don't argue again. Alfred is right. This is a house of God. <sighs> All right. Now, where were we? You could start planning the paintings for the ceiling, if you wish. Can we afford that at the moment? We are paying so many workers already. 
Father Philip. Tom Builder. Alfred. Ah, Aliena. How are you? I'll be moving my wool to Shiring today. The fleece fair starts tomorrow. Ah, I almost forgot. Milius and I have already arranged everything. We'd make much more of a profit if Percy Hamley had not raised the taxes this week. Again? Ugh. Jonathan, you shouldn't wander off. Stay with us. Tom is right. You hear? He looks like a real monk. Omnius Pluvius. Nominee Patri Amen. That sounds like Latin, but it's not quite right yet. We would not have to worry about this if we could sell our wool here on our market. The king would have to grant us a license for that. And the Hamleys wouldn't like that, I'm afraid. They want the taxes from the fair in Shiring. Don't worry. We'll make a good profit. It's a good year. We've never moved this much wool as it is. Uh, oh, and I have to build a new storage house. Alfred is a master craftsman now. If you can pay him, he'll help you. Ah, very good. If she hadn't a business of her own, I'd hire her to work for me. <laughs> she is something. She would make me a good wife. Hey! Hey, take that back! <laughs> what? What did I say? For the last time, stop your quarreling! Philip... Let's look at the plans again. There's a problem I have to discuss with you. All right. Take that back, Alfred. Jack, leave him alone. And for once, finish your work. And Jack, please keep an eye on Jonathan, will you? What? Why me? <laughs> finish your work, Jack. <laughs> That's how it always was. But on that day, I didn't care. On that day, I was going to see Aliena. And I was going to tell her how I felt. And nothing and no one would stop me. Hey, little brother. <laughs> I hope you appreciate that I look out for you. I ate a beetle. <laughs> Don't tell Philip, all right? It's our secret. Come on, let's have fun. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, I can. Tom and Philip said you can't. You have to work. I know what they said. I was there, you know. The wall is already coming apart, and Alfred wants to put a stone ceiling on top instead of a wooden one. <sighs> Idiot. I better not get too close. Ah, 
I need to do better than that. Ah, oh, missed. Yes! I bet there are more nests around. Jonathan, don't run off. Don't worry, he's here. Ah, great. Thank you, Martha. And no, I don't have time to watch him. Oh, damn. Oh, no! It's all broken! <laughs> the sounds of the market. Shouldn't you be working, Jack? Eh, maybe I should go before I buy anything. Watch where you go, will ya? Now it's come to that. Even the monks step on my chickens. So, how's business? All well? More and more people keep coming here. Yesterday, there were two dozen merchants from Shiring alone. You exhausted? Pretty much. But the Priory made a lot of money. Seems the Earl just raised the taxes at his market, so they all came here instead. Now they've all returned to Shiring for the Fleece Fair. Is the Earl asking lower taxes at the Fleece Fair? On the contrary. From what the merchants told me, it's even worse. So they all have to trade their wool there, including Aliena and the Prior. But you need a license to do a Fleece Fair, and only Shiring has one. Are you not going to the Fleece Fair in Shiring? No. Philip asked me to supervise the market here. So now you're working with Philip and Aliena? I know. It's a lot of work. But we all want the same thing, after all. And what's that? To keep this place in good shape. This is our home. Yeah, I guess. You should be working, too. I'm just taking a break. Did you see Aliena? Hmm. Maybe she was heading home. I think she's expecting a visitor. A visitor? Do I hear jealousy in your voice? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Aliena went home. Could be. I know she's expecting a visitor. Do you want to buy some of this fine cloth, Jonathan? Great idea. I could make you a red robe. Or a blue one. No. <laughs> no, that would be silly now, wouldn't it? What is the colour that monks wear? Brown and black and grey. How do you get along with Alfred? He usually only talks to me when he wants me to cook for him. Why would you keep cooking for him? He doesn't have a wife. And he's my brother. I wouldn't ask you to cook for me. Jonathan wouldn't either, and he's your brother too. Jack, no one's supposed to know. Don't worry. He's a little monk. He is everyone's brother. Maybe I should get going. Oh, before I forget, I have a message for you. I think Ellen wants to talk to you about Popper. What's there to talk about? Tom doesn't believe I can be a builder. That's not true. That's what she wants to talk about. Popper knows what you can do. He told her. Oh, did he? Yes. He's complicated. He is. On days like this, you can almost get lost here.
The Hamleys were the ones forcing that deal on me to spite Waleran. They are breaking the agreement they made with King Stephen. What are you doing out here, Jack? Did you finish your corbel? I'm not done yet, but I'll do it later, all right? <sighs> Why do I have the feeling that the corbel won't be finished today? Or tomorrow? I'm doing my best, all right? If you would let me do more than just the statues. You need to focus on the task at hand. I can do much more than stone carving, and you know it. We can't always get what we want. Alfred can. Jack, please. We have much bigger problems to solve right now. The Earl of Shiring has stopped supporting us. If we don't do anything about it, we'll have to send the workers away. We have to stop building the cathedral. I will talk to Percy Hamley. And if he won't see me, I will talk to the King, or this will be the end of Kingsbridge. Can I help you? Yes, by doing as you're told. Do your job, and only your job. And leave Alfred alone. All I know is that suddenly the Quarrymaster wants us to pay steep prices for stone. And the, and the Verderer of Shoot Forest now insists Good day, my ladies. Ha <laughs> ha if it isn't handsome Jack. Have you come by to help, eh? Ha <laughs> Um, not really. Didn't think so. <laughs> After a day, your hands start bleeding. Piss and salt in the water will do that. Piss? Only way to get the grease and dirt from the wall. We can use a coin, but there's only so much pain you can take. Sooner or later, Aliena will have to look someplace else for Fuller's. I will find a way to help you with your hands. Well, as a start, then maybe you should get back to work as well. I'm just taking a break, all right? Don't always run off, Jonathan, or I'll get in trouble with... Aliena! Yes? Do you mind if we sit here? Uh, of course not. And how are you two? Oh, um, well. Shouldn't you be working, Jack Builder? Us? No, as it happens, my young friend here is a bit disgruntled with his superiors and needed a break. Oh, is that so? Maybe you'd like to come and work for me, Jonathan. <laughs> Well... 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 Jonathan! He's here! I'm coming! Jack loves you. <laughs> I was just about to ask if you think that Jonathan suspects anything. I swear on this very Bible that I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> cold! Cold, cold, cold. Oh, I lost my Bible. Shit! I'm sorry, but no bad deed goes unpunished. 
But we haven't done anything bad. Yet. You burned down the cathedral. My lady. You dangerous, feral beast from the woods. God hates me for that. He, he has a strange way of showing it. the first time when we sat here together. And you were dangling your feet in the brook lost in thought. Just like today. Why can't it always be like this, Jack? I know what you mean. I hate pretending that I don't love you. Then don't. Jack! I know. I know. Have you heard from Sir Catface? <sighs> the war never ends, and he always needs more money. And I pay him to fight for the man who killed our father. King Stephen, to get the earldom back from him. Mm, yes. But you know, I don't even want that. Everything I've built here, what we have, I have all that because I'm not my father's daughter anymore. I'm afraid that if Sir Catface wins back our earldom, I'll lose much more than the money he's wasting now. Hmm. Did you fight with Tom again? Tom always takes Alfred's side. Well, he is Alfred's father. He worries about him. It was the same with Richard. If Tom's worried about Alfred, then why is he always telling me off? Because you are the clever one. He probably worries about Alfred. Hey, it's not my fault that he's a... he's a bit... slow in the head. Exactly. Tom thinks you should know better. Hmm, maybe. Were you still reading the Bible? Oh, Philip insists. I better be angry that I lost it. Oh, don't worry. He'll still keep teaching you. I think he sees something in you. Oh, maybe I should become a monk. <laughs> oh, but but you, you aren't allowed to kiss monks. I shall love you like a brother, then. <laughs> no, that's not funny. <laughs> Say... What was that book called you told me about last time we met? The Amores by Ovid. I've only heard about it from a travelling scholar. Hmm, the title sounds promising. Yeah, but maybe it's not as interesting as we think. Let's find out. I'll ask around Kingsbridge and see what I can find. All right. Your father meant well. I'm sure he did. Did he? He never loved anyone. Not even my mother. It was not my fault we lost the earldom. It's not my responsibility. How could father make me swear that oath? Don't be cross with Tom. I think he wishes Alfred was more capable than he really is. He wants Alfred to be his successor after all. Well, perhaps he could be if he only put his mind to it. I mean, even I could do it. <laughs> I'm sure you could. But who would want to build a cathedral anyway? You know, back in the forest, my mother made up the rules herself. But they all made sense somehow. Here, everything is... it's, it's complicated. Oh, I know. Rules everywhere. Why is it that Tom can't tell Philip that Jonathan is his son? He's so happy when he's around Jonathan. 
Tom's rules. And Philip's, probably. Tom believes he has lost the right to be Jonathan's father, as he gave up on him when he was born. That's what Martha said. And what about us? When will we tell other people about us? I guess when we're ready to play by their rules. <laughs> or they by ours. I guess. It's like trading wool. Is it? Trading wool is a bit like what my father did. Talking to people, negotiating, trading. It's... <laughs> it's fun, actually. Talking to people is fun? You listen to what they have to say, what they have to offer, what they're looking for. Then you come up with an offer where everyone profits, including you. I get it. We'll tell people about us when we come up with an offer that suits them and us. Right. And you should try to remember why Tom and Philip keep nagging you. They want the best for you and for themselves. Which is you. If you say so. I know so. I want the same. One day we'll tell everyone everything about us, Ali. All of them. Maybe not everything, Jack Builder. Uh, oh. What's going on? We better go and find out. Everyone, calm down. What happened at the quarry? Listen. Yes, there was an incident. Our friend Otto Blackface was hurt at the quarry. What happened? The Earl of Shiring had his men stop us from taking stone from the quarries and timber from the forest. Why? Why would Percy Hamley do that? All we know is what his men told us. That the Earl of Shiring will not support the construction of Kingsbridge Cathedral anymore. What are we gonna do now? I will ride to Shiring myself and I will talk to Percy Hamley. Oh, that's all good and well. But how are we supposed to continue working without stone and timber? I want to be paid before you run out of money. I need to feed my family. Calm down. You heard the prior. He will talk to the Earl himself. And I've planned ahead for a day like this. You will be paid soon. And there will be plenty of work for at least another month. For all of you. I trust I Tom. I say we stay. And I trust our prior. I will prepare everything immediately. I'll be with you in a moment. What if the Earl won't listen to Philip? I need to talk to Philip. See me later at my house, all right? What about the book we wanted to look for? Not now. I, I think I can help here. I'll find the book. We will sort this out. And now, back to work. This cathedral won't build itself. And you, Jack, watch Jonathan. Oh, uh, what again? I will do everything in my power to make sure you are paid. I know that you showed us mercy before when we had to flee from Earl's Castle. My husband has worked here ever since, and we would like to be close to Our Lady Aliena, but we have no choice. Oh, Mary. The same goes for us, Mary. We all owe Philip much. I trust you, Father, but I risk my neck up there every day. My wife is right. If you can't pay, We'll have to move on. 
Kingsbridge is our home. I don't want to leave. Let me think of something. Maybe there's a way we can pay your workers early, Philip. But selling the wool at the fleece fair will take at least a couple of days. I'm sorry, but me and the other workers can't wait that long. Not now that everything is so unsure. Trust me, Philip. I'll think of something. Jack! You said you were done with your corbel. What I saw did not look finished. It's hard. I need time. I need it finished today. If you don't do it, Alfred will. That's my corbel. None of this is ours. Doing the carvings is the only job you didn't give Alfred to screw up. We should be thankful of the work we're allowed to do. And in our work, we must be thorough and steadfast. Thankful for what we are allowed to do? You are the one who wouldn't settle for less than a cathedral. You could have had other work, but no. For months, you remained steadfast, no matter the cost. When are you going to tell Jonathan about what happened in the forest? Ah, shouldn't have said that about Jonathan. Damn it. I better not get too close. I bet there are more nests around. Do you mind? My ants. I just took a few. They aren't all your ants. No, the other ants are his. Brother Paul. And that is little Jack. You see, he never paid the bridge toll when he came here. Sometimes you must show clemency and let those in need pass into our town without asking for coin. I'll remember your words, Brother Paul. Ah, there you are, Cub. I wanted to talk to you. What is it? I'm afraid there's a lot of trouble ahead of us. From what I heard from Tom, they're trying to shut down the construction. They? The Earl of Shiring. Tom is under a lot of stress. If it weren't for him, it would already be over. Why are you telling me this? Did he say something about me? No. But I know that he just can't stand to see you and Alfred arguing. Just don't see why Alfred gets to do everything he wants. Alfred is a master builder. You are an apprentice. There are rules. They may not be my rules, but they are yours. If you want to become a master builder. Mm, maybe. Don't be angry, Cobb. I'm not. The Fullers down in Kingsbridge are having trouble with their hands. I'm not surprised. I could only do it for a few days, even though Aliena paid well. Here, 
Take this. Ouch! Stinging nettle. <laughs> yes. And you need to crush it with a pestle and mortar, and then make a balm from it. Cuthbert had a mortar, I think. The Fuller's hands will improve for a while. But only for a while. If they want to stop their hands from suffering, they need to stop fulling. Maybe you're right. Thank you. As much as I'd like to, I did promise Tom I'd only do my own carvings in the evenings. Hello, Milius. Jack. A and Jonathan. This is not the best of times. Brother Cuthbert could have been a little more careful in storing the apples down here. I'm sure it's fine, Brother Andrew. I am not so sure. Even the salt is damp. Cuthbert knew what he was doing. What is Brother Andrew up to? We will get a new cellar as soon. Andrew is preparing everything. Maybe they should get a new kitchener as well. Why? If what Cuthbert did was not good enough, then what I can do can't be much better. Cuthbert knew so much more than I did. One. Two. Now, let's see. Here we go. Yes. Just a little more. Oh. Good. And now, uh, what? Milius? Yes. Do you know how to make a bar? Indeed. All it takes is some hot fat and beeswax. Ah, thank you. You know, you really wouldn't make a bad monk, Jack. What, me? <laughs> I think that would be a problem. Why? You can read, you know about herbs, and you are good company. Is this supposed to be wine? What? Here, in the corner. No, it's vinegar. It's vinegar. That shouldn't be here. What was Cuthbert thinking? Oh, Lord. Give me the strength to endure this without chasing Brother Andrew from my kitchen. I don't think I would make a good monk. Why not? Philip thinks so too. He told me. Never mind why. I don't need to be a monk to come around and talk to you, right? That is true. And I think I should get back to work soon. <laughs> Thank you for your help.
It's blocked. I have to go in through the front. Ah, locked. Get up! The mortar won't mix itself! <laughs> the mortar won't complain if it has to wait until I'm done with me break. Well, the mortar won't, but I will. What's the problem? I'm taking me well-deserved break. Well-deserved? You deserve a good kick in, you lazy drunk. Better a drunk than a bearded bastard. Come on, then. Tip me. Show me what you got. Please, this is leading nowhere. Think for a moment what other people would do. What? Who? Uh, Tom Builder. Now, he's a hard worker, isn't he? True, he's a hard worker, that he is. But also the man knows how to take a break. And he knows when to give others room for a break. This is not your break. You've been taking a shit for half a day and used up yours. Now don't you start and ruin mine too. Oh, wow. Look at them go. When I take a break, you take one too. Has your wife been cooking again, eh? <laughs> go, dare you! Go, drink yourself to death! Uh... Oh, the prior. Oh, yes. Prior Philip's not running around drunk now, is he? No, he's not. And I'm not either. I'm sipping. <laughs> and there's my problem right there. Get up and push, Philip Wood. No, he wouldn't. A break is like a Sunday. It's a sin to work on a Sunday. Well, that's true. It's not a Sunday! But it's my break! The Earl of Shiring. Uh, which one? Earl Bartholomew, or the fat one, the new one? Percy Hamley! You don't know the name of our Earl? He's not my Earl. I'm from Earl's Castle. Bartholomew was my Earl, and a great man. But he's dead now, isn't he? Gone. You should know the name of your new Earl. What? The fat one? Percy Hamley. You know what? I refuse to remember that name. What? Why? For spite! It wasn't right what he did to my Earl. You know what? What you're doing isn't right either. I refuse to remember your name as well. You wouldn't dare. Already did it. Alfred Builder. Oh, he's a good example. He's a master builder now. But he likes his beer, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he does. But he's always sober when he's working. Always. You know, maybe I should be a bit more like Alfred Builder. Me too. You have got to be kidding me. Well then, back to work. No, I'm not done with me break yet. Alfred Builder would know when his break is up. Alfred Builder would know when to shut the hell up. Uh, I doubt he would. What about King Stephen? Now, that is a man who sits a lot. How would you know? He's got a throne. He's the king. Of course he's got a throne. And he's sitting on it. He's got a throat. Of course the man knows how to sit. 
Oh, like you, you mean? Yeah, like me on me well-deserved break. Or you on yours when you're sitting on the shitter for half a day. I was not! I heard you farting from here. You think I want to shit for half a day? You think that? Well, you better think again! Ah, Jack Jackson. Who said? Never heard that name. That's me. I thought you were Jack Builder. Well... I don't know what to make of you, to be honest. Shouldn't you be working? You're just running about everywhere. You never get anything done. At least don't keep us from working, thank you very much. Oh, forget it. Brother Arnaldus. Good example indeed. That poor man is as good as dead. What's your excuse for lying around in the cemetery? What's your excuse for having a beard like a bear's arse? Get back to work! Never! And stop yelling! Never! The subprior. Oh, don't get me started on subprior remedias. He is a hard working man. He is. And don't you doubt it. What? That he is a hard working man. Who? Subprior remedias. You fool! <gasps> what? How dare they? How dare you? Shouting in the cemetery like heathens! But we... I... Silence! Do you have any idea how hard the work of a sub is? How much devotion and painful work it takes to teach our novices, our monks? And you dare call me a fool? We didn't! No. Silence, I say! I will think of a way to make you two understand the kind of behavior I expect in this priory. I think they'll be busy for a while. We place our trust in you. We take you in. And... Hmm, I should ask someone who knows about books instead. I'm looking for a book by Ovid. Oh, we saw some in Shiring and in Winchester. There are also a few copies in Salisbury, I believe. Which ones are you looking for? The Amores? Have you heard of that? Uh, that was one of the copies in Winchester, I think. Did you read it? Me? I... I, I don't remember. He did. Just a page or two. Sounds like the right book, and Winchester's not far. I should tell Ali what I found out. What is it that you're working on? I'm copying pages of the book Prior Philip wrote. We finished the original last year. I didn't know he wrote a book. Not many know of it. The content is... He's critical of the church and bishops. After his experience with Bishop Whaleran, he studied about what he calls Eudicia Clary. Eudicia Clary? The judgments of the clergy? Yes. In the past, there were many cruel tests that were made to discover whether a man was guilty or not. The Lord was to judge them. These ordeals were called Eudicium Dei, the judgment of God. 
Some had to hold burning iron in their bare hands. Others were drowned. Some were burned on the pyre. And if they were innocent, God would save them. There'd be no martyrs if that were true. Even Adolphus would have been saved. Yes. God works in mysterious ways. The prior wants these horrible ordeals to become a thing of the past, for cruelty only leads to more cruelty. But I heard of miracles. Saints that survived burnings. True. However, Prior Philip believes these were not judgments of God, but judgments of the clergy. You did she a clary? Yes! Stories and fake ordeals to redeem friends and allies of the clergy. Fake miracles? By the church? Ooh, that sounds like Philip is asking for trouble. Whoever is accused of fakery and heresy will not be likely to respond well to that. But we believe Philip is right. This is the second millennium. We must finally learn from past mistakes. Better not get too close. Friar Philip is too forgiving. The sub prior has to handle everything he neglects. Everything. As a sub prior, I have even more responsibilities than the prior himself. And more worries. I better not get too close. Everything all right, Jonathan? <laughs> ah, Philip and Tom won't mind if we take a break. Sometimes people say one thing and mean another thing. Either he's stopped listening or he's thinking about it. Hello, Cuthbert. I just don't see how you can possibly regain our trust. I hope you're happy wherever you are. What do you mean, wherever he is? He's lying right there. I made sure his wait for Judgment Day is comfortable. Philip thinks we might uh, go to heaven when we die. No. We lie in wait till Judgment Day. That's why I want someone good to bury me, to make sure I lie well. I hope you will remember your promise that you will bury me. <laughs> well, that, was, that was a long time ago. My first night in the Priory. I'll bury you, Brother Arnaldus. Don't worry. Thank you. And thank you for looking after Cuthbert. It's blocked. I have to go in through the front.
Before like him, heathens. not a single fort remains. I think that was all of them. You're not heathens, are you? No, no, Briar. No. Oh, you're not heathens. Then you should know better! Hmm, they have problems with their hands and feet. Maybe I can find a way to help them. Hmm, they have pro- Maybe I can- Try this. Whenever did you find the time to make a bomb, handsome Jack? Don't you have work to do? Who would I be if I could just pass by ladies in need? <laughs> Does that mean you'll join us and do some filling? I have my own work to do, so that won't work, I'm afraid. Oh, of course. Suddenly you've got work to do. But I dare say, that balm works. My hands feel much better. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. Once the west side and its towers rise above the Priory, it'll be even more impressive. Only a few more years. What I'd give to build at least one of the towers. <sighs> hey, take back what you said before. What? What did I say? Come on. You know what you said. About Aliena? Why would you care if I take her as a wife? <laughs> you don't get it, do you? Hey, Alfred. What? Ow! What did you do that for? Jack! This is a church. Oh, now don't go and tell on me. He started it. What do you want from me? Well, I, I just want you to take back what you said about Eliana. So what if I would marry her? What's it to you? Mind your own business. Look who's talking. Shouldn't you be working? Well, how can I if you keep distracting me? Alfred? What? Ah! Hey! You will never be a builder if you go on like that. You will end up hung in shining like your father. I said, what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. What did you say? I overheard it in the tavern. Someone said your father was a thief and that he was hanged in Shiring. I'm so sorry. <sighs> so, so what? Why would you care? Jack... I... <laughs> you should apologize for what you said about Aliena instead. Uh, forget it. Time to get this done.
This could be better. Somehow I can't focus today. And the face still isn't right. I can never get the face right. I'm done for now. I just can't stand looking at it anymore. Ah, oh, damn. Watch your tongue. I will. Damn. I need to get much better at this. I can never get the expression right. That's not humility, sorrow, and dignity. It looks surprised. A surprised corbel. Useless. <sighs> Hey. It's gone. But where did it go? Hmm. There must be some kind of cavity behind that wall. The foundations and the whole crypt were part of the old cathedral. Who knows what secrets are hidden down here? Oh. It's gone. Come on, Jonathan. Let's tell Ali what I found out. It's about time Stephen kicked those bastards out of Lincoln Castle. About damn time. The whole of England is strangled by new taxes and torn apart by this senseless quarrelling. You're right, of course, Lady Aliena. Wise words, like your father's. It's just Aliena. No, no it is not. Your father was the Earl of Shiring. I will fight for King Stephen to restore his title for the son you will one day bear. I know I agreed that you'd fight for the king in my name, but must it always be such a costly undertaking? <laughs> I want to die while fucking, not because I went to battle carrying a blunt sword. If you die, it will be because you've drunk yourself to death. <laughs> that may very well be, my lady. Ah, oh, now you broke it, Jonathan. <laughs> There's someone at the door. I'll be right back. Oh. Go play. Jack. Hey. So? Yes. What brings you here? I... I... Everything all right there? Uh, yes, it will just take a minute. Sorry, Sir Catface is waiting. He has to ride back to Shiring soon. Ah, I see. All right. I just wanted to tell you that I found out about the book. What book? Oh, Ovid. You were still looking for that. Of course. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. I, it just feels like there are so many problems right now at the construction site. That reminds me. Could you tell Philip that I've come up with an idea how he can pay the workers? Oh. Uh, how? 
I'll buy up all of his wool and sell it on the fleece fair myself. But I need to go to Shiring first and get the money. Uh, all right. Um, I'll tell him. By the way, they have a copy of the Amores in Winchester. Oh? I think I know someone who might be able to get it. But first we need to make sure Philip gets his money and talks to Percy. Who? Percy Hamley, the Earl. Percy Hamley the cunt and his wife the bastard. Nah, bastards, all of them. I think I should be going. Ah, oh, all right. See you later, Jack? Of course. Bastards. <laughs> You're gonna have to forget that word really quick, little brother. Now, let us return to the important matters here. That was important. Robert of Gloucester is advancing on Lincoln right now, that bastard. Tomorrow, we will ride from Shiring. And what I need from you, my lady, is money for a new sword and a gambeson. I am getting fatter by the day. Is this leading anywhere, Sir Catface? You've been doing this for months now, and have you ever talked to the king about my title? About Shiring? <laughs> Not yet. But he and I have fought side by side, and I'm damn sure the King knows my name by now. And your time will come, Lady Aliena. Trust me. Oh, all right. I will meet you in Shiring, and I'll bring the money. Father Philip. Yes? Aliena says you can pay your workers. She has enough money to buy up all the Priory's wool and sell it in Shiring. And that way, you get your money earlier. Really? But you have to accompany her to Shiring. She has to fetch the money first. The sooner the better. I have to talk to Percy Hamley anyway. Thank you, Jack. Now you better get back to work. Tom wanted to talk to you. <sighs> Yeah, if I talk to Tom now, he'll insist I stay at the construction site and work. Am I really done out here? Jack! What? <sighs> Come here, please. You wanted to finish your call bill, and I let you. Instead, you pick another fight with Alfred. You throw ants at him. You hit him. And don't tell me he started it, because everyone else told me you started the fight. Subprior and me just told me you disturbed the monks in the scriptorium. Philip told me to practice reading. The Bible, not the kind of book you were looking for. Then you go and waste your time in the cemetery and the market, and in the kitchen, and chatting to the Fullers. I made a balm for them. I wanted to help them. You should have been working instead. Don't you know how close we are to shutting down the construction? If I'd not planned ahead, it would all be over now. But how am I to plan ahead if I can't rely on you, Jack? What? Watch out! Whoa. <sighs> Are you all right? Yes. Up here! Hey, hurry up, quick! <sighs> What's going on here? Your son thinks I dropped the stones. You were the one who pulled them up, weren't you? Of course. That is my job. He was probably angry because he might not get paid. Alfred, stop it. What? Peter, what happened? I I'm not sure, but there was a monk. He was wearing a black robe. 
And when he saw me looking at him, he ran away. Maybe it was him. A black robe? Are you saying this was my fault? No, no. I'm sure I didn't recognize him. He wasn't from here. No. Peter dropped the stone and doesn't want to admit it. I assure you, a monk would never do such a thing. I saw a monk in black in the market. Oh, did you? I was there too when you were. Tell us, what did he do when you saw him? Uh, he almost stepped on a few chickens. Wait, Jack is right. I remember now. There was a monk there, and he went into the cathedral. I'll go up front and look for him. You check the back. All right. If I don't find him soon, he'll be gone. Hey, you! Hey! What happened to you, monk? Mother! Jack? He's not a monk! He tried to kill me! You did what? Please, I... I know you. You are with them. Did they send you? Please, let me go! What did they send you for? Tom Builder! I was sent here to kill Tom Builder. Tom? What is going on here? Take heed. I know you. I know your face. Tell them that you succeeded. Tell them that Tom Builder is dead. What? Tell them, or I will find you. Uh, yes. Speak up, or I'll put a curse on you. I will tell them what you ask. Please. What the hell? What was that? Why did you let him go? He was after Tom. After all these years, it's happening again. What is? Just tell Tom to stay low. If we're lucky, they'll think he's dead. Why don't you tell him? I'm the reason they're trying to kill him. It's my fault. What? We should never have come to Kingsbridge, Jack. Excuse me, Philip? Philip? Hmm? I I'm sorry. Is everything all right? I was just thinking about my brother. Uh, what is it? Aliena is ready to go to Shiring with you. Then I must not keep her waiting. As we rode, Aliena expressed relief that Percy Hamley held court in Shiring Town during the Fleece Fair, and not in her father's castle. 
I had not yet confessed to Eliana that I blamed myself for her father's fate. I felt the guilt and shame starting to rise when we came to a large group of peasants looking as desperate as the refugees that had come from Earl's Castle back then. Philip stopped to talk to the peasants, and so did I. Of course he couldn't pass by people in need of help. Not even when he was on his way to try and save Kingsbridge from another attack by the Hamleys. Two of the peasants broke into tears and begged for food. Philip was mortified as they grabbed the hem of his robe and pleaded for mercy. They said they were from Wigley. They had illegally erected a mill and hadn't paid taxes to the Earl of Shiring for grinding flour. I bit my lip when they mentioned the title that used to belong to my father. As punishment, the Earl had destroyed their mill. Philip seemed unsure what to say about Percy Hamley's punishment for these peasants. I was less hesitant. I asked why they'd built an illegal mill. The peasants told us that milling taxes had doubled in their village. The peasants shouted and cried that the Earl had also burnt their fields, destroyed their houses, and taken their livestock from them. A few of them had even been killed. Philip told them to go to Kingsbridge for food. As we rode on, he said nothing. Maybe he had begun to lose hope that he would ever solve his problems with the Earl in Shiring. I had never trusted the Hamleys, but it seemed I had grown careless over the years. They had thus far kept their word to King Stephen, but now I felt I should have known that they would eventually break it. As I was thinking these grim thoughts, we passed by a gallows with two men dangling by their necks. An old woman stood by one of the corpses and snarled at us. The old woman looked at us like a cornered animal. Philip demanded to know what had happened. She cackled and shook her head. She continued looking through the dead men's clothes. She'd already taken off their shoes and found a couple of coins on one of the corpses. Only now I realized that someone had tied foxtails to the corpses. Their hands had been cut off and their faces were burnt. I confronted the old woman and called her a thief. The old woman cackled and said there is nothing wrong in taking from dead thieves. When Philip told her it was still a sin, she became serious and gave him the coins. She told him that these men were poachers who were caught by the Earl's men hunting in his forests. Philip rode on, and when I caught up with him, I could see that now, more than ever, he was determined to talk to Percy Hamley. Aliena rode by my side without knowing that I had long been responsible for her family's fate. Ever since I had made the mistake of trusting Waleran by God. I felt like a fly in a cobweb. Every move I made seemed to lead to further calamities. But then I heard Aliena as she sped past me. Shiring, she exclaimed. This is him. <laughs> a face like that never changes. If anyone can get you an audience with the Earl, it's Sheriff Eustace. I hope Percy Hamley will show more understanding with us than he did with the people of Wigley. I'm concerned what kind of man Percy Hamley must have become. 
to kill people for mere poaching. Good day, Sheriff. I must talk to the Earl. It's a legal matter of utmost urgency. Get in line, monk. Are they all waiting to see him? What did you expect on court day, monk? I fear this is going to take a while. I'll go look for Sir Catface. Seeing that he's going into battle, he needs equipment. In the meantime, let's hope I can persuade the Earl to rethink this breach of our agreement. I'll talk to Meg about the sales of the Priory's wool as well. We will find a way to keep the Cathedral's construction going, Philip, with or without the stone and timber they took from us. We must. If they hadn't replaced Father, I could have helped them. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is upon us! Hmm, good quality. As it is written in the book of Matthew. That's not the price we agreed on. It is what we agreed on, both of us. Maybe good to see you, Meg. I'm here to collect the money we've made so far. Three. Um, excuse me. We're in the middle of something. What's the problem? Even you merchants have become thieves. What a rotten place this has become. He ordered the cartload of wool weeks ago. But now he refuses to pay the price we'd agreed upon. Let's think about why the prices are so high this year. So you can put more money into your pockets? Actually, the Earl has raised all fees. It costs more to pass the gate, to set up shop, to get a license, and to trade. I suppose. But the price is not as was agreed. Oh. Did you use a tally to record the price? But, uh, are you with the Sheriff? Just who are you, woman? I am the owner of this business. Oh. Here's our Harfaliena. Now, would you kindly hand me your part of the tally? There are more notches on our part. Two pieces, two different prices. Granted, adding notches to our part would have been much easier. Aha! Uh -huh. You're admitting it. Mm, but the area with missing notches is thinner than the rest. You're right. It looks like something was carved off. W what Are you saying I'm a fraud? Look, times are hard for all of us. I, I won't report you to the sheriff. <laughs> this wool will not make enough cloth for all of my master's servants' clothes. Let alone all the shirts he wants for himself. Whoever pays servants and wants to wear many shirts should be able to pay the price for quality wool like this. Quality? Yes, but it is not high quality. Now that you mention it, I see it. I cannot pay that much money for bad wool like this. No, he's doubting the quality. Fine. Then let me prove the quality of my wool. <coughs> Just you try. Daylight robbery. We agreed on the price. Three. Three! I'm not just You're trying to rip me free. off. Things are taking place that will lead our generation to an end. Aren't you tired of Christian art? Their sad faces and dull colors are always giving me a foul mood. Just like this town. I agree. I'd prefer to see lush paintings of the fine things in life. 
Excuse me, would you care to give me your opinion on the quality of this wool? Of course. Please, show us. Oh, how wonderfully soft. And what thorough scouring. There isn't a hint of dirt or grease. The fibre is exceptionally fine, and the colour is even and light. Suitable for high-quality garments. I'm glad you think so, too. Would you be so kind as to confirm this to a customer of mine, should the need arise? Of course. Just send them our way. With all these taxes and the shrinking markets, I wasn't sure whether visiting Shiring would still be worth it. But for that quality of wool, I'll say it is. Open your eyes! The signs are all around us! I'll take my business elsewhere. You won't find a better price. There are Flemish merchants just a few streets away. They were very interested in my wool. And they would be delighted to confirm its quality to you. Anyone can let their friends lie for them. Then we'll leave it to the people. We'll sell the wool at the afternoon auctions. That way it fetches a fair price for certain. No, 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 wait. Maybe we can negotiate. My master would not want me to leave here with empty hands. Let's find a compromise. You buy the wool at the price we believe we agreed upon. Well, why would I do that? I will guarantee you first rights to my wool next year. The prices go up when more than one bidder is involved. I know, I know. My master would not be pleased if I returned without wool one day. He's got an awful temper. Fair enough. We have a deal. I'll buy your wool at your price. A pleasure doing business with you. You've learned well. A good merchant always strives for a deal that feels like a victory for both sides. I had a good teacher. One more thing. Could you try to get Ovid's Amores for me when you travel to Winchester? It's a book. Yes, I can ask Brother Theobald. His book collection is more comprehensive than the church would like. <laughs> then he'll be the right one to ask. Thank you. No problem at all. Than that. Our food is rotting. Our animals dying. <sighs> Here. Thank you. It should be enough to keep our workers around until I have solved our problems with Percy Hamley. But Tom said that without stone and timber, we will have to stop construction in a month. You must speak to the Earl. I still have to give Sir Catface his money. But then I'll come and wait with you. From the looks of it, I'll be standing here for quite a while. The end is upon us, but our Earl will lead us to salvation. Is that so? A hard hand for hard times. It will all make sense, you will see.
how many of you have fallen from grace, seduced? Excuse me, do you know if something happened in Shiring? I know we suffer because of the war, but the town never used to seem this grim and hopeless. No, oh, we wouldn't know. We are but pilgrims in search of God's miracles, and a saint who will heal my foot. And my eyes. But yes, Shiring seems to hold no miracles these days. We heard the Earl is punishing his people for his own entertainment. I heard so too. Can I interest you in some horse bread? Is that the only kind you have here? It's the only one that hasn't gone green yet, I think. If you sell green bread, your customers will get sick and you'll get into trouble. What? Uh, are you with the sheriff? No, don't worry. Would you be free for a sales discussion later today? Ah, Lady Aliena. For you, I will always find time. I've heard business is slow. Not for me, it isn't. Plenty of knights need my services. His men have cleaned up well, I'd say. It suits me just fine that the Earl has swept the criminals off the streets. And those complaining about money and fees whenever my customers or my friends... Time to deal with drugs. How's business? Slow. Well, at least you still have your regulars. Even in bad times, people drink. The Earl of Shiren has imposed new laws and taxes, and it makes times very bad for us. Nectar, Today, we ride for Lincoln. The drinks are on me. Taverner, another round for the whole place. <laughs> You're the best, Gilbert. It's Sir Catface. Nonsense. We're all brothers, right? Indeed we are. <laughs> Wonderful. Brothers in arms we are. And here I thought you needed my money for new armor. Oh, I do. What's a knight without a mighty sword? I saw Alonso's when he was bathing in a river. Dios mio. All jokes aside, with men at arms so well equipped, how can I face King Stephen with anything less? And inferior armor may cost him his life. <laughs> Only the best for the best. Could you be more responsible with my money? Every coin is spent to fulfill your father's wish. What's more responsible than that? Do you want William Hamley to become Earl of Shiring, or your son? What kind of question is that? If we're lucky, then he will never return from the Holy Land. He already did. What? It had been a short battle. Robert of Gloucester's men had lost. At first, I wasn't sure who that knight was. 
You wore the cross. He must be a crusader, I thought. No. Don't do it. Please. Have mercy. My God, please. Shh. Don't. Then I heard our king calling out his name. William Hamley, join me. We ride. I didn't want to upset you. You what? We owe it to everyone to put this monster down. Not only to your father. William Hamley is a madman. Mind your tongue. You speak of the son of the Earl of Shiring. I pledge my loyalty to Bartholomew and his family, and there it shall remain. Percy Hamley has no right calling himself Earl. The son of Lady Aliena will be the heir to Shiring. Bartholomew went against our king and lost his title and his land. It's not wise to pledge your swords to a dead traitor. What did you just say? Not easy. You backstabbing turncoat. Calm down. Do you want to slaughter each other and help the enemy? <laughs> Accusing me of treason. You're most loyal man at arms. It's me or the Hamleys. Pick a goddamn side. You disparage me for setting the truth. I've always been your most loyal man at arms, have I not? In actions may be, but your words tell a different story. I'm just trying to keep you grounded. What are you carrying there? Not for sale. Or eating. Don't steal! Go away! Oh, I, I didn't mean to upset you. Oh... How would you settle a fight? If you're in trouble, run. Oh, but they're usually friends. Running wouldn't help. Then let them play a game to decide who's right. <laughs> Good idea. How is your pilgrimage going? Always moving forwards. And sometimes backwards, because of my foot. Do you have any games with you? We carry the French game of Fierge with us. Oh, could I borrow it? If you bring it back before nightfall, I see no harm in it. I, I will. How dare you defend that backstabber Percy Hamley and his blonde bastard of a son? Percy Hamley's title is a fact, not an opinion. It is not, and he does not deserve it. Now fight it out like real knights should with a battle of wits. Playing a board game, uh, I don't know. What? What? You scared? Ho oh, let's begin. Now, let's take it nice and slow. Choice. The general who gives in to anger will send his troops to their deaths. Damn right. If you thought I'd make myself vulnerable this early, think again. Ooh. Well played. 
A classic opening move. Well, well, look who's opened up a weak spot. Now is a very good time to attack. Oh, sometimes victory lies in numbers, but often it lies in a single soldier at the right spot, right? My thoughts exactly. Here I come. Oh. You reached the end of the board. Did you see that crowning? Guess I have a king by my side now. Hmm. You call this piece a king? In Spain, we call it a queen. She's quite powerful and has a mind of her own. A queen, then? Like Lady Aliena. She can lay waste to the whole board. You know what you're doing. Show him what you can do. As you wish, my lady. I've got the queen on my side. It's time to go on a rampage. When the sovereign's been claimed, the game is almost decided. <sighs> I could fight to the last piece. But a good commander has foresight, and I can see this game is lost. I admit defeat. Ah, you ended this before it even began. Even a scribe would struggle making this an epic of glory. This was about strategy, not showmanship. And it seems like Lady Aliena is an excellent strategic advisor. You work exceptionally well together. <laughs> he never makes compliments like this. He's the tactician. I trust his instincts and experience to guide him. But you yourself are an exceptional diplomat and businesswoman, I hear. You compliment each other in the way you think. We certainly do. If you are wise enough to trust this queen's instincts in this matter, my friend, you too will indeed be able to take back the Eldom. <laughs> you are damn right she can. So... Can I rely on your loyalty? <laughs> you can. Of course, we're brothers in arms. <laughs> Good. You've an important battle ahead of you. I'll bring you the money. Finally. I mean, thank you, Lady Aliena. It'll do. What is all this good for? Why are you putting yourself in danger? For you. It was your father's wish that you take back the Earldom from Percy Hamley. For victory! For victory! For victory! I see. I wish you the best of luck. I'll be at the marketplace with Philip. And make more money, I reckon. Towards submissive creatures, he tames his anger. The taverner makes money with each tankard he sells. You've done me a great favor. We are glad to hear it. Thank you for returning it. We always pass the time on our travels trying to best each other.
The wilting of Shiring is an omen of the things to come. Have you finished your business? Yes. Glad to hear it. Philip, I now understand why our market at Kingsbridge has had more visitors lately. Shiring isn't what it used to be. Steep taxes and strict laws have taken their toll on the town. Is that so? These merchants would give anything to do their business at another fleece fair, but there's none nearby. They need a place with fair taxes, one that can put those taxes to good use. Are you thinking of a fleece fair in Kingsbridge? Call in the monk and the woman he's with. You, impatient monk. It's your turn. The girl, too. Me? What? Did you want me to come with you? No. We're not first in line, are we? Well, lucky you, then. Get moving. <clears throat> Philip of Gwyneth, Prior of Kingsbridge. The Earl of Shiring. Thank you for hearing me, old Percy. Please allow me to introduce my friend, Aliena of Kingsbridge. I knew it was you. <laughs> oh, it doesn't sound like you missed me. I demand to talk to the Earl of Shiring. He has broken his word. You are talking to the Earl of Shiring. Bishop Waleran? The enemies of this earldom have taken Percy Hamley from our midst. Mother! <laughs> Do you consider yourself a friend of the Earldom of Shiring, Philip? Friend? That damned monk is drinking the blood of my Earldom! It is not for us to damn them, Lord William. But judge them we must. Your parents had an agreement with King Stephen. You're a thief. You both are. And you once told me that some sins cannot simply be forgiven. Then it should not surprise you that I don't take as kindly to thieves as my father did. Shiring is changing. What crimes did we commit then? The king has never licensed a market in Kingsbridge. Your market is illegal, Philip. You are stealing my taxes by allowing my people to trade in your sorry priory, and you disrespect my authority! Is that true, Philip? I... I will talk to the king about this. You, your friends and your brother have always played by your own rules. But not anymore. Francis? Where is my brother? He got what he deserved. Where is he? Tell me! Fracture for fracture? Eye for eye? Tooth for tooth? The days of Kingsbridge Cathedral are over. Now leave. The next time I will show no mercy. I had assumed that as long as the market was held within the walls of the Priory and the taxes supported the construction of our cathedral, Kingsbridge would need no market license. I had made a foolish mistake. Now I had no option but to call on King Stephen for help. And as Aliena suggested, 
I joined the Knights on their way north to Lincoln. More and more men joined our group. Most of them had no horses and no weapons to speak of. As King Stephen prepared for his final battle against Robert of Gloucester, he had ordered all able men of his earldoms to fight in the north. Then, at nightfall, our group reached a large camp of Stephen's men. Many men asked me to pray with them. They were husbands, fathers, and children about to fight in a war that most of them did not understand. It was then that I witnessed Aliena's knight, Sir Catface, shouting at a man. The man was in tears, saying he did not want to fight and begging to be allowed to go home. Sir Catface shouted at the man and told him deserters would be hanged by the king. The man stared at him for a long while and then started shouting infamities about Robert of Gloucester and began to laugh. Catface and his knights joined in and began to cheer for the king. I realized how ruthless the reign of each of these earthly lords was and prayed that my own Lord would protect all of us and guide us in these dark times. After a long first day on my way to Lincoln, I found a place to rest. I fell asleep soon and dreamed about soldiers. But these soldiers were not on their way to Lincoln. They had come up the twisting hillside path to our little hamlet in North Wales. My brother Francis and I had tried to outrun them and to warn my parents. But as always when I had this dream, we were too late. King Henry's men had killed Mam and Da. Abbot Peter came to take us in, just as it had happened so long ago. But this time, in my dream, something was different. I was six years old then and Abbot Peter had not yet taught us about God. But still, I asked the monk the question, why did God do that? And then I heard a voice answering the question, and on the ground lay my brother, Francis. It was Bishop Waleran who had answered, and he took my hand to calm me. Then I realized his hands were drenched in blood. I awoke with a start. I had a very bad feeling about Francis. I told myself I should never have agreed to go and see Bishop Waleran for him. Now I had not heard from my brother in a long time, and after Waleran's remark the day before, I was sure the bishop had a hand in his disappearance and that I would never see my brother again. After what felt like an eternity, the sun rose and we continued on our way to Lincoln. As we moved, I remembered hearing that Bishop Waleran had been to Rome and William had fought in the Holy Land. I told myself that King Stephen would eventually see these men for what they really were. He had to. And I tried to convince myself that God would make things right. You are late. Is it done? Yes, my bishop. Their builder is dead. What about the saint? 
I couldn't get into their crypt unseen. You disappoint me again, Timothy. Please, when did I ever fail you before today, right reverend? Regan Hamley is alive. <laughs> she didn't. No. Your poison has left her in a deep sleep. When the time is right, I will send our Earl of Shiring to finish what I asked of you. Kingsbridge will fall. Almost there, Prior. Or have you changed your mind about seeing the king? No. Uh, uh. No, I have not. On we go, then. Let's go. Better not get too close. So, where do we find King Stephen and his men? Shakapface. We fought together in Trowbridge, did we not? Trowbridge, aye. And now, we'll kick Robert's arse here in Lincoln. We will if he dares to show. The king's in the cathedral. Go right in. Where are all the knights and soldiers? <laughs> Better let me go ahead. Why? This is a house of God. Sir Cutface, the claw of the king. Ha <laughs> ha! Thought we wouldn't catch up with you, did ye? Ha ha ha! I will spare myself the malice and infamy. There's no two ways about it. I have to go out there myself to see what's going on. My king, Ranulf's archers are only waiting for you. They know they'll be at my mercy once I've dealt with Robert the Bastard and Ranulf the traitor. I doubt they dare shoot me. Stephen, be reasonable. Henry, will the church for once shut up? We are at war. God. Wonderful. Now, I will go out there without getting shot in the head. I must know why they posted the archers up there today. Just for once, use your brain. Think. Yes, my king. My king? You! What are you doing here? Have you come to atone for having your monks write that heretical book? Uh, no, my bishop. I... So you continue to doubt your bishops, your pope. Henry, how dare you show your face here? Henry, I told you I am not to be disturbed. This monk should be thrown into a cell. Maybe then he will see reason. What? Because he doubts your miracles? I have to admit, having someone walk over red-hot plowshares or putting his hand in boiling water to prove he's innocent is entertaining. I give you that. Stephen. But the monk is right, of course. There is a tendency that your miracles conveniently happen when the church needs them most. Whoever believes that to be a coincidence, or miraculous, 
deserves no place at my table. Uh. What is your name, monk? Uh, Philip of Gwyneth. I will make sure my brother won't arrest you. If anyone will have you arrested, it's me. My king, I have come to see you. I have no time for you. Unless you know a solution to my problem. There are archers outside, probably looking forward to killing me. But I have to see what's going on out there with my own eyes, without getting shot. If you have no solution for my problem, better not waste my time. Or I will have you arrested. Today there's twice as many arches up there. Is that not a bad thing? I've been standing here for weeks now. Ranulph's men are probably just bored. They don't mean harm. How can you be sure? Listen. <whistles> well, that's my friend over there. I've never seen him, but we do this every day. That's how I'm sure. Our king's advisers believe it would be dangerous for him to stand out here in front of the archers. They're right. They are? Don't worry. They won't waste their arrows on monks and peasants. But the king would definitely be a tempting target. Would end the war in the blink of an eye. I wouldn't hesitate to shoot the bastard of Gloucester either. If you were to dress like a poor man, not like a king or a soldier, the archers might not shoot at you. This is highly inappropriate, Philip of Gwyneth. It is. But he's right. Robert's a bastard, but his men are not without honor. Who are you again, monk? Why have you come? Uh, I'm the prior of Kingsbridge, my king. Ah, of course. The Prior of Kingsbridge. I have come to ask for your help. What could be important enough to disturb the King at a time like this? Robert of Gloucester will attack in two days' time. Let us find out why he's here, shall we? Get undressed, Prior of Kingsbridge. Hold him. It was his idea, after all. Ranulph's men have been nervous all day. Now why is that? It's such a simple war. And yet they could stay holed up in my castle for another month with all these men. So why have the archers out at all? They'll be safer inside. They don't have to stand up there. My king, the late Percy Hamley and the Priory of Kingsbridge had an agreement. I remember. And according to his son, you broke the agreement by conducting an illegal market. He told you? The income was only used to support the cathedral. 
I did not know we needed a license. The market was held on the church's ground. The church is not above the law. This is not the Holy Roman Empire. No, of course not. Your market is illegal. I supported William in his decision to punish you, for it didn't merely pay for your cathedral. It also paid for the daughter of that traitor Bartholomew. But Aliena is not a traitor. You said so yourself. You said she shall go free. I remember my words, monk. But the Earl of Shiring tells me that a knight in my employ seeks to convince me to change my loyalties. I wouldn't know much about that. William Hamley and Bishop Whaleran said you were sly. Now I think I know why. My king, you must not trust them. Hear me now. You will not receive a market license, and the daughter of Bartholomew will hang if she goes against the Earl of Shiring. Do you understand? I understand. <sighs> of course, that's why all those archers are up there. Robert of Gloucester is not attacking in two days. He's attacking today. To arms! It's an ambush. Do not use the front entrance. Oh, no. They knew that would draw us out. Get my clothes. I need my horse. As Stephen and his men went to face the approaching army, his brother, Bishop Henry, urged me up to the top of the cathedral. His fear had made him forget about our dispute. I had never been that high up. Pray with me, Philip. Pray that Stephen will win, so this war can end. I closed my eyes to pray. And I forgot about Kingsbridge, and the market, and what I wanted. I simply prayed for peace. And as I did, I realized that ever since the dream about my parents, I had not prayed. What if, as in the dream, my prayers would not be heard now? I begged the Lord to make me see. To make me see that he was there. Philip, look! I was too far away to understand what was happening. Robert's men, they're winning. Stephen is lost. It felt like the world was spinning under my feet. I was afraid that I would fall. I closed my eyes. And then, I saw. They're breaking through the church doors! And then I knew it was us. Only us. No devil to harm us. No god to protect us. Only us. Philip was gone for two weeks. We had no idea what had happened to him. To be true, we had other things on our mind. 
Ali and I. Are you sure we're alone? Right now, there's only you and me. Look at that. Told you. I hope Philip and Catface are all right. Me too. Say, Jack, have you read our book? What about you? What did you think? <laughs> No, this is Philip's fault. If all this falls apart because he set up an illegal market, he alone will be responsible. I have faith in him, and so should you. Who else could save Kingsbridge if not him? <laughs> Do you still remember the text? Well, do you? Well... I think I remember one part. Oh? And which one was that? <clears throat> Before me, she stood. Her clothing set aside. No flaw to be found in all her body. All clothing was set aside? All of it. And there was no flaw? No flaw at all. <laughs> oh, her shoulders and her arms. I saw and I caressed. And then her breasts. Forms made to be felt and, and touched. <gasps> I remember that part. Oh, you do? <laughs> yes. How flat her belly beneath her slender waist. Her flanks, what form, what perfect thighs. Yours are remarkable as well. That's not how the text goes. Is it not? Maybe... Uh, maybe it is. Why recall each aspect? Nothing that I saw lacked perfection. As I hugged my naked body close to hers. Jack. Yes? I love you. I love you too. I always will. something no it's only us Jack you and me it is us only us hey Philip the prior Monk! That's better. Never let them see you weak. Stand tall.
What is there to look at, monk? Why do you do all this? Because I want to. No god, bloodline, or fate made me king. I took the throne. I chose to rule, and I chose to fight. And I'm not done yet. Is it worth all these lives? To best Maud? By God, yes. It's a game that I intend to win. What about Ranulf's men? Probably glad to be out of the castle after all that time. Probably looking for women and getting drunk. How many died? What? How many people died in the battle? Too many. I even lost my horse. But Robert is not an animal. I'll give him that. Or we wouldn't be here. Sir Catface? Don't draw attention to yourself. Not when they have you in a cage. Not if you're the king. Why am I in here? You are with us, are you not? I prayed for peace. Peace is the wait between one battle and the next. You were right about William Hamley. How so? The moment the battle took a turn for the worse, he and his men switched sides. The Earl of Shiring is fighting for Maud now, and for Robert. William Hamley is only fighting for himself and for Bishop Waleran. I will grant you your market rights, the same as Shiring. You will? Why? You were right about William. But you're not king anymore, are you? Before too long, the throne will be mine again. Assume I granted you these rights before the battle was lost. Do I have your word for it? I will let our Empress Maud know about you. Hold your market. Stand your ground. William Hamley will have no legal way of going against you. I will tell the guards there is no reason to hold you any longer. What about you? My loyals will make their moves. The game is not yet over. I ordered them to capture Robert to make an exchange. Maud knows it's not over. She'll savor each day that she has me under lock and key. She is her father's daughter, but the throne of England is mine. If you want peace, if you want to save the lives of the innocent, you have to give up. Never. That's the only thing I'm not good at. Then there really is no hope. Guards! Release the monk! In the last two days of the Fleece Fair, we have collected more money than we did during the last three markets combined. Is the Earl of Shiring not opposed to us doing a Fleece Fair of our own? The law protects us. And our lord. He is. Our time of trepidation is finally over. It will never be over. What did you say, Philip? Nothing. The music is too loud. Our prior is right. The display out there is not appropriate for our monastery. The fair will be over soon. And by then, Kingsbridge will be self-sufficient.
Philip? Ah, you're back. How are things at the quarry? All's in order. We won't have any further problems. So, uh, why did you ask me to come? It's about Jack. He got into a fight with Alfred again. Have you come to a decision yet? About my proposition? Yes. I think it wise you take in Jack as a novice. He wouldn't work on the cathedral, but he could stay in Kingsbridge. Jack can already read and write, and there is much more we can teach him here. What does his mother think? Ellen won't talk to me because of this. She believes I'm favoring Alfred. But Alfred is the master craftsman. I've taught him since he was six. Jack is only an apprentice, and the two can't go on like this. No, they cannot. I have no choice. I want the best for my children. For all of them. Of course. Let us talk to Jack, then. Yes. Tom? Wait for me. Philip? Something is ailing you, isn't it? Philip, you told me in Cuthbert once that if you became prior, you would want the novices to be treated well. Unlike how Remigius treated Brother Marcus before he left us. Remember? It was the day little Jonathan came to us. Yes. I remember. He was so little. You achieved what you set out to do, and so much more. If only Cuthbert was still here with us to see this. Milius, we have not had time to talk since I returned. There was time, but you avoided it. I have a bad feeling about all this. Why? For once, all is well. I haven't seen my brother Francis in a long time. I'm afraid. For him. For all of us. But... It's not just that. No? I think I've... Lost my faith. You? Let us talk later. Like we used to. Yes, of course. We will. Are you not coming, Remigius? I have pressing matters to attend to, my prior. All right. And what kind of surprise is it? Well, I think you'll be amazed, both of you. Ooh, now I'm curious. When can we see it? I should be done this afternoon. Come on, Jonathan. Let's have a look at the bear. Yes, please. Have fun, boys. Any idea what he's up to? I have no idea. Father! Jack took tools from the site. I don't know what he did with them, but I know he took them. Well, you two won't get a chance to quarrel in the future. Philip will see to that. But Jack is not the only one to blame in this. Martha, have you seen Jack? He went with Jonathan to see the bear fight. With Jonathan? That's dangerous. What is he thinking? Oh. By the way, I've heard from Sir Catface. Is he all right? The message didn't say, but I assume he's fine. Why's that? 
He says he needs me to buy him a new horse. <laughs> Look at him go! Mm. Are you sure you want to see this? Of course. What a show. Why do the bear and dog fight? It's in their nature. The beast that is more clever and stronger wins. No. For them, there is no winning. Jonathan, come here. You shouldn't have brought him here. It's dangerous. I'm always doing something wrong no matter what I do. If Alfred had brought him here, I, I bet there wouldn't have been a problem. There would have. Maybe it's better if you and Jonathan go. <sighs> Come on. Jack. What? I know how you feel. Oh, really? The world is unjust. We are like these poor animals, forced to tear at each other's flesh. It is a game that they force us to play. Who? Tom? No. The kings and empresses, even the bishop, Tom, and all of us are made to live in an unjust world in which we are forced to make unjust decisions again and again. And we don't even know we are playing their game. You have every right to be angry. But there is a way to remove yourself from that cage. Perhaps not for the sake of God, but for the sake of man. What do you mean? I want you to become a monk. Wait! Don't go wandering off on your own! <laughs> Have you two seen my son? Ellen! He went over to see the bear fight. Aliena, I, ha I have come to... To what? What's wrong with your brother? I've no idea. Aliena, I, I have come to ask for your hand in marriage. Are you mad, Alfred Builder? What? Why would you think that I... <coughs> Did you hear that? What was that? to go all the way up there, like Alfred and Jack do. Come on. We'll go together, you and me. <laughs> so, this is it, then? Who's that man? I am the Earl of Shiring. Boy. Stay with me, Jonathan. Now, while my men inspect your market, tell me, where is your saint? The crypt. Speak up! The crypt! <gasps> I heard that your master builder died in an accident. Yes, he did. A shame. This could have become a great cathedral. 
Now, out of my way! Jonathan! Huh? This is the end. They were burning by God. They were on fire. Where are the others? They're going to kill them! Aliena! Milius locked the door. From the outside? Is he still out there? No. Oh. Milius locked it. Milius! I think I can hear him out there. Return our saint, or you will go to hell. No, you go. No! Hallowed be thy name. We will William think Hamley. Oh. My kingdom come. Haliana is still out there. So is Jonathan! I know it. I will be done. <clears throat> on earth as it is in heaven. Aliena! Must this day our daily bread. Oh no! Give us our debts. The gate is locked as well. As we have forgiven our debtors. Aliena is this way. So are the attackers. It's a temptation. If we go this way, they might not see us. But deliver us from <sighs> You're right. But it's locked. Amen. Art Jack! Heaven. We shouldn't have come here. Hello, be thy name. Jack! Jack! No! <sighs> him here. <laughs> no! I have to help him! Peter! We cannot leave her here. Words from the scripture will calm her. Look at her husband. Look at her. <laughs> Your words won't do any good. I won't allow you to poison her, woman. This herb will help her. It works. I will not let you use your devil's work on her. I have herbs for her. Don't listen to this woman, Philip. What's going on here? Look at that poor woman. Her husband has died in her arms. Your sub-prior refuses to let me help her. Her herbage is the devil's work. We must get her away from here. William and his men will ride this way. I know it. You're right. We must make haste. Philip, I told you this woman is a witch. You're a fool. This is Henbane. Henbane? The devil's eye. So you admit that you are trying to poison this woman. Oh, does the evil eye of the flower intimidate you, you old goat? Calm down, all of you! Prior Philip, take this. It will calm her nerves if she chews on it. For once, do the right thing.
Prior James was right about you. Ah. Prior James? <laughs> you have no idea what kind of man Prior James was. You are a fool. Are you sure this won't harm her? Yes, I am. No! We grow herbs too, Remigius. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm holding her. It's working. I told you. Maybe I was wrong about you, Philip. How could you do that? Oh, piss on you. They're coming. We need to move now. It makes no sense. Why would the Earl of Shiring do this? Shut up, or they will kill us all. It's them. Shh. 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 Be quiet, please. Look at him. He did quite well. He got pretty far. There was someone here with him. Hugh is right. They might be close by. We should make haste. We got what we came for. Not yet. <laughs> Water, why do I get the feeling you're upset? We didn't have to do this. We came for the saint. They deserved it. Like this ugly bastard. Kingsbridge defied us for the last time. That monk, the bitch, and the bastard she's fucking. <sighs> Come on, move. After him. But William said... I said move. Cub, are you all right? Did you see Aliena? She was in the market. I heard William calling out her name. Jack, come. We must find her and Jonathan. Dear God. Oh. Oh. No. Aliena. Aliena! Jonathan! He took everything from me again. Aliena! No matter what you do, no matter where you go, I will find you. Every time you think you are safe, every time you play house, I will find you. And I will crush you. Now, kill them all and make her watch. <laughs> Aliena, are you all right? I swear by Almighty God and Jesus Christ and all the saints that I will take care of my brother Richard until he has fulfilled his vow. Can't you hear me? Jack! It's all gone. I can't support the cat face like this. What am I going to do now? Tom, you are alive. Thank God. <clears throat> we 
must ask the bishop for help. The bishop? Are you mad? I heard he is behind this. Shh! How? How can we go on living in Kingsbridge now? Will the cathedral still be built? Not without the market. It, it, it must be, or there'll be no work for us. Please. Our prior will answer all of your questions. <laughs> Philip, they are waiting for you. <sighs> yes. Can we stay in Kingsbridge? Or must we move on? <clears throat> the rumors you have heard are true. The remains of Saint Adolphus were stolen from this crypt. Oh, we are doomed. The saints oh, who took him? Was it the Earl of Shiring? Why would he do that? Is Tom Builder all right? What happened to Brother Milius? Please tell us what to do. Brother Andrew is overseeing the repairs. And we will be able to continue the construction of our cathedral. Tom Builder's son, Alfred, will take over the position of Master Builder. Though it will take longer, for we will not hold a market again. And I am happy to welcome a new novice. Most of us are familiar with him, so I'm sure we all can share the sentiment that he will be very welcome in our priory. Jack. As was Tom's wish. Why were we attacked? Was that really the Earl of Shiring? How many have died? How many were wounded? He will answer your questions. All of them. Is he not well? He looks pale. <laughs> this attack... Shall I continue for you, my prior? No. This attack was a great tragedy. I cannot think of why anyone would do that to us. It is impossible to grasp how these men could just... You went against the Earl of Shiring! He said you defied him! Philip was in the right. We had a market license. Our prior was in the right, but we all knew what kind of man William Hamley is. Defiance will only lead to more grief. I... I agree. You should be more careful. We must never again hold a market. No. No, we must not. The Earl stole the site because of Philip. But it's not his fault, is it? What about Tom Builder? Was he hurt? Please tell us. Tell us what will happen with us. <coughs> with Kingsbridge. <laughs> Too many people have died. Many were injured. Among the injured was our master builder, Tom. He protected our little Jonathan. It will take time, but I'm sure he will recover. Thank God. Tom's alive. Two of our brothers have perished. Brother Arnaldus.
and brother Milius. He rests by Cuthbert's side now. And eight more lives were taken. William Hamley killed them. What if he comes back? It would be better if you answer their questions. Why is he not answering? Please answer! Why is he not saying anything? How will we go on? Why is God doing this to us? Answer them. No. I cannot give you confidence. The stories of how God tested the faith of his followers. I see now how true they are. I think you do as well. I am asking myself, where is God? Why did he not prevent all this? I do not know. I have no answer. Oh. One day, God said to Satan, Look at my man, Job. There's a good man if ever I saw one. So Satan said, you've given him everything. That's why he's a good man. But God said, even if he were to lose everything he has, his faith in me would not falter, and I will prove it to you. Mother hasn't moved from his side for days. It will take time for him to heal. You know... This wasn't the first time someone wanted to kill him. If we hadn't scared off that monk in black, I'm sure Tom wouldn't be with us anymore. Did you ever find out who he was? I have no idea. It was Bishop Waleran's servant. What? Waleran? You will burn in hell for this. What? I defeated your greatest enemy. It was a holy mission. It's not up to you to decide that. Even your father would not have been that foolish. I am not my father. They saw you. They know that the Earl of Shiring is a murderer. What if my allies in Kingsbridge were hurt? What then? Absolve my sins. <laughs> Only if you announce your loyalty to King Stephen. No! Stephen lost. He is weak. Bishop Henry will not approve of me giving absolution to a supporter of Empress Maud. Are you a man of the church or not? I am. Then do as you are told. And never defy me again. Is that understood? Yes, my bishop. Ooh. 
One day we'll tell everyone everything about us, Ali. All of them. Maybe we should have told everyone, while we still could. Maybe there would have been ways to make it last. Jack! Oh, what is he doing in there? Jack! Oh, Jack. At least I still have my hair. Where can we go from here? Anywhere we want. What is this? I told you I had a surprise for you. Remember? This is it. What is it? It's uh, a first version of a fulling mill. It's fulling the cloth all by itself using the motion of the water wheel. Yes. What do you think? You'll be able to sell even more cloth, not just wool, like you wanted to. It's... It's a brilliant invention. It's what I always wanted. Then why do you look so sad? William Hamley. We will go someplace else then, where he won't find us. He will find me, wherever I go. You can't just give up. I'm not giving up and I'm not running away and because I'm not running away there is something I have to tell you it's not what I want to do it's what I have to do I'm getting married, to support Sir Catface. To whom? It's not important. William will burn down anything that I build up. This is the only choice I have. My husband will pay for Sir Catface's expenses. It's the only way Sir Catface can protect our people. I will marry you. This is not about what I want. William Hamley did not kill all those people because the bishop told him to. Or because of Philip. He did it because of me. I need money to support Sir Catface, not just any husband. Any husband? Jack, this is not just about you and me anymore. It used to be. Because I was irresponsible. I am the daughter of the Earl of Shiring. No, y you are not. You were once. What do you want me to do? Run away and live in a forest? Just you and me? Oh. 
Yes. What's wrong with that? Do you think I want this? Did you not see what happened here in Kingsbridge? You know I did. But you hid for days while we buried the dead. What for? To build a machine we can't use? Just doing what you feel like is not the most responsible choice. Who do I owe being responsible? We owe Kingsbridge, Jack. And I owe my family and my people. And what about me? You became a bloody monk! It's the only way they would let me stay! I know, I know. I am sorry, Jack. If you love me, let me fight the only way I can. Who is it? What? Who are you going to marry? Um, he has steady income from the houses he builds in Shiring and Winchester. And he is a master builder now. What? Dear Francis, I long for the day you can read all the letters I've written. Once, you asked me if I often think of our parents. I do, and I often think of the day they were killed, and of how Abbot Peter took us in. Peter raised us and taught us about God. We grew up in the safety of the monastery. Only now have I begun to understand that outside the priory, the killing continued every single day. I have come to believe that if God existed, he would not allow all the pain and bloodshed. <sighs> A few days ago, William Hamley and his men attacked us. Many died by their hand. And among them is Milius. First, I believed I had brought the devil to Kingsbridge, for I thought I had seen him in Lincoln. The last few nights, I did not sleep. I was afraid that in my dreams, I might flee from his grasp in blind terror toward the river and drown like Prior James did. But I know this is not the work of the devil but of man. But then, where is God? Most of what Abbot Peter taught us was wrong. Where is that loving God to protect us? But in one thing, he was absolutely right. For he taught us about living in seclusion, away from sin, away from want, away from the world that turns man against man. I know I blamed you for what happened after we got involved with Bishop Whalen. 
I do not anymore. But I blame our church and men like Waleran, because they involve themselves in the bloodshed. As Peter taught us, I will go into seclusion. The answers I seek are not out there. Maybe I will find them in here. Where are you, Francis? Put that away! Stop it immediately! No, Jack! Oh! Jack! Jack! <laughs> no, this is not what we do! Get off me, you freak! No! <laughs> Jack! Take him away! Lock him up! It's all useless. No. It's all useless. No. Runs right under the cell. Look for a loose stone in the floor. It'll sound hollow. What? How do you know that? Ah, oh, the cracks are too narrow to pry it out with my hands. I don't think so. Bowl would crack. The slab's too heavy. This one looks easy to pry out, but not with bare hands. This slingshot won't help. With that hole, I could lift the slab out. She was right. Jack, tell me, was it about Aliena? I know about you two. I have known for a long time. Um, and how did you know how to get out of that cell? 
Hmm. How did you know? Your father. He was locked up in there as well. Was he a monk? <laughs> no. They said he was a thief. But he was not. Is it true, then? What they say? That he was hanged in Shiring? Yes, but he was innocent. How? How did it happen? Someone here in Kingsbridge gave him a jeweled cup and told him he could go. A mile down the road, he was arrested and accused of theft. It was like a game to them. They said he had stolen that cup from the Priory. Who said that? Three men. He managed to escape the way you did. But they caught up with him. They hanged him in Shiring. Who were those men? It does not matter. It is all in the past now. Once you told me my father was a jongleur, that he came from France. That is what he told me. You want to leave? What if I have family there? There must be someone who remembers Jack Sherberg, right? <sighs> I knew this day would come. I'm... I'm not a monk. I know. And I... I can't work here with Alfred. I know. You really love her, don't you, Aliena? Yes. You truly are his son, Jack Jackson. This place is too small for you. After your father died, I... I went into the forest... to get away from it all. But if you live like an animal, then they treat you like one. Do not let them... ever... find your way in the world. And... and when it leads you back to me, I want to hear lots of new tales. <laughs> of course. Those that killed your father, the people they killed, will return to haunt them. I promised them. Waleran disrespects you. Uh, after all I've done for him. Why rely on him for salvation? There are many priests, many bishops. Maybe. But you are not making decisions for me either, Walter. No one is. If the Lord wants me to support Waleran, he will let me know. And what if he does not? What then? Will you allow Waleran to order you around? <gasps> I shouldn't weave with the door open. The draught will kill me. Whew, it's getting cold.
Yes? I'm sorry for disturbing you on an important day like this. But... Have you, by any chance, seen Jack since yesterday? Uh, has something happened? He's gone. We've been looking for him all morning. He's gone? Well, yes. And I'm afraid it is my fault. I had him locked away. But in the end, I just punished anger with wrath. Oh, we've all failed him. No, I am the one to blame, and I pray to make it right again. My monks are already trawling the woods. I myself will go to Shiring, while Martha is taking a horse to a cave he used to know. Please, don't let this spoil the first day of your marriage, when there should be only reason to rejoice. Thank you. They still haven't found him. How long has he been? Three days. Well, I think he's gone for good. I love him like a brother. But first, he tries to kill me. Then he runs off, Woody and his family's sick. Are you hungry? I think I'll prepare some food. Great. I'm starving. What are you cooking? Frementi. What's going in it? Wheat and ale with milk, spices, venison and eggs. <laughs> well, as long as it tastes good. Um, we've been married for, what, a week? Five days. That's almost a week. Yet, we still haven't... ...you know... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I want this to work, but I need time. It's all right. Sometimes you look at me like you think your husband isn't a good man. But I am a good man. You'll see. Where are you going? Oh, nowhere. I just needed some more herbs for the soup. Huh? I think everything you need's here. Spices. I need to add some spices. And I mustn't forget the eggs.
Today, I was thinking about what you and Philip did for our workers when they were afraid that they wouldn't be paid. Offering them coin to make them stay and feel safe. What if I did something similar? How about I could offer them pay in case something happens? Like an insurance? What do you think? That would be very kind. I want to suggest it to the prior tomorrow. He said he'd come over around noon tomorrow. Maybe he could eat with us. And you, um, you could help me explain the idea, if you want. I think, I think it would be good for you to do something other than cooking and weaving. You haven't left the house in two weeks. Seventeen days. Would you like venison with it? No, thank you. I am just here to talk. Aesthetic as always, I see. It just turns more and more into a habit, really. So, you are suggesting that we promise the workers money if the construction is not completed? Yes as an insurance. Since the fleece fair, they've been quite worried. It would ease their minds a bit. Yes. Especially since they would know they don't have to finish the cathedral in order to get rich. It sounds to me like we would be tempting them to fail deliberately. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Don't be so cynical, Philip. I'm not. It's just... It's just so hard to encourage goodness these days. We tried so hard in the last few years, yet all we reaped is death and misery. The alternative would be to do nothing at all. It's not a bad idea. We wouldn't promise them too much, just enough to help them get by till they find new work. It would ease their minds a bit. Yes, you said that. Your idea shows great compassion, Alfred. Thank you, Father. It's very rare these days to find spirits who still believe in the good of people. Unfortunately. <sighs> I could never promise them coin, because one cannot give what one does not have. Ever since the market collapsed, Kingsbridge is losing more than it earns. We may even run out before we complete the cathedral. What? He's right. It won't be finished. But... What about Mother? We wanted to build it for her. If Alfred loses his work, we won't be able to fund our battle against William Hamley anymore. What if we build faster? Make a new plan that will cost less? Y you always said a finished cathedral could draw people from far and wide, didn't you? People on their coin, right? Is that an option? Master Builder, you've been awfully quiet so far. <laughs> it's hard to say. But yes, Alfred could look at the designs. Could be there's shortcuts that could be taken. I'm not much help yet, but I'll do what I can. 
I can do it. All right. I promise you, I will think about your proposal. Oh, um, milady, your soup. Thank you. I'd never thought that my brother could work so hard. He really cares about Kingsbridge. I would never have thought, really. Alfred has changed. He used to be such a bully. He seems really concerned about things now. About Kingsbridge, about you, about your family. I can't wait for you to give me a little nephew or niece. Well, enough about Alfred. Did you get the blue dye I've been asking for? Actually, I did. It's from a woad merchant in Winchester. Took me some time to find him. Oh, thank you so much, Martha. I guess now I finally have to finish my weaving. How's it going? I'm taking my time. I'm not in a rush. What does Sir Catface think of the idea? I haven't told him yet. When he comes here, he's mostly interested in coin. But that's the deal. He fights and I pay. It's an endless circle. The coat of arms shall remind us of who we are and where we come from, so we don't end up losing purpose. Have you decided on an animal yet? You really should have an animal on it. It will sport a fox. Oh, foxes are smart. I like that. Ali, I'm so sorry that I mentioned wanting a niece. I just thought in the last month that you were, well, growing a bit. Oh, <laughs> I'm just getting fat. You're not getting fat? You forget that there's not a lot for me to do other than sit around and eat. Then we should take a hike soon. Stretch your legs and get some sunshine. I'd like that. I would like that a lot. But not today. I need to finish the coat of arms first. Get it done while I still can. I don't know what to do anymore. Marrying Alfred was a mistake. I knew it all along, but I saw no other choice. Not if I wanted to stop William Hamley. 
And Alfred was the only one promising to help me reclaim my father's inheritance. And ever since we've been married, he's been working deep into the nights to finish the cathedral. And when he's home, he expects nothing in return. Although I can see so much longing in his eyes. He is trying his best to make our arrangement work. And I try to be a good wife. I made a mistake. And to make things worse, I am pregnant with your grandchild. You brought this on yourself. You had the love of your life, but you threw it away. Do you scorn me for what I did? No more than anyone else. First and foremost, I blame that priest who turned my son into a monk. But you're a very close second. What if I brought Jack back? Oh, Aliena. <sighs> Jack has left England. There's no possible way to find out where he went. I want you to know one thing. Jack loved you. For me, that makes you still family. If you can't have his baby, give it to me. I will raise it far away from this crooked world that had no room for my son. I don't want to give our child away. Then you cannot stay here. You cannot go on like this. But I have to. Don't you understand? It's finished. I want you to wear it when you go to battle. To remind us of what we are fighting for. That's fancy. Why a fox? Because we are not lions, nor eagles, nor bears. But outcasts. And as such, we need to play by the rules of a fox. Bloody well put. For you, I shall be a fox, my lady. I will wear your emblem in battle, and I will make you proud. How's the war going, by the way? It can't go on forever, can it? Sooner or later, everything dies, even a war. What about William Hamley? Far as I'm concerned, that toad is losing his edge. Stole my horse during a cutdown and ran off. I guess the boy either got bored due to a major lack of bloodshed, or lost his wits because of his mother. His mother? Rumor has it she's bedridden and William blames himself for it. It's turning him into a coward. And I know for a fact that the king spits on cowards. Catface, this is excellent news. It is. But we mustn't let down our guard just yet. So what do we do now? Well, I will wiggle my nuts in the king's direction and keep fighting. There might come the day when he'll strip William from his title and hand it back over to your kin. But, um... That only works if I have a male heir first. Right. I need a fight, and you need to, um... Well, you know what you have to do. Uh, by the way, Alfred, you remember me mentioning William stealing my horse earlier? You need a new one. Oh, that would be so very kind of you. Milady, your husband here is a bloody saint. Did you know that? I'll be out for a while. I've got some business at the market with Martha. 
Send my regards to the pretty lady. I'll be heading back to court once we're done here. It was good having you here, Sir Catface. I can't believe you two have almost done it. You've almost won your father's earldom back. Oh, don't say that until it's actually happened. I'll see you later in the evening. Ah, there you are. I always wondered what it would have been like to grow up in a forest. Oh, it's cold. Very, very cold. When I was young, I spent a night in Ellen's cave. If it hadn't been for her soup, I would have died for sure. What kind of soup? I think it had deer in it. Deer? Yes. Jack had caught it before we met him. I think it was the only one he ever caught. But hunting deer is... I know. It's punishable by death. Jack never was one for rules and laws. <laughs> right. He was always busy with something, just not with what Tom asked him to do. Jack? Yes. Yes, he was. You will be an aunt soon. What? But don't tell Alfred. I, I haven't told him yet. You still think marrying him was a mistake? I do. I do too. But you did it for very good reasons. So, maybe it wasn't a mistake after all. Maybe it will work. Not in a loving way, but more like a partnership. You two seeing eye to eye to each other. Mm, maybe. But the baby is not... What was that? They built it too fast. Like the Babylonians, they sought to be grander than God, and for this we all have to suffer. A stone roof. Alfred tried to build a stone roof without telling Papa. You're with child. H how, how can you be with child if we never... My cub is gone and will never return. You threw it all away for a life of lies and a kingdom of dust. You said that you needed a child to be your father's heir. Now you can only hope that it'll be a boy, or everything will have been for naught. I can't stay. Not without work, and not like this. I'm sorry. Shh. Shh. There's no need to cry. There, there. We've been crying for far too long now. Ah, <sighs> where do we go from here? We will build a cathedral right here, towering high above Shiring. But it will not be a cheap undertaking. Money is no object. I shall build it for our Lord and my mother, so that the Lord will heal her. I am sure he will. Ah, yes, there he is. Who? We will need a master builder. My bishop? 
I think I have the right man. My bishop, my name is Alfred Builder. The White Ship. She was one of the fastest vessels that was ever built. The man who should be King of the English now, the son of King Henry, was on board when she sailed off. And with the Prince there were 140 knights and many nobles, all on their way from Normandy to England. They say the ship hit the rocks, and then a fire broke out. Even before the White Ship had departed, the prince and his men had begun to drink and get violent. Monks that were meant to bless the voyage were then forced to disembark. Some say the ship had been cursed. The king's son and many of his family were pulled down into the Black Sea that night. You're forgetting one important detail. Not only these monks, but also Stephen of Blois, the king's nephew, left the ship before it embarked. They say he got ill. That old rumor. The same Stephen who calls himself the King of the English now. What? That cannot be a coincidence. Yes, it can be. Of course he's king now. He survived. He is the king's nephew. What do you think, my lord? I think Stephen is a clever man. Clever enough to have his whole family perish. But why he would want to rule that godforsaken rock, I will never understand. What makes you say that? I love my country. Then why are you leaving? Well, because I want to see something new. I'll tell you what you're going to see. A proper country, where people know how to behave. What about you? Why are you leaving? I'm looking for someone. For who? Uh, I, I guess I should stay out of other people's business. Forgive me. You English do talk a lot, don't you? I just don't know how to feel about leaving my country for the first time. I mean, how should anyone feel? Mm, excited? I don't know. Maybe I'm just running away. You should all get some rest. It will not be long now till we reach Cherbourg. Thank the Lord. I can't wait to be back.
In the late summer of 1142, I had left my home country, England, for good. My old life lay in shambles, as did my former home of Kingsbridge. Having failed both my friends and family, I had set out to find my baby's father, the man I still loved with all my heart, Jack Jackson. And so early one morning in July, I finally arrived on the shores of Normandy. With nothing on me but a pouch of coin and a young, curious face yet unnamed, who was just as unfamiliar to this new world as was I. You're still here. Oh, it's you. I'm just trying to get my feet used to good solid ground again. The last bit of our voyage wasn't exactly my pint of ale. That hammer you're carrying, do you happen to be a mason? Actually, I am. You have a keen eye, mistress. I guess I just know a mason when I see one. To be honest, I haven't been one long. Just finished my apprenticeship in Salisbury. Before that, I used to shear sheep with my parents, but I guess that wasn't really for me. Father still hates me for leaving, though. What will you do to find work here as a mason? Don't know. That's for me to find out. All I heard was that the wages are better over here. So you'll just travel from town to town and look for employment? Right. And I'll start in Lassay. A fellow mason told me about the abbey there. He said these Normans build their churches quite differently than we do back home. I need to see that with my own eyes. Maybe learn a thing or two. I'm looking for someone. A red-haired mason called Jack Jackson. He came to France about a year ago or so. A fellow mason? Great. Unfortunately, I wouldn't know a thing. After all, I just arrived here with you. I know, but should you meet someone like that on your journey, tell him Aliena of Shiring is looking for him. All right. Jack Jackson. I'll keep an eye out for you. Thank you. I left my old life as well. Scary, isn't it? To start off fresh and all that. Well, you definitely sound more excited than scared. Oh, I am excited. Wouldn't anyone be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Do many Masons go to Lassay? Ah, I don't know. It's really just a tiny town. The Mason who told me just happened to do some repairs there once. It's likely he told others as well. Have a safe journey. Oh, thank you. You too. I really should stay away from boats. I'm still all to and fro on the inside. Good day. I am looking for someone. A traveler who came through here last summer. Oh, hush now. 
I need to talk to this man. Looks young. He was born at the beginning of summer. What's his name? I haven't given him one yet. You should. He needs to know who he is. Makes growing up a lot easier. You said you're looking for someone. I'm looking for the boy's father. Well, from the look of your baby, I reckon his father has red hair like me, right? Well, I don't know every redhead around these parts. There are quite a few of us. Most of my family here in Cherbourg is ginger. Oh, his name is Jack Jackson, and he is a mason. Hmm. No. No, sorry. I haven't seen him. And I come here every day. Now, maybe a May saw him. She helps the sailors get their cargo to the nearby towns. Carries travelers, too. I'll ask her. Well, thank you. Hey, you. That's quite a bundle you got there. Where are you headed? Have you seen a red-haired mason? You must have landed here sometime late last summer. <laughs> Another ginger in Normandy? I wouldn't have noticed, even if he was carrying a hammer instead of a fishing rod. Maybe you should ask someone in Barfleur. That's where all the travellers come through, the pilgrims and kings. Their lot rarely lands in Cherbourg, with the fortress passing back and forth between Stephen of Blois and Geoffrey of Anjou. Why you even came to Cherbourg in the first place baffles me. It was the earliest ship I could get. He must be in some hurry, madam. Let's just say I needed to get away before I changed my mind. Fine with me. Who am I to judge? Do you know the road to Lesse? Been there, seen it. But I hope you're not planning to go there on foot. Tell you what, you give me some coins and I'll treat you to me wagon. You can even change your destination once we're on the road, would you say? What other routes are there besides going through Barfleur? Oh, I don't know, really. You need to ask the locals about that. But Barfleur sounds like a good place to start. Shake my hand and I'll take you there. All right. Take me out of town. All right. Where do you need to be? We went to Barfleur, a scenic port town built on granite. It was the biggest harbour in Normandy and the main entry point for the Normans to their new possession of the Isle of England. I talked to some of the sailors and fishermen, but no one had remembered seeing Jack. How could they? Almost a year had passed since he, a simple mason, had journeyed through the busy town, a town with no memory other than that of the last king who passed through on yet another one of his violent conquests. Maybe I was approaching this the wrong way. What had drawn him to France in the first place? The distance to Kingsbridge? Or something specific? What was my lead? Lesay was tiny, but as it turned out, worth the trip. In the small abbey church of the Trinity, I met a monk who claimed to have talked to a man fitting Jack's description. He'd been fascinated by the abbey's rib vaulting and had asked the monks countless questions about the place's construction. The monk apologized that he couldn't tell me where Jack had traveled next, but I didn't mind. I lay down to sleep on the floor of the Abbey guesthouse and, for the first time in almost a year, 
I felt relief. As I drifted into sleep, I hugged our baby tight and whispered into his tiny pink ear, we're going to find your daddy. My father had once told me tales of the Mont Saint-Michel. Long ago, the Archangel Michael had urged Hubert of Avranches to build an abbey on a lonely rock on the ocean by burning a hole into his head. They say one can go and see his penetrated skull on display in the church of his hometown. It was a windy day when I arrived, and the place was crowded with pilgrims, pilgrims and jongleurs. I remembered Jack's fascination with these tellers of stories. I spoke to one who was just taking a break. As it happened, he had indeed met Jack, although not in Mont Saint-Michel, but on a road heading east from there. Apparently, Jack had been hopelessly tracking Jongleur, who might have known his father, Jack Cherberg. But as he'd been gradually running out of money, he'd intended to look for work in Le Mans or Tours. That was about six months ago. I was catching up. Going to Le Mans reminded me of all the trouble I'd left behind in England. Thirty years ago, Le Mans had been conquered by the Plantagenet Geoffrey of Anjou, Maud's husband. And although they'd held it ever since, other noble families kept on pulling at the city, like Maud and Stephen tearing at England. There was no sign of Jack, but I got news of a new kind of cathedral being built in Saint-Denis, just north of Paris. It was possible that Jack had gone there to learn from the craftsmen. That was, if he hadn't travelled further south, looking for work in one of the many churches in Tours, the hometown of Saint-Martin. Good day. Are you the master builder? What is it? I'm looking for a mason who may have passed through here. An Englishman with carroty hair. He calls himself Jack Jackson. Hmm. A redhead? Yes. Did you see him? He might have asked for work here. No, no. I I'm not looking for new masons. We're just doing repairs. Ah, but was he here? No, never seen him. Now, stand back, woman. Something could fall on your baby's head. Are there other construction sites around Tours? Well, yes. It's a big town. And where would an outsider most likely find a job? Dunno. Ask around. I was told he wanted to come here. Or maybe he changed his mind. Are you sure you haven't seen him? I am. You hesitated when I mentioned a redhead. Are you sure you haven't seen him? Yes, I am sure. All right, all right, he was here. Was working for me. But I had to throw him out after two or three days. 
Why? Because he was all want, want, want. Let me redesign the roof. Let me make the nave lighter. All pretty ideas, but he never shut up long enough to do the work he was supposed to do. Shit, that man was almost as needy as my son when he was still a brat. Mm, he does know a lot about his craft. Well, I know masons like him. They grow up gifted, but without a moat of discipline in their guts. Can't work with someone like that. Do you know where he went next? No idea. Maybe to Limoges or Angoulême. Maybe even to La Rochelle. Seemed to have plans for every cathedral on God's green earth, but none for himself. I understand. I'll leave you to it, then. Bon voyage. We had just left Tor when I suddenly felt dizzy. I stopped and made rest, trying to catch my breath, then lost my breakfast in a ditch at the side of the road. To my horror, our baby too had grown pale, his breath shallow like that of an old man. I tried not to panic, but the next inn was a long distance away and we couldn't stay on the road where it was wet and cold. Back in Tor, the fever got worse. I remember people carrying me into a room, laying me on a bed. I tried to feed my baby, but after that, everything turned into a blur. When I awoke, Jack was standing next to my bed. He scolded me for following him. You know you could go anywhere you want, he whispered. Why be stupid and follow me? I tried to answer, but he just opened the window and jumped out, heading toward ancient Greece, or maybe all the way to Arabia. And in my feverish mind, I followed him. The further I went, the angrier I got. For years, I'd been fighting for my family. I'd committed myself to an oath to my father. I'd built up a business to sustain it and even married a man I despised so I could create a future for the people around me. I'd known nothing but my duty to the men in my life, while the man I was trying to find live a life of casual irresponsibility. He traveled the world on a whim to learn about mathematics and philosophy while I had to raise the child he'd fathered. When could I ever do anything just for myself? I asked the world as I went on. I'd traveled in a circle all the way to the edge of the world and back, only to return to the place of our failure. With my eyes closed, I listened to the sound of ripping yarn and crumbling walls, and of coaches carrying good people away into a cloud of crimson dust. When the last moat had settled, I opened my eyes again and found myself in a dirty little room. An old maid was sitting next to my bed and smiled at me, then handed me my baby. Oh, dear God, he still looked so pale. I tried to feed him, but he refused. Oh, please, God, let him live. Don't punish him for my own sins. I gently caressed his head until finally he put his mouth to my breast and drank and drank more and more, becoming greedier with every swallow. We had both been spared. We rested one more day. Then I gathered my things and headed back to the cathedral to thank the Lord for his mercy.
I thank you, dear Lord. All right, steady now. I thank now. you for having spared my child. I thank you for... Don't let go until it's done. But why are you showing mercy on me? I failed everyone I cared about. I failed Jack. I failed my brother. And if I never return, I would also break the oath I had given father. It's just... It's just that I feel like I've never had a life of my own. I've always fought for others. And this may be the very first time that I fight for something that I only want for myself. Maybe I should just go back and help rebuild Kingsbridge. Maybe Jack doesn't even care for me anymore. Amen. Huh. I've seen one of those before. It's amazing, isn't it? The man who did that really had it in him. I agree. He always did. Oh, you knew Master Jacques? Yes, but it's been a while since I last saw him. It's a shame that the Master let him go. In just one month, he did so many things. What did he do? He came up with ideas for how to make the construction easier. But the Master didn't want to hear it. To tell you the truth, Everyone thinks that he feared for his own job having someone like that around. The last thing Jack did was carve that corbel. It was the one thing the master let him do. Then when he was done, he was asked to leave. Your master said he had no discipline. <laughs> let me tell you something. Jack worked very hard on it. He was impatient and had a temper, but you could see that he tried to overcome it. Conquering that rock was very important to him. Oh, I understand that so well. Do you happen to know where he went next? He wanted to walk the pilgrim trail to Santiago de Compostela. The Camino? The way of St. James? He said he might find someone there who knew his father. Just one more thing. How was he when he left? Hmm. Never thought about that. Relieved, I guess. He seemed ready for something new. Thank you so much for your help. Think nothing of it. And good luck on your travels. May you find what you are looking for. Isn't it odd? Just when you stop looking, you come across the most curious of things. Like these three devices that one of my merchants brought back from Baghdad. <laughs> oh no, is it another one of your Banu Musa toys, Rashid? They're not toys, Adriel. They're objects of scholarly ingenuity and reflection. I will let my valued friend from the north do the honors. For one, let me draw your attention to the magnificent songbird on the table. Um, on second thought, why don't you save the lady for last? Otherwise, the other two devices might appear bland and boring in comparison. I agree. And then, to that wondrous donkey next to the entrance. Although... The most astounding thing of all stands right between them. That statuette? Ha-ha, <laughs> precisely. But, one thing at a time, let us let Jack decide what to demonstrate first. No, it's too heavy.
Mm, now that's not how she works. He likes to take his time, doesn't he? She's too precious to be burned. No, it's for the presentation. No, it's too heavy. What is he doing now? Not much, I suppose. Mm, now that's not how she works. No, it's for the presentation. No! Keep that candle away. Why? What would happen if you set it on fire? <laughs> yes, Rashid, we're curious. You are not. You're just fooling around. And so are you, Jack. <laughs> Sorry. This isn't part of the presentation. going, Rashid. Patience, my friend. It won't be long now. That is, unless my friend Jack accidentally drops our only burning candle into the water. And now? Now we need to add some water. It's so beautiful it will make you cry. Just listen. How does it work? Maybe it's a miracle. <laughs> right. Go on, Jack. Tell them. There's a hidden wheel inside the box. It turns an axle that in return raises and drops a sequence of small cylinders inside. These cylinders work like fingers playing a flute. But who is blowing into the flute? Steam. Steam? Yes. When I opened the pipe, it gradually pushed itself into the tube. The power of steam. For once, I must agree, this is brilliant. Of course! It was created by a Muslim after all. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. What else have you got, Rashid? Anyone care for some tea? Thank you, my daughter. We will have some as soon as Jack has finished our presentation. Mind if I watch? Of course not. So, who is this man, Rashid? Jack? is a friend of the house. A brilliant man, a scholar and a talented artist. I could watch this man scoop up water all day. Just the other day, he explained Euclid to me. What is that? 
a Greek who wrote a book called The Elements of Geometry. Now, watch the head. Just any moment now. There. Did you see? It threw up. Rashid, this is disgusting. Oh, far from it. Would you kindly explain how it works, Jack? You see that bowl floating on top of the water? At the bottom of that bowl is a small hole. Through it, the bowl is slowly filled with liquid. Once it's full, it sinks, pulling a string which makes the ball drop onto a weight. This, in return, pulls the bowl up again, emptying it in the process. Thus resetting the entire mechanism. If you timed it perfectly, you could make it drop a ball at every hour. Turning it into a clock. How clever. For me, it's still nothing more than a puking donkey. Ha <laughs> ha! Show us more, Rashid! One could join those two and build a singing donkey clock. One song after every hour. That would be pretty clever. I know, right? You could be the one to build it. Oh, that would be unfair. It's your invention. I would let you have it. Or we design it together. <clears throat> you still haven't shown us that statuette yet. Of course. Jack, if you may. The Egyptians translated it into Arabic, and now the Englishmen are turning it into Latin. Oh, you will love this. Just watch. How very peculiar. And now? Just be patient, but don't look away. It takes some time for her to... To do what? Hmm? Is it crying? Isn't that amazing? No, it's irritating. Rashid, what is going on? We have no idea how it works. Rashid, please. We all know that there is no such thing as a man-made miracle. And this piece of wood is very clearly made by man. I very much agree, my friends. But so far, none of us has an explanation. All we know for certain is that her glassy eyes shed tears when you move her from warmth into cold. Like a plant at sunrise? Like dew. The only difference is the surface, that's all. I think you may be onto something. Am I? Of course, I had no intention of disturbing your conversation. But if you can find out why there's dew gathering on a plant, you may understand why that woman is so weepy. <laughs> so, who wants a cup of tea? I'll have some. Your daughter is quite something, Rashid. A scholar in her own right. I know, I'd rather she wasn't. It would make marrying her off so much easier. Oh, I'm certain that won't stay a problem for long. Maybe the dew originates from invisible water in the air. Water that stays hidden when it's hot. The pilgrim trails across France converged at Osterbat in the foothills of the Pyrenees. 
There, the group of 20 or so pilgrims who had been travelling alongside me since I'd left Tours swelled to about 70. Some were prosperous citizens, some probably on the run from justice, a few drunks and several monks and clergymen. Several languages were spoken, including Flemish, a German tongue, and a southern French language called Oc. Nevertheless, there was no lack of communication among them, and as we crossed the Pyrenees, they sang, played games, told stories, and in several cases, had love affairs. While my baby and I kept mostly to ourselves. Ganz schön frech, die mit ihrem Kind. Hush now. Hmm? I'm sorry. He has to cry himself out before he'll fall asleep. It will give you a strong voice one day, won't it? Do you have children? Hm. Richtig dreist. How long have you been traveling to get here? I met pilgrims from as far east as Franconia. I am sorry. We'll go for a walk so you can get some rest. Kann ein Mann nicht einfach mal seine Ruhe haben? Der Weg aus Babenberg war doch anstrengend genug. Tomorrow. <laughs> Dear Lord, what are you doing? You should get out of the water. It's freezing. My ring. I lost my ring. Dear Lord, please show mercy. <laughs> Come back to me. Please come back to me. Where are you? Where did you go? Cold will kill you. I can't leave without my ring. I found it. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You are a very kind woman. So very, very kind. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. I can see this ring is very precious to you. It, it was a gift from my stepmother. She thought I would stay forever, but I didn't.
Why did you leave? Oh, I... I... I thought I didn't belong. She always said I was her daughter, but I was sure she was lying. I was so selfish and so stupid. Too stupid to see I really was happy. Tell me about your stepmother. She was such a kind woman. So very, very kind. Maybe you really weren't happy. I don't know. I was very young and thought I was unhappy because I didn't live close to the sea. But in the end, the sea did not feel the same about me. The cold there made me sick. It took away my sight. It was courageous of you to leave. You did what your heart told you to. I was stupid. So, so stupid. Ah, that's why you went on the pilgrimage. Yes. So that St. James might see my devotion and I will be united with my mother in heaven. I'm just not as kind as you. Not kind at all. You're too hard on yourself. I don't know. I too am trying to make amends with the one man I loved the most. I was told he went straight to Santiago. You will know soon. Not soon enough. It's still four weeks till I get there. He'll be there, I'm sure of it. I hope so. I just feel... I just feel that with every day that passes, I'm losing him a bit more. And that the only thing I can allow myself still to hope for is not love, but forgiveness. I understand. Hey, hush now. Not long now and our journey will be over, hmm? The woman's name was Alba. She came from a small town somewhere in Catalonia. I quickly got used to her constantly feeling out for her stepmother's ring and the sad guilt that would always follow in her milky eyes. I wasn't sure if she appreciated my company, but I couldn't leave her on her own either. By the time we reached Los Arcos, she'd stopped talking while I kept on dropping a kind word here and there to let her know I was still by her side. Alba believed herself to be of weak mind and body, and yet she walked the Camino with a strong sense of purpose that willed her onward. It made me wonder about what I'd told her about my own journey. Did I hope for love, or was I really traveling because I needed him to forgive me? But what was there to forgive? My decision to marry Alfred had been in the best interest of the people of Shiring. It was a sacrifice I had to make to stop the evil reign of William Hamley. These questions had haunted me for a long time now. But if I really was going to see Jack soon, it was time to make up my mind.
Around Leon, the path began to gradually turn uphill. It was only two more weeks till we'd reached Santiago. The baby was in a good mood, and so, surprisingly, was Alba. After Astorga, the trail got more difficult. Alba became slower and slower, and we had to rest more. She became quiet again. The strain on her old body grew, and she worried that she might not be able to reach the end. Still, we managed to push onward. The next morning, she refused to get up. Her breathing was disturbingly shallow, and she hardly noticed me touching her forehead. Everything hurts, she said, and urged me to continue without her. Of course, I stayed with her. I brought her food and water and sat by her side. But day after day, her condition grew worse. She kept on urging me to go, to find Jack, saying the monks of Ponferrada would take care of her. I was about to leave when a monk stopped me. He urged me to stay at least for another day, and feeling that he was right, I remained. I'd hardly known her, and most of the time she'd tried to push me away, as if she considered herself a nuisance that slowed me down and who didn't deserve company. It wasn't until a few moments before she died that, for the first time, she smiled at me, and I like to believe that she saw me smile back. I still like to believe that here, in this unlikely place, dying next to a near stranger, she'd found a moment of serenity and happiness, but she'd not reached Santiago. When I left, that thought still haunted me, to see that a journey could come to an end so suddenly. But what would be different if she had reached Santiago? Could she have been disappointed by what she found? After months of hard travel, the child and I finally reached Santiago de Compostela. In the evening, we attended mass in the great cathedral, then started to roam the town looking for my dear Jack. It was almost dawn when finally a priest pointed me to an inn close by. Buenos dias. Do you understand me? Sinto cho ben, pero non temos camas disponibles. Um, no, I don't need a room. I was told a friend of mine stayed here some time ago. A red-haired Englishman called Jack. Do you remember him? Eu sou te falo en galego, miña rula. Francais? English? seen a man called Jack Builder. Jack? He's a mason. Jack? Yes, have you seen him? Pasanche por aquí centos de peregrinos, e cada un eche de seu pai. Vas ter que ser algo máis específica. 
I don't understand. Where are you, Jack? Looking for a man who likes to read a lot. El logo anda siempre con libro en riba. Have you seen anyone like that? Pero, ¿por qué levas un libro en riba? Vas a escangallar con peso. Hmm, she doesn't even understand that I'm looking for a person yet. Cousinha, it's a rubio. See, redhead. Have you seen his father, Padre del Nino? Jack Builder? Ben sendo un peregrino. Oh, what? E un peregrino? Oh, no, no. He's not a pilgrim. Enton, quem ben sendo? He's a mason. Ay, mal rayo, me partas, entiendo que me estás a contar. Um. Let me show you something. He's a mason. He builds things like that. Ah, eche mason. Albanel. Si, si, a mason. It's the same word in Galician. <laughs> Por aquí pasan una morea de masons. No me poderías decir algo más sobre él. Um, oím falar de un mason que dice que se dedica a traducir libros en Toledo. Por lo visto, di que se llama Jack. Yes, Jack. Have you seen him? No sé cuál será o su apellido, pero ven es cierto que nunca hay muchos masones rubios a los que les guste leer. Se tan desesperada está porque no vaya a Toledo a comprobarlo por sí misma. Entonces marchó para Toledo. He went to Toledo. A Toledo marchó, sí. Di que o teu Jack podría estar en Toledo. All right, so I will go to Toledo then. Gracinias. I just pray that I understood you correctly. Buenos dias. Parlez-vous français? English? Of course. How may I help you? I was told a man named Jack Builder lives in this house. Who told you this? A group of scholars living at the edge of town. They said he used to translate old scriptures about mathematics before he moved here. Please wait here. I will talk with Master Rashid.
It's his. You are. Uh, may I ask who let you stroll around our house? I travelled hundreds of miles looking for a man called Jack Builder. A scholar told me that I would find him here. Yes, my servant told me already. My father's not here at the moment, so you'll have to make do with me. Unfortunately, I must disappoint you. There's no one called Jack living in this house. Maybe he took a different name then. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is not easy for any of us. I think you should know that Jack and I are promised to each other Maybe we should go inside. The sun's burning, and my mother doesn't need to hear us. Jack told me about you. You are Aliena. You're the one who rejected him and married his stepbrother. And now you want him back. I need my son to meet his father. His father? The little one is Jack's son. He is. He always said that he had come here to find out about his family. But instead, he found out about everything else. About philosophy, mathematics. When he and my father met, it was love at first sight. They studied together and made great plans. But in the end, Jack would always start talking about his cathedral again. This great church he would build one day. Rib vaults and pointed windows. He'd ramble on about it for hours and stare up at that ceiling. We three sat here for hours and talked. And then in the evenings, it would be just the two of us. So many strange ideas about the future. Some barely more than silly dreams. Others almost in arm's reach. You're talking about him as if he were gone. Well, he's not here anymore. My father had offered him work as a master builder here in Toledo. He would have been well off and free to spend his evenings under vaults like this, with me as his wife. But in the end, he refused. Tell me, did you really marry his stepbrother? It was a mistake. I know that now. I did it to fulfill a promise I'd made to my father. I thought I had no choice. I didn't want to hurt him. Believe me. I do. You know... He left me because of you. Even after all you did to him, he couldn't let go. You can be glad that you ran into me and not my mother. She was enraged when he left. <laughs> he can have that effect on people. But apart from that, we made our peace with him. Father even gave him one of his favorite pieces of his collection as a parting gift. 
a small wooden statue with stone eyes in exchange for his slingshot. Would you mind telling me where he went? He went to Paris to work on the Cathedral of Saint-Denis. He said he never found out about his father, so there was no reason to stay down here anymore. Paris? Yes. If you find him there, tell him I don't miss him. Thank you, and all the best to your family. Thank you. What is the child's name, by the way? Well, he has none yet. I wouldn't name him without Jack. Isn't that a bit silly? <laughs> Maybe. But he's his son as well as mine. It's his right to have a say in it too. Then off to Paris. That baby needs a name. He will get one. Thank you. I travelled back along the Way of St. James, passing through Astorga, Lyon and Burgos. I crossed the Pyrenees, revisiting Bordeaux, Angoulême, Poitiers, but never stayed longer than one night. The closer I came to Paris, the stronger my old doubts and fears resurfaced. If Jack really was there, what was I to say to him? We had to hear each other out before we could walk on again, in whatever direction that would be. can't just leave. Even if he doesn't want to see me, he deserves to see his son. No, I'll find him myself. They'll only tell me to leave. They always do. awake then. You almost missed this. Look at these colorful windows. Look at the light. <laughs> Ali. We came to see you, Jack. Uh, we? Is... is he...? <laughs> it, 
he is your son. My... my son? I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Ali, where do we go from here? Wherever we go, I want to go with you. Will... will you marry me? <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> we will. We stayed in Paris as husband and wife. And our son, Tommy. The days went by quickly. Jack had learned much working as a builder in Saint-Denis. Days became months. Then after a year, we both grew restless. Where can we go from here? We asked ourselves again. We both confessed that we wanted to see our families, our friends. And then we knew where we wanted to go. Home. Even if it was in shambles. We need to hurry. The ship to England will leave soon. What's going on here? Whatever it is, if the crowd doesn't clear up, we'll miss our ship. Could make the horse get their attention. Or ride it through the crowd. That sounds a bit dangerous, doesn't it? Hmm, you think? Mm, no, that would only get me in trouble. Do you know what's going on? Oh, chaos. I can't get these people to calm down. God knows I tried. What happened? The jongleur told the crowd a few stories. Then he sold people some miracle charms, but it was just fairy tales and painted stones. Well, it always is. I know, but I'd need a real miracle to calm them down now. Otherwise, they'll rip him apart. What should we do with it? You see? It's working. Your friend Rashid must be quite the miracle worker. Revere the Holy Mother, for she has blessed us with a sign from the heavens. Cease your doings right now, and witness the miracle. It's true! Lord in heaven, why is she crying? She weeps for she is lost. She seeks her true home, and we have traveled the world to find it. She weeps, for she will miss her ship if you continue to block the path. It is the Mother of God. F -f Forgive us, Holy Mother. Where did she come from? For hundreds of years, she languished in the land of the Saracens, dormant. She has been waiting for the one to bring her home. Listen to what he has to say. The Holy Virgin has chosen this young family to protect her. 
Tell us all where you are headed. Her destination is beyond these waters. In the small town of Kingsbridge, in the earldom of Shiring. There she wants to rest. Kingsbridge? Where's that? Hail Mary! Make way for the Holy Virgin! Hallelujah! Make Robert well! Huh? Blessed Mary, let my daughter conceive! Give us a good harvest! They're donating to ask for her blessing. Uh, oh. The weeping Madonna shall hear your prayer. And with your donations, I... I shall build her a new shrine at Kingsbridge, a cathedral! <gasps> it's... It's you! Uh, who do you mean? You... The red... Head ghost. Me, a ghost. Uh, my husband is very much alive. I've known him since he was twelve years old. But he drowned. By God, you drowned. Twenty-four years ago. On the white ship. <gasps> my poor, poor son. My Jacques. His name was Jacques. Jacques Cherbourg. Jack Sherberg. has grown but there are no roots no herbs what are you looking at Jonathan the garden is in disorder I want it to be right again but I don't know how to do it <laughs> Before I became prior, I thought the same about Kingsbridge. Well, what did you do? I cleaned up. Where do we start? Hmm. Hmm. Some plants are weeds, and must go before we can plant new seeds. What are weeds? They take away what the other plants need to grow. Light, water, room. What do we do? Pluck them. They look a lot like every other plant, so you need to learn how to tell them apart. Here, you see those? They're called wood sorrel. Let's pluck only those for now. I'll do it. If you insist. Make sure to pull out all of the thin roots. And now what do I do? For plants to take root, the soil must be loose and fertile. So, may I dig now? Done. What's next? Stay here. I'll be right back.
Now, where did you put them? Ah, here they are. I found these nuts for you. Remember, Milius? You always said that one day there will be a beech tree growing here. I think it's about time. Remember Milius, a kind man with a warm smile. Well, he told me to give you this. Wow. Now we just have to wait. All right. Um, how long? Too long for us to keep sitting here. Uh, that long. Some things take time. And only with Patience will you receive your reward. Why do we have to do all these things if all we had to do is wait? Simply waiting would not have been enough, Jonathan. You just paved the way for things to take their course. They are happening right now. And in a few days' time, we will return and see the first green leaf of something new. Oh. Um, is it God's reward? Maybe. Does he make things grow? You made it. No, I just planted the seed. Hmm. Now you can fetch some water from the rain barrel. But that water's smelly. It's been there forever. There are many trees by the river. I bet that water's better. That's a longer walk, though. I don't mind. The distance is worth it. Maybe you're right. It is worth it. Let's walk together, then. But I'll carry the bucket. Why isn't Remedius holding the sermon? What's gotten into Philip? Our church lies in ruins. But all of this, these dire times, have revealed something important to us. Something that until, maybe until today, I wasn't aware of. What do you mean? You've been praying in these ruins. But you've been praying like you always did, in humbleness. We don't need a church for prayer. Where else are we going to pray? The chapter house? The church is where God resides. God doesn't work in the ways we might assume. 
Today, Jonathan tended to our garden to make it beautiful again. And he told me of things I almost had forgotten. Good and evil are not in here or out there. They are within each of us. God made us in his image. Thus, we carry the godly spark within us. But we have witnessed that man can have the devil in his heart as well. Prayer needs no special place, for we are his church. In our actions, he exists. We are God's temple. No man is closer to God than any other man. Whether you pray in church or on the streets of our towns, whether you're a man, woman, monk or bishop. Philip, look outside. You have to see them. You've got to see the horses and the colors. Jonathan. Now, what's going on? I'm, I heard noises and I went to look. Calm down. What happened? But the priest said they brought a miracle. Who? What? What priest? Step right up, brothers and sisters. For you are about to see something that will change your life. Who is that? They brought us a miracle. A miracle? Don't be shy. There is no danger. Just awe that awaits you here. Ah, you must be Prior Philip. I am Brother Reynold. I have been sent by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Here is his letter, in case you have reasonable doubt. We've been charged to accompany the weeping Madonna. She is to replace the loss of your relic, Saint Adolphus the Martyr, who was taken from you, I hear, with brute force. What? On her travel from far away Africa, she has collected donations to reward Kingsbridge for your faith in her and in the Lord. I can't believe this. What is all this? You do believe. That is why she came. And that is why you shall witness her miracle for yourself today. <gasps> oh. The weeping Madonna came to me in a faraway land named Africa. A baptized Saracen was her former guardian. And I and the custodians of the Holy Virgin were chosen to take her on a journey. Baptized? A Saracen? I knew not her powers or destination. What country did you say you came from? We have traveled all the way from a place of wonders too marvelous to behold. The faraway land of Africa. Africa has many countries, I've heard. Yes, it does. Many bore witness to her miracle before it dawned upon me. What's it like in Africa? The sun is always shining, and miracles happen every day. It's a land of... Great deserts, fig trees, and creatures that an Englishman can't even dream up. 
Like these horses. Are they horses? They are not. To you, they might resemble horses, but the name the Africans have for these creatures is impossible to pronounce, even for me. But I wondered, what shrine should be her shelter? This time, it was the Madonna herself who answered my questions. You mentioned there were fig trees in Africa. What are they? It's, uh, it's a fruit, of course. It looks like a strawberry and tastes like a pear. The scripture mentions these figs, and they sound nothing like that. Why is that? No two apples look or taste alike. Uh, the same goes for figs, and doubly so. I'm getting the impression that this man has never even been to Africa. But why would he lie? Hmm. She said, You shall build me a new church in Kingsbridge. So we set off with the blessing of Archbishop Theobald of Canterbury. And along the road, from Paris, across Normandy. Uh, excuse me. Don't interrupt. The Weeping Madonna has chosen you. All of you. I will tell you again, dear brothers and sisters. The Weeping Madonna has chosen you. All of you. And I will tell you again. Hey! Shh! Now, what is brothers in this book will and not help sisters, me more than the answers I can find in I my have own heard heart. that life has not been kind to Kingsbridge, but it is in places like these, and in dark times like these, that God's light shines brightest. And along the road, from Paris, across Normandy, over the sea, and all the way to Kingsbridge, devout Christians have given money for the building of the Church of the Weeping Madonna, this Church of Kingsbridge. I will tell you again, Dear brothers they look and almost sisters. like horses. The weeping Madonna has chosen Hollow. you. Feels like a wicker basket you. covered in pelt. I will tell you again, dear brothers and sisters. Do you speak English? Da, uh, no English. Uh, no campandare. Uh, no, no, no. Hmm. Oh, what's this? I think you might have stepped into horse dung. What? Where? Da. Uh, no English, is it? Just un poco, si. Could you talk to this man, Martha? Yes, it's strange. He was quite talkative just a moment ago. He told me he was from Damascus in Africa. Isn't Damascus in Arabia? There's one in Africa too, I I'm sure. Why are you pretending you can't speak English? No English. Ah, malada, malada. The Weeping Madonna has chosen you! My dear people! Oh, oh, I'm so excited to see a true miracle. Did you hear that? The Madonna has chosen us! She's come all the way from Africa. Uh, um. All of you! Jonathan? They're about to show the miracle. Look. You must be thinking, how can he be so sure? In the beginning, I was not. I only had my faith. I knew not her powers or destination. Please, everyone. Shh. We want to listen to his story. Nevertheless, I carried her for many miles. You must wonder, 
Why was King's Bridge Tell me the truth. The home of the Why home are you here? We are guardians of the Holy Virgin that sheds tears. We were appointed by the Archbishop of Canterbury. But it was the Holy Virgin herself who chose us while she traveled through Europe. Oh, yes. How did that happen? She speaks without words. She said, You shall build me a new So you're telling me this is a real Bridge. miracle? A miracle, a blessing, a wonder. So we set off with the blessing of Archbishop Theobald of Canterbury. You must be thinking, how can he be so sure? In the beginning, I was not. I only had my faith. I knew not her powers or destination. Nevertheless, there is much to I contemplate, her for many but not miles. now. You heard me correctly. It was a long journey. The weeping Madonna came to me in a faraway land named Africa. A baptized Saracen was her former guide. I am Philip. And I and the Who are you, young man? The Holy Virgin were chosen <gasps> to take her on a journey. Baptized? A Saracen? Don't you I want to see the miracle again, too? Dear brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. Hmm. The weeping Madonna has That's chosen not fit for a you. Shrine. All of you. Nothing sacred about this. And I will tell you again. She is a true miracle that will change your life as she changed mine. Many bore witness to her miracle before it dawned. Can you feel it, brothers and sisters? You are about to witness a miracle. The Madonna knows how you have suffered. The Virgin Mother had to witness the rise and fall of her son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and never stopped believing. Kingsbridge has endured many hardships. Prior James left you before his time when you needed him the most. Your old cathedral was burned to the ground. How do you know this? And your new one collapsed even before construction was finished. You have suffered the ruthless destruction of your market, homes, and lives. Dada. All of you have lost husbands, wives, and children, family, and friends. Dada. All of you know how it is to be hungry and afraid. But you have kept your faith. And the Madonna knows. She will weep for you and the suffering of mankind. For she knows how it is to lose a son. Jack. Aliena. Philip. But this is a miracle, isn't it? Or something along those lines. But how? We thought it was time to give Tommy a home. The boy? Your boy? Well, Philip? Do you recognize him? Our little Tommy? Tommy? But... It's been almost three years since I last saw you, Jack. Where on earth did you find him? I'd almost given up looking for him. Then Tommy found him. And you decided to come back? Well, this is our home, after all. Then what on earth is all this? This miracle? With the Madonna, we were able to collect donations for your priory and for Kingsbridge. Really? We can start anew. We can rebuild the cathedral. What's the catch? I'll get to be master builder. Why? I've studied the cathedrals, churches, and houses they build in France and Spain. I saw how different their constructions were, with new shapes, colors, and ideas. 
Oh, you should have seen it. They combined rib vaulting and pointed arches. I want to do that. That's why. Why here? Because this is home. The townspeople probably think that's enough to build a whole cathedral. But to me, it looks like about a hundred pounds. You know, that won't even pay for a year's work. Like all of this, it's a symbol. Enough for a fresh start. And the Madonna will stay here. Kingsbridge will attract visitors and donations again. You mean I should be thankful for these lies and tricks? Jack! Aliena! You came back! We wanted to see you, little sister. Uh, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. But look at you! And the little one! Tommy. How are the others? Alfred left Kingsbridge. Catface shows up every now and then. And Ellen returned to the forest. We need to visit her. Father lives with her now. What's wrong, Martha? I'm glad you're back. I am too. Very glad. She looks like she's about to cry. She will weep for your suffering, Kingsbridge. She knows your pain. What now? The miracle! Her eyes are wet! <gasps> oh. Her eyes! Look at her! Heaven. They're shining! She cannot hold her tears any longer. She is made of wood. It's impossible! Why are you weeping? She is mute ever since her husband died. The Madonna has <sighs> suffered as I have. She understands. <laughs> it seems through her faith in all of your lies, Mary has found a miracle. We can't keep trying to repair Kingsbridge by ourselves. Things are not improving. We're struggling to keep things as they are. But we can't afford to hire help. Without farming and fairs, we're back to prior James's time. All these past years, my advice was good enough for you. But it appears you've changed your mind now, again. It is time we started doing something to wake up and make Kingsbridge what it used to be. We did before and we can do it again. I'm not willing to accept a risk like that. Don't you remember what happened last time? My, my, how easily we forget. I remember well. And still, you put your trust into a group of random strangers to make things better. Philip, why in God's name have you stood by and let this happen? They're tricking us into giving them money for false idols. They are giving us money. So that we'll place this idol in our priory? Do you approve of this? People need hope, and these travelers are giving them hope. Yes, it is a deception, but with good intentions. Mary speaks again. Is that not a true miracle? You fell for them. You really did. And now you joyfully take part in their deceptions. I'm warning you. I cannot support a prior who tolerates heresy. Your threat won't sway me. No matter how unconventional, their return and their gift are a blessing. You made your decision, Philip of Gwyneth. And now, I make mine. I resign. I'm leaving the Priory.
You got so big, Tommy. <laughs> and you're just as shy as your father was. Don't let him fool you. Usually, he's always up to something. We are so proud of you. Of both of you. Is she still here? Hmm? Your wife, Agnes. No. Ellen and Martha moved her to Kingsbridge. She got a proper burial this time. Will you come back with us, too? Would you want that? Yes. I need your help with the cathedral. Philip and I have big plans. We'll come. Ellen, we found Jack's family in Cherbourg. The place he came from wasn't Cherbourg, it was Cherbourg. <laughs> really? What were they like? They were good people. His grandmother said Jack looked just like him, like his father. He does. But they never came for him or, or asked about him. They thought he was dead. His ship sunk. He'd always wanted to go to England. Have you ever heard of the White Ship? Uh... No. The king's family drowned. My father was there. He was the only one who survived. Not for long. You told me that he was accused of stealing a chalice. Yes. But... but I know he was innocent. I heard the story and had to find out what he looked like. He told me his name. I fell in love. I helped him escape. But in the end, they caught up with us. What happened then? They hanged him. I was there. And you were there, Jack. But you weren't born yet. He was led to the gallows. Everyone was quiet. The people somehow knew he was not a thief. But I knew for sure. He told me. He was so afraid. He didn't want to die. I didn't want him to die. And I prayed. Then I heard his voice. Quiet. As if the falling melody might wing and net dissever. At dusk the hunter took his prey, the lark his freedom never. No! No! <laughs> you said that three men were responsible for father's death. Who were they? The Sheriff of Shiring, Percy Hamley, Prior James of Kingsbridge, and Archdeacon Waleran by God. They showed no mercy. Neither did I. I curse you! All of you! He will return to haunt you! One day, you will be judged for what you did! Your houses shall be consumed by fire! Your life shall end in pain and agony! You shall grow old in sadness and regret! The people they killed will return to haunt them. I promised them. We welcome our new prior, Remigius. He helped to recover the bones of the saint of Kingsbridge, Adolphus, from the hands of thieves. Adolphus already rests safely in this great cathedral of Shiring. Our master builder Alfred promised me that it will only be a matter of a few years until the cathedral will be finished. 
and the Earl of Shiring has promised to support us. But he has not done so for himself. No, the Earl is not a selfish man. His mother, Lady Hamley, is sick. More and more, I feel the whole of England is suffering from a sickness. The sickness of war, poverty, and most of all, heathen beliefs. I have spoken to God. I asked him, begged him to walk amongst us, to heal us. But God told me that only when this great cathedral is finished will he have a temple to reside in. No matter the cost, this shall be a towering castle to protect us from evil and false beliefs. With this cathedral, we will bring an end to the dark times. Wailer and by God! Jack? What are you doing here? My father died by your hands, Waylaren. His name was Jacques Cherbourg. How dare you talk to the bishop like that! He died right here! Who are you? I know that man. He's that bastard from Kingsbridge. That man is my husband. You? All of you. Listen to what we have to say. From now on, Kingsbridge is protected. By our knights, by our wolves, and by the word of the king. So whatever you do, we will defend our town, our market and fulling mills. And our cathedral, which we shall rebuild. All workers are invited to come and work for us. <laughs> Preposterous. If you so much as try to bring harm to us, Bishop, we will make sure that you pay for everything you did. It had been three years. Three years of drought. Three years of hunger and poverty. England was brought to its knees. Only our walls had kept us safe from the bands of outlaws raiding towns and villages. Bishop Waleran and William Hamley forced the workers to finish their cathedral in Shiring. Many had died. The work on our own cathedral had almost come to a halt. Four weeks the storm had raged on. It was then that our cathedral gave up its last secret. And everything changed. Tom! I told you you wouldn't like the sight of this. It looks bad. But it's not the wall I'm worried about. It's good you sent the workers home during the storm. Now do us all a favor and do the same. 
Go home. Your children hardly get to see you. Tommy and Sally have been asking about you all morning. You'll kill yourself up here! That crack down there must have been due to the storm. If the storm works, I work. My cathedral was never designed to be this high. I know! I reinforced the walls. It cannot be the height. What else was damaged? I'd look myself, but I dare not come closer. If your mother knew I was up here at all, she'd kill me. Both of us. What? She would kill both of us! Careful over there! If we don't find out what's causing this, then the whole East Wall will come down. The storm is making it worse. If you're right. What about Aliena? She should be on her way back from Winchester now. Oh, I hope she's all right in this. Yeah, I hope so too. One day, people will fly. Like birds. Sailing on the wind. Rashid told me. Sure. Until then, stay away from the edge. If I make it worse, then we'll at least know what the problem is. You're probably right. All right, one more time. And? What happened? If the vaulting were unstable, this part should have collapsed and the wall would retract. So, the cause of our problem is not up here. No. When we erected the Eastern Wall 17 years ago, there was also a crack. No matter what we did, it always came back. Remember? Yes. Yeah, I remember. But this is not the same wall. We rebuilt it. Still, could the cause not have been the same in both cases? Uh, maybe. The crypt! Huh. How kept the whole foundation there as it was? But it, it never had to carry this much weight before. You're right. If the cause of our problem is down there, we'll find it. You go ahead. Don't you need help? Ah, I'll manage. Just don't tell your mother. Are you sure? Go on. I know you can't wait to get down there. Neither can you. I'll just take a quick look and wait for you. They were enraged. Bishop Henry thinks that the Pope should hear about what you wrote. I think so, too. I would be honored if he read my book. Philip, I really am worried about you. There is no need for you to worry, Jonathan. It is just... a book. The problem is that the people love your sermons. And what you wrote. Even though most of them can't read. Your book is being copied in priories all over England. 
Is that not a good thing, if our message gives people hope? In desperate times, hope can be a powerful force. That is very true. Well, I fear the bishops. They might come to believe you took that power from them. Huh. Do you? Jack! Have you been atop the cathedral during the storm? Don't worry, Philip. The storm isn't as bad up there. Jonathan, did you and the others come directly from Winchester? Yes, we did. What about Aliena? She stayed a day longer for the fleece fair. She should be on her way back now. In this storm? We didn't expect it to get worse. No one did. I am sure she'll be all right. I need to go. I think I know why the East Wall is unstable. Yes? Why is that? I'm not sure, but I, I think the answer lies down in the crypt. I should hurry before it's too late. I better wait for Tom. I know he doesn't want to miss anything. Now it's down here, too. The first cracks are showing. That means we were right. The cause of the instability must be down here. The ground... could be. The drought could have made it worse. We'll find out. If there's dry sand behind there, we know it's the ground. Just be careful when you work on that wall. If it's the ground and the foundation, the whole wall could cave in. Here we go. But... But what? I think I can feel a draft. What? One more time. Jack, watch out! <clears throat> it's all right. What is it? These stones, they, they've been removed before. The mortar is missing on most of them. Whoever put them back just added some mortar on top of the stones. To hide the fact that they were removed. The tile at the bottom was completely loose. What does that mean? I think it was an entrance. An entrance? To where? That's what we'll find out. Careful now. You've got the whole east wall on top of you. Um, Jack? Jack? I'm all right. I just hit my head. It's dark in here. There's a whole room here. A, a chamber. What's that? I'll get a torch. Philip, I'll get it. You stay here. 
Is, is that a, a coffin? Oh, there's sand everywhere. Uh huh. It's a, a bed. What? There's a bed in here. What? Jonathan, we need that torch. That's not wood. It's metal. Gold, even. Maybe Philip knows what this is. Who slept here? Strange. It's... it's made of leather. It's... oh, it's a whip. What is that doing here? I have the torch. All right, come in here. Should be safe. Yes. Did you know about this place? No. No, I did not. I have seen this chalice before, when I was very young. It's the chalice of the Eucharist from Kingsbridge Cathedral. Cuthbert told me about it. They said it was stolen. And melted down, I know. Mother told me. They also said it was my father who did it. Did they? So he's innocent then? He must be. And whoever hid the chalice is responsible for his death. They hanged him in Shiring. For stealing this chalice. But it was here all along. That scourge. The whip. It belonged to Prior James. I was afraid of it when I first visited Kingsbridge with Francis and Abbot Peter. Even the look of it scared me. James. Maybe it was him. I think I saw him during the night of the fire in the cathedral. When the old cathedral burned down, there was a man in the fire. His shoulders were bloody. As if he had chastised himself. It is you! By God and the devil! He told me that he had sinned, that he had done something to me. Perhaps because I looked like my father. So he confessed for framing your father while he hid the cup here? But it couldn't have been James, you saw. James died weeks before the fire. Did he? You said they never found his body. Maybe he hid down here. Maybe that's why the bed's here. Wait. Jack. You were in the burning cathedral. What were you doing there? <sighs> I... And then I told Philip what I'd done. He just looked at me. He didn't say anything. Wailerin. What do you want? Do you think it is wise to resign yourself to gluttony at times like these? 
while your people starve on the streets of Shiring? Don't play the saint. You promise them miracles. And you make them pay. But your miracles never work out, do they? God works in ways that we cannot comprehend. My mother cannot walk. You failed. Again. What do you want? I came about a book. The Bible again. No. Philip of Gwyneth wrote it. And the church is displeased. Bishop Henry was enraged. This is our chance, William. Your chance, you mean. If you need forces, talk to Walter or Ugly. I don't care. I built your fucking cathedral. I'm done. It's not just about Philip. It's about Aliena and her family. Don't mention that name. But have you not heard? King Stephen and Maud's son just signed a peace treaty. I don't care. You should care. I said I don't. Now leave and don't come back unless I ask for you. <laughs> Where's my wife? They've not returned yet, Lord William. Then get me a whore! Now! I am sorry for intruding, but I must ask you for shelter. I was on my way from the Fleece Fair in Winchester to Kingsbridge and got caught in the storm. Nasty, isn't it? Yes. A and it's getting worse and worse. Thank you for your hospitality. Oh, 
Oh dear, are you hurt? <laughs> My horse, it fell. My hand! We'll get you inside! But we'll only be here until it's safe to leave. We won't bother you. I'm Aliena. What's your name? Elizabeth. Breathe, Elizabeth. You're safe now. Mm-hmm. She took her little bit. She let her die. We would all be better off without someone like her. We don't have much, but always enough for a lost soul. She doesn't deserve anything. Take a bowl and go ahead. I don't like this. Hold your horses. We'll see what happens. Shush, let her eat. Uh, thank you. Eat this. You must be hungry. Thank you. That's nice of you. Why are you giving her soup? Dirt. That's what she deserves for dinner. What? Do you want her to starve? Please, don't start a fight. What are you going to do with that? I'm just going to borrow it. Let's try to get along until the storm passes. I don't know. I think she's freezing. Thank you. Hey, that's our blanket. Can't you see she's freezing? It's all right. It's just a blanket. Oh, you're so kind. Many people would have let me die. People don't listen to me. My entourage didn't even notice they lost me. Who? My husband and his entourage. Oh, a fine husband you have. I divorced my last one for less than that. Divorced? Oh, he's just been beside himself ever since his mother. Maybe now you'll understand what loss feels like. And what you people are doing to us. <laughs> Stop bullying her! Can't you see she's upset? Kiff. <laughs> How do they know you? This isn't right. Oh, I'm used to it. I guess that's how it is when your husband holds an office like that. He has to do a lot of things people don't like. And sometimes they recognize me, too. Wait. Is your husband the Earl of Shiring? I thought you knew. William Hamley. Oh, please don't abandon me too. I, I swear, I'm not... I, I, I can't...
I used to know him when I was a girl. Really? Why did you marry him? My parents arranged it. And it was an honor to be picked. What's he like now? I loathe him with all my heart. How do you know him? We came from noble families. In fact, I was supposed to marry him at one point. No! How come you didn't? I found him unbearable. So I refused. Y you refused him? It caused a lot of misery. You're so courageous. I wish I was like you. I, I can't even stand up to the servants. Don't act like you didn't have a hand in the downfall of this land. For years he roamed across the country to raid, rape and kill. I'm sorry. He's no Earl. After all he's taken from us, we should take something from him too. She has nothing to do with this. Don't you dare touch her. Can't you see? She's another one of his victims. I'll give over. She's in on it too. Can you even imagine how it must be to be a child married to Hamley? The abuse and the humiliation every single day. I'm so sorry. I, I'm crying because you know too. Enough to know your pain. I, I just, I just don't know what to do anymore. Damn, where the hell am I supposed to tether this horse? Oh, it's Walter. He's looking for me. Quick, take this. That should do it. Walter. You. I've not seen you in a long time. William would be very pleased if I brought him your head. No! Don't harm her! If it wasn't for her, I'd be dead. She saved me from the storm. Did she now? Come on, we have to get back to the castle. We've lost too much time already. Elizabeth stays with me. No, she doesn't. Thank you for saving me and protecting me from these people. Come on now, we need to get going. William is waiting.
Dear Francis, the letters I have written to you over the years surely could be bound into a book. One of our young novices once asked me why I write to you when you are dead. The young can be blunt, but the thing is, I think you are still alive. One day, I hope, I will find you, and then you will read these letters. And when you do, you will know that I was busy writing a book. Because of my book, I may have to talk to Bishop Henry. But that is not the only thing that keeps me awake tonight. Behind a wall in our crypt, Jack discovered a hidden room. We do not know who built it. But it is likely that Prior James hid there, even after he was said to have drowned. That means he was alive when we met in Kingsbridge on New Year's Day, the day of his burial. And Jack told me he saw a man in the church the night it burned down. Was that him? And if so, did he burn in the fire that night? The dust storm and the drought are taking their toll on all of us. Thanks to our town wall, we are safe from the Earl and the outlaws. We've heard of places nearby being raided. We believe the attackers were William Hamley's men. We have enough food to last us another few weeks. But life has come to a halt. Martha believes there will be rain soon. That the storm is only a harbinger of rain. I hope that she is right. Jonathan worries about my book, The Divine Soul. In Winchester, he heard that Bishop Henry was less than pleased by what I had written. I am not naive enough to pretend I do not know why. I wrote that hope is godly, and since God made each of us, hope and salvation are only to be found within ourselves. Henry sells hope, and I am giving it away for free. If the church should ask me to clarify my position, of course I shall do so. But I feel I must give our people what they need in these desperate times. And how could I write anything else if this is what I truly believe? It must be well after midnight. <sighs> With you, I can be honest about what truly troubles me. Jack told me that he was responsible for the fire in Kingsbridge. I know that it was a long time ago. He told me he set fire to the roof so there would be work for his father, Tom. And I don't think Tom knew either. Save yourselves! The saint! We must save the saint! Fire! The whole roof is in flames! My God! Don't go in there! But help us! The, the saint! We must save him! No! No! Don't go! And as horrible as it may sound, I cannot find it in my heart just now to forgive Jack. Maybe because this confession comes too late, and from a man who I have learned to trust. <sighs> this is the truth. Ah. <sighs> 
I should get some air, Francis. The storm has settled down. Hello? I thought I saw someone. <gasps> that came from the kitchen. You. You startled me. I, I thought I heard something. Was that you? No, but I heard it too. Maybe Aliena came back. No. No, she's asleep. She returned a few hours ago. Damn it. Jack. Sorry. There's someone in the kitchen. Yes. I think you're right. Stay behind me. I'll go ahead. Stone. Brother Marcus. He took Cuthbert's keys to steal food here from the kitchen. Because of me, Remigius found out. And he left. We never saw him again. Looks like he came back. You didn't mean for this to happen. No, but... What about him? Don't be afraid. Ah! Jack! Why did you do that, you animal? I will get the others. No! What? He's just a child. Just a child? Jack forgave the child. Just like that. And I forgave him. For that was what he had been when he arrived in Kingsbridge. Just a child. Who was I to judge this man for not confessing earlier what he had done? I had never told his wife, Aliena, that I was responsible for her fate and for her father's. Even that night, when we all met, I did not dare to tell her. The walls of Kingsbridge weren't enough anymore. The outlaws had found a way in. We weren't safe in our homes.
So, Kingsbridge was attacked, and you two twigs were our only defense. Why didn't Catman chase them away? Sir Catface, Sally. Now, now, do not exaggerate. This is not a siege. We only saw two of them, and one of them was a child. But they almost killed you. They were just looking for food. They didn't mean any harm. It's the drought. It destroyed all the crops. They must eat something. The drought it is indeed, meaning that there will be many more. If we had a decent Earl, the people wouldn't be starving. It is all too easy to blame a desperate child. Forgiveness is much harder. It is. But forgive we must. Can you? Forgive, I mean. I already have. Hamley is the reason for this. He's to blame. It's that simple. Well, there's some good news at least. With the Treaty of Wellingford finally signed, William won't remain Earl forever. What treaty? Winchester is in turmoil about this right now. Stephen and Maud have signed the treaty. Maud's son, Duke Henry, is to be crowned the next king. And, by agreement, all lands are to be returned to their previous owners. But Stephen will continue to rule as long as he lives. Meaning that the earldom will go to the next male heir of Lady Aliena's family. That would be you, Tommy. What? It will not. Why the bloody hell not? Bloody hell. Language? No one will enforce this until Stephen is dead. What is to be done then? We only have to wait till Maud's son sits on the throne, don't we? And then ask him for help. And if Hamley were to fight the decision, he'd have to face the King's army. Well, if they're hungry, can't we just give them something to eat? I'll share. We should, and we will. But there are too many to feed them all. We must do something. Well, I cannot sit quietly and wait until Stephen dies of old age. The Treaty of Wallingford is in place. I won't wait for another 17 years. Not when I'm so close to fulfilling the promise I made to my father. True. But last night, it wasn't that Hamley boy who attacked us. It was a bunch of thieving bastards. Ugh. Well, what do we do about it? If we're smart, we could use them. Use them? It's been done before. If we set up the outlaws to assault William Hamley, it'd solve both our problems, wouldn't it? And while they're distracted bashing their heads in, we attack. I won't have any of that. What about his mother? I've heard that Hamley still listens to her, that she still has a say in Earl's Castle. Yes, let's tell his mother. If we spoke to Regan Hanley, we might not need a physical confrontation at all. Speak to that wench. I'd rather let my blade do the talking. I say it's time we took back your father's castle by force. Even if I'd have to lead an army of outlaws. I don't like either choice, to be honest. Neither do I. So... What do you think, Aliena? I'll negotiate with Regan Hamley. 
I will go to Earl's castle. Alone. A daring idea. Spoken like a true leader. Regan Hamley seems to be in a tight corner herself. She might well be willing to cooperate. I do hope you're right. I'll ride with you. You won't, Cub. Not with that leg of yours. Your mother's right, boy. And too many gingers showing up at their cave might make them suspicious. And so, after 17 years, I finally returned to the place I'd once called home. Because I had failed to gain support from the people of Shiring, my only hope now was a deal with William Hamley's mother, Regan. A woman whose possible support was only guaranteed by rumor. Get in line and stay in line. You'll all get your chance to pay your dues to Lord Hamley, you hear? So no pushing. Are you all right? What do you think? Of course I'm all right. I'm more all right than anyone else in this crowd. Just because Lord Hamley insists on women to deliver the tributes, don't mean you have to send your youngest and prettiest. Calm yourself. I'll make sure that nothing will happen to you. They took a woman in my town. She never came back. Nothing will happen to you if you just remain calm. Why does Lord Hamley need all that food? He's got more than enough. Shut it, woman. Smear your face with dung and lower your head. It's the only way you get out of here alive. It's no coincidence that Hamley always asks for women to bring the tributes. Oh, shut up! Patience, patience! Everyone will get a chance to pay their dues to Lord Hamley. Just a shepherd's daughter. I have no business here. Shut up! Bloody beggars. Is Lady Regan home? Ah, as if she could ever leave. Uh, how long will this take? A lot longer if you don't shut your mouth. What's taking so long? Oh, right, I've had enough. Go on, ugly. Take care of that nagging bitch. Why does Lord Hamley need all that food? Calm yourself. I'll make sure that nothing will happen to you. They took a woman in my town. She never came back. Nothing will happen to you if you just remain calm. Are you all right? What do you think? Of course I'm all right. I'm more all right than anyone else in this crowd. Just because Lord Abley insists on women to deliver the tributes, 
don't mean you have to send your youngest and prettiest. Fools. Patience, patience. Everyone will get a chance to pay their dues to Lord Hamley. I'm just a shepherd's daughter. I have no business here. Shut up! Bloody beggars. I want to go home. Oi, you there! Ass, I meant you. That's a pretty face you got there. You're coming with me. What? Leave her. Take me instead. Hmm. Well, whatever. You'll walk to the other side of the yard and talk to Walter. You'll get you settled. And don't you dare stray from the path. They say Lord Hamley might lose Shiring soon. What if the next Earl has us all hanged? Calm down. None of these royals really care about this shite hole. I know those two. They used to fight for father. May I interrupt? What is it? How can you fight for someone like William Hamley? My father was nothing like that tyrant. Oh, dear lord, it's you. You always sat in your neat little keep playing hostess to his well-off guests, while the poor snuffed it just as they do now. Well, at least William treats us as his equals, and not like pawns on a board of nine men's Morris. Was my father really that bad? Your mother could have answered that question. He once told me that she was very unhappy when she died. And you never wondered why? My father was a good Earl. Keep on telling yourself that. But that's not our story. Many knights fighting for him were former outlaws who had nowhere to go anymore. Your father may have given us food and shelter, but it was no better than what you'd give to livestock. I'm here to talk to Lady Regan Hamley. She's in the keep. But only Lord William and Walter are allowed to go there. And they'll kill you if they find you there. So you won't help me? We've already helped you more than enough by not ratting you out. Don't tell anyone that you saw me. We won't. If you promise to leave now. Are you done yet? Almost. Let me just see if I took enough. What are you doing here? You need to leave. Don't come any closer. William has me watched. What's taking so long? Uh, I, I forgot the pork. I'll be out shortly. Wait a moment, then follow me. We don't have much time. You will look for me any moment now. So why did you come? I'm waiting! King Stephen has declared a truce with Empress Maud. William's tyranny is over. This land might finally see peace again. That's why I'm here, to talk to his mother. And what will become of me? That's up to you. I fought to become a wool merchant. You could too. I don't think I can be like you. What's holding you back? I want to help you. I really do. 
but I don't know how. I feel so useless. Run to Kingsbridge. They'll help you. I... I can't. William's men would see me if I tried to leave. I, I tried already. Please, let me stay and help you. If you disguise yourself, they might not recognize you. Disguise myself? Take one of these sacks here and sneak through. I, I can try. Just stay calm and determined. I promise you will get through. Maybe you should talk to Walter. Maybe he can help you. Walter? William's dog? Don't call him that. He's not as bad as people say he is. <sighs> William won't allow me to talk to him anymore. Thank the Lord she made it through. Now, I have to find Regan Hamley. Elizabeth claims you aren't such a bad person after all. Am I not? Have you forgotten that I killed your family steward? You got problems over there, Walter? I would be a better ruler than my father. I know my father wasn't always a good and just person. He killed, just as William does. But I would fight to be better. I would listen to the needs of this land's people. What are you saying? I need to talk to the Lady Hamley. I want you to take me to her. You've got guts, I'll give you that. So, you think I'm a nice bloke? And you think this is enough to convince me that you'd be a better ruler than anyone who came before you? Don't make me laugh. Phew! If you let me go, I promise I will end William Hamley's reign. I don't believe you. But it's not up to me to judge these things. I'll take you to Lady Hamley. She'll decide. <sighs> My lady? Elizabeth. She's not here, but there's someone else to see you. The Lady Aliena of Shiring. The Lady Aliena? When did that bitch become nobility again? I'm certain you've heard about the treaty the King made with Duke Henry at Wallingford Castle. I have. I have also heard that it's a muddled mess. It is a complicated deal indeed, but one that will end the war. And one that makes my family the rightful owners of this earldom once more. Only by word. There's no one who would come to enforce this, not even the king. Don't you see what your son is doing to the land? Soon there won't be an earldom left to rule for anyone. That's a lie. My William is a better earl than your father ever was. To think 
that I once wanted to marry my good William into a family like yours. Not a day goes by when I am not glad that God saved us from that horrible fate. And that he sent that monk to Bishop Waleran to unveil your father's evil plan. What monk? That prior of Kingsbridge. Philip of Gwyneth. What? Where is my Elizabeth? Why is she not here? If you don't listen, things will get worse for everyone. People are starving because of your son. They will rise up and come for you. They're already attacking Kingsbridge. It's only a matter of time till they come here. Get Elizabeth. I want her at my side when the fighting starts. She's gone. Gone? What do you mean? Gone where? I told her to leave Earl's castle. She suffered enough under your son. William didn't lay a finger on her. He did. More than once, my lady. That is a lie. What's going on here? What's that bitch doing here? She's trying to bargain. She's trying to take everything. Is she? Is she now? Leave it. Shut up, old man. What's going on here? What's that bitch doing here? She's trying to bargain. She's trying to take everything. Is she? Is she now? Leave it. Shut up, old man. No. You brought this on yourself. You... you bloody traitor! Someone get up here! Men! You will pay. You will all pay for this. Now, we tell his men. Drop your weapons immediately! Raise the banner! Everyone, listen! Lord Hamley is dead! The castle now belongs to the former Earl's family again. What? You're shitting us! It was the King's wish! Who killed him? He knew that the king was about to take the earldom away from him. To avoid punishment, he took his own life. My name is Lady Aliena of Shiring. I'm the daughter of Bartholomew, the former earl of these lands. 
I've been tasked to end the tyranny of William Hamley and restore order to Shiring. Our occupation of Shiring has been made unlawful. Every attack on us is sanctioned by the King of the English. So what will happen to us then? No one needs to play a part in the things to come. You can freely choose if you want to stay or leave. Are you sure this is what you want, my lady? The people of Shiring will not take kindly to a new ruler who's willing to show mercy to their tormentors. It's not really my decision. In the end, the king will have to decide their fate. Well, you know what you're doing. The tyranny of William Hamley is over! In the name of the new Earldom of Shiring, the land will be finally healed! Now, send a messenger to Kingsbridge to let Prior Philip know that Shiring is finally free! What is it? <laughs> Why are they laughing? You can send a messenger if you want. But there won't be much of a Prior left when he arrives. <laughs> Sir Catface, get me a horse. The Pope believes we should either burn him or make him Bishop of Kingsbridge. I have already taken matters into my own hands. My men arrested him while Kingsbridge was left unguarded. While his friends took Earl's Castle? Yes. At least in his death, William Hamley was of use to you. <laughs> Look at all these people. It seems like they're enjoying themselves. They never change. You drooling dogs should be ashamed! Shut up, you old hag! Ellen? I I'm not feeling well. I'll take care of you. You two go ahead. Hurry up! Is... is your mother ill? <laughs> it's... it's not that. This is... this is where they hanged my father. The trial begins. The judges, brother of Stephen, King of the English, the Right Reverend Bishop Henry of Winchester, Her Highness, the Countess Lady Aliena of Shiring. Presiding over the trial, the Right Reverend Bishop of Shiring and Kingsbridge, Waleron by God. Please. The church is not without fault. We have gathered here today before the eyes of God to accuse one of our own. He wrote in his book that the church and the papacy are not necessary as intercessors between God and man that God is in man, that all men are equal, and that each sinner is as close to our Lord as the Pope himself. Now, 
We ask God for his judgment. For his is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Not ours, and not yours. You stand accused of heresy. Philip of Gwyneth, how do you plead? Answer! Prior, respond to Bishop Waleron. I am guilty. I am deeply saddened. It may come as a surprise to you, but we had hoped to make you Bishop of Kingsbridge. Why has it come to this, Philip? In part, I am to blame. I supported Philip in his early years. I demand that Philip be removed from his position of prior immediately. No! And that he remain in captivity until such time that Shiring and all of England have healed from the poisonous words he has dispersed. No! What? Yes? Do you not agree with the church as well, my lady? You are accusing Philip because he has defied you. I made him prior, and grateful he was not. But no, I accuse him because his teachings are false. And I intend to prove that Philip's decisions have been more than misguided in the past. Call in Remedius. The Prior of Shiring. Father Remedius. My Bishop. Tell the court, Remedius, what you have told me. For many years, I served as Sub-Prior of Kingsbridge. First for Prior James, then for the accused. What was your first impression of him? I was offended by his bluntness and accusations during the chapter discussions. What else? Prior Philip did not hesitate to give refuge to the people fleeing Earl's Castle in the winter that our king died. Is that not a good deed? A true Christian act? You do not know him as well as you think you do, Lady Aliena. Today, that will change. Then, on the day of our first fleece fair, we were attacked. I heard. It was terrible. I tried to soothe a woman's pain by reading the scripture to her. Our master builder's wife tried to put a spell on her with poisonous herbs. And Philip intervened? Yes. He pushed me aside and gave the woman poison. He should have a supporting of witch. It is worse than I thought. It was no poison. And then there was the day the Virgin Mary's statue arrived in Kingsbridge. I did not believe it was a miracle. Clearly, it is a miracle. I hear of many who were healed in Kingsbridge. Yes! Amen! Amen. Oh, Mary, bless us all! Well, I soon realized it was a true miracle, but Philip did not. He was only after the money people donated at the Virgin Shrine. That is why I left. I believe there is one more thing you have not told us about. Something very important. Yes. Philip has fathered a child! Unbelievable! I knew it! A son. And he raised him in the priory. 
He is guilty! Jonathan of Kingsbridge, step forward. This is preposterous! Is it? Is this true? Are you Philip's son? Answer the question, Jonathan of Kingsbridge. Philip has always been like a father to me. But he's not my father. How do you know that? He told me. And how do you know he spoke the truth? Speak! Answer the bishop. Philip would never lie. He told me that I was found in the woods. In the woods? Is this true, Philip? Or are you lying? Well, you told the story so many times. He was abandoned in the woods. My brother found him. Your brother? Had he not been working for Earl Robert of Gloucester? You have not seen him in a long time now, have you? Let us ask your brother if your stories are true. Francis, what happened to you? This is not your fault. He does this to hurt you. My God. Francis of Gwyneth. He was arrested more than 15 years ago. <sighs> he was arrested for conspiring against his own master, Earl Robert. Remove the prisoner. Philip told me himself, and I told Earl Robert. For God and the Church cannot take sides in these conflicts. Only one brother has been tried so far, but both of them conspired against Earl Robert. And his ally, Earl Bartholomew, your father, Lady Aliena. Philip took in all those refugees years ago because he was to blame for their fate. As he was for yours when you lost your father and your earldom. That, Lady Aliena, is the man you are trying to protect. Well? I know that he is a troubled man. We've all had to make hard decisions. Decisions that seemed right at the time. When indeed, they were terrible mistakes. I am thankful that I was forgiven when I made a mistake. Now I forgive him. <laughs> Let us now return to the problem at hand. There is a man who witnessed how Jonathan was found in the forest. A man who can shed light on who Jonathan's father really is. And who is that? My husband. Step forward. What is your name? He is the master builder of Kingsbridge. Have you lost your courage? No, I have not. You know well why it would be hard for me to face you. They call me Jack, after my father. My name is Jack Jackson. Yes, we have met before. How old were you when you allegedly saw Jonathan as a child in the woods? 
12. But I know what I saw. Philip told the truth. Tch, you were a child. And what were you doing there, in the woods? I was living in the forest, with my mother. They were outlaws. Prior Remigius is the most trustworthy witness we've seen today, and his statement was quite damning to Philip. The distant memories of an outlaw child cannot convince me otherwise. He fathered a child! Let him go! No! He would never do that! And yet, Lady Aliena is right. We do not know enough to judge him as harshly as you proposed, Bishop Waleron. You are right, Bishop Henry. As I said, it is not up to us to judge this man. Philip of Gwyneth has admitted part of his guilt, but how guilty is he? We ask God for his judgment. As Bishop of Kingsbridge and Shiring, I demand an ordeal by fire. This is madness! Philip of Gwyneth will be tried and judged at the stake. If he is innocent, God will save him from the flames. If he is not, then he will burn as the heretic and sinner God has declared him to be. No! Whaler and by God! Not this time! It's her. I saw the child and Francis. I was there. Philip is not the child's father. He is a fool, but he is a good man. Then who is the father? It is me. They are all in this together. This woman is a witch and an outlaw, living in sin with a thief. He was hanged in Shiring 30 years ago. He was not a thief. He was a good man. You've murdered him, Waleran by God. What is this nonsense? He was a thief. He stole a golden chalice and melted it down and sold it. What chalice? The chalice of the Eucharist. He stole it from the Cathedral of Kingsbridge. Sacrilege. Yes, Prior James of Kingsbridge caught him red-handed. Is that the chalice? You said it was melted down and sold. Fall not for their lies. That could be any chalice. This does not prove a thing. Where did you find this chalice? In a secret chamber. We believe Prior James hid it because he felt guilty for falsely accusing Jack's father. What proof do you have? He told me, the night the cathedral burned down, I was there, I saw him. Prior James died weeks before that. No, he did not. Bishop Henry, he speaks the truth. Order! I will give you until sunset to produce a witness who can prove your accusations against Bishop Waleran. Not just this chalice. If you fail to do this, I will make sure you are tried for defamation. Philip of Gwyneth, you will stay under arrest. The trial recommences at sunset. We need a witness. What are you doing there? I've seen you draw up plans for a cathedral. Maybe we can do something similar to find our witness. 
Let's see. Your father. He looks just like you. My grandmother said he did. And Bishop Waleran. What are the connections? Maybe, by exploring them, we can find a witness. Good idea. Jack's father. If he was still with us, he could be our witness. Maybe he still can. Bishop Waleran is at the center of all this. Mother says Waleran was behind my father's death. And she said he wasn't alone. There were three men responsible for your father's death. Bishop Waleran, Percy Hamley, back then he was the Sheriff of Shiring, and Prior James of Kingsbridge. If they were all there, then they were all witnesses. And only Waleran still alive. Hardly a coincidence. Why would these three men work together to falsely accuse your father? Hmm. He was on the white ship. No one survived that night. No one lived to tell the story. Yes. He was the sole survivor. And then they killed him. But why? James was the prior of Kingsbridge. That's where they say your father stole the chalice, melted it and sold it. But we know that's not true. As we found it, Philip recognized the chalice. But Bishop Henry wants a witness. The chalice isn't enough. But it's an important lead for us. I think we're getting closer. <laughs> James claimed that your father had stolen the chalice and sold it. But instead, James himself hid it in Kingsbridge, in the crypt. We found his scourge in a bed down there. That secret chamber is important. We're close. Everyone thought Prior James was dead, that he broke into the ice, and now we know he was hidden away. Why did his monks believe he was dead? Sub-Prior Remigius told everyone he had found James' rosary by the river, so everyone thought the body had been washed away. They buried an empty casket. But how is Remigius involved? Philip told me that Remigius was there when Waleran made Philip prior. Waleran and Remigius knew each other. That explains why Waleran later made Remigius prior of Shiring. And Remigius recognized my mother when we arrived in Kingsbridge. He must have been there at the time my father was arrested. I think Remigius knows all about this. Is it possible that Waleran told Remigius to make Prior James disappear when James began to talk about what they'd done? When James started talking to the devil. But for some reason, Remigius hid him away. But Waleran never knew. Yes, that explains why he really didn't believe you. When you said you had seen James in the fire. Where James died, after all. And Remigius thought no one knew. We have to find Remigius. He's our witness. Let's hurry. It's getting dark already. The trial will continue soon. People know you two. You shouldn't walk around showering like that. Ah. Uh, he's right. I'll go look for him. Hmm. All right. Take care of yourself. And Jonathan. Yes? We will talk later about what was said today. About Tom? All right. Remigius, now where are you?
No one may approach the pyre. Why not? Bishop Henry's orders. Oh, all right. Do you want to go in, Father? No, not yet. Thank you. Are you not with Prior Philip? Yes, I am. I pray they'll set him free. He's a good man. He is a heretic! You're fools! Look at yourselves! Who are you to judge a man who has never hurt anyone? Forgive them, Father. We don't judge him, but God will! Remedius? I don't think he's here. Wait, was that him? I think I saw him. Hello? The door's open. Is anyone there? You had one task. By God! No! Our bishop is very... very... displeased. <gasps> no! What are you doing? I'm doing what is asked of me. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> no, stay away. <laughs> this does not concern you. No. Who told you to do this? No one. I, uh... Why did he do this to you? I will tell you. I will tell everyone. Do you have a witness? Father Remigius, Prior of Shiring. Where is Timothy? What they told you is true. Bishop Whaleron wanted the jongleur Jacques Cherbourg dead. He ordered our Prior James to frame him. And so he did. This is a lie! Is it? James lost his mind because of what he did for you. He was about to tell everyone the truth. And then you ordered me to kill him. Nonsense. Let him speak. I couldn't do it. I hit him, but he died in the fire. Jack saw him. It was him. I found the bones after the fire. And I buried them. You should put an end to this, Henry. You really should. Why would I? You should stop this for your own sake. You knew about all this. Why would I care if that jongleur lived or died? Your brother cared. The jongleur survived the sinking of the white ship. He saw how your brother's men killed the king's family so that he could take the throne. <laughs> this is preposterous! Bishop Henry and King Stephen ordered us to kill the man. <gasps> you want the truth? That's the truth! Right there! It is not! Waleron is a liar! Regan Hamley, 
Who is she? I have waited long enough for this day. It is time I raise my voice. The woman, Ellen, she spoke the truth. Three men were responsible for the death of the jongleur. James, the prior of Kingsbridge. The sheriff, my husband, Percy Hamley. But it was Waleron who was behind it. And only Waleron. No! He had heard rumors about the White Ship, about our king. He had hoped to win the king's favor by hanging an innocent man. But it was not just me. They all knew. Take him away. This is for taking my husband's life. It was Waleran! Oh, we did it. It's over. Yes, it's over. Thank you, Lady Hamley. This monk must learn his lesson. The Pope would agree. This trial is not over. Philip has admitted to heresy. He challenged the teachings and the authority of the Church. The ordeal of fire will take place. To show that the Church is not above God. To show that my brother, the King of the English, is not above God. Not we, but God, shall judge this man. And forgive us this is madness! We have forgiven our no! He can't do this! But Philip! From evil. No! You cannot do this! This is now a matter of the church, Lady Aliena. My brother, the king, and I accepted the traitor Waleron into our midst. We were fools and sinners, even if we did not know. I pray that our Lord will save Philip from these flames, for his salvation shall be a salvation for all of us sinners. O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Light the fire! My God, then... There must be something we can do! Stop this madness!
Ah, Philip. It is so good to see you, Jonathan. Tell me, how are things at St. John in the Forest? Francis is well. That is wonderful. Yes, he enjoys the life there. You look worried, Jonathan. Well, you have a visitor. He just arrived. Is that not a good thing, Jonathan? Who is it? That is just it. I wasn't sure if you wanted to see him. It has been a long time. Ah, yes, it has. I had to know. Know what? The truth is, I never saw God or the devil. Have you? Oh, Lord. Deliver us from evil. Our Father, who art in heaven, God, there, hallowed be thy name. There must be something we can do. Come, Stop this madness! Thy will be done on earth as it is Are in you heaven. blind? Do you not know that a fire will burn any man? No matter who he is! Why are you doing this? After Waylon's words, there is doubt in their hearts about my motives. About my brothers. No words can erase that doubt, but God can. Our Lord is a cleansing fire. <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> it's a miracle. A miracle? He is a man. God is here. Is this possible? It's all a matter of perspective. We have to stop this! No, Jack! Come. My God. No, but that's what they see. That's what they believe. The water. It's... it's dowsing the flames. It's... it's a trick. To them, it's a miracle. The justice of our church. I believe Philip understands that now. His book will be destroyed. If you or your friends ever mention the white ship again, I promise you will take prior Philip's place. And God will not be as forgiving. Their faith in you and your church is restored. I say it was worth sparing that monk's life. Promise me that Waleran will suffer. Philip? Hmm? Yes? Did you see God? Did he save you that night? Waleran needed to find him himself, so I did not tell him. Philip is back. Philip! Philip! We're glad you're back. Did you walk all the way again? Just part of it. Old fool. Ellen stayed in Kingsbridge, together with Tom. I thought I had lost God, that he did not watch over us. But now I see him every day. He is in the good we do, in how we show our love.
Jack's hands had become rough, his hair gray. But his eyes still burned bright like hot coals. It's good to see you. Aliena's gaze could be as stern as her father's had been. But her heart and wit made her a leader people did not follow out of fear, but out of respect and loyalty. Jonathan told us you had a visitor. Just an old friend. What do you think of this window? Jonathan came to look more and more like his father, Tom. As prior of Kingsbridge, he is also a builder of sorts. I use mostly warm colours. What good are the large windows if it feels cold? Sally is as stubborn and as gifted as her parents. It is her stained glass windows the light is falling through. She has children of her own now. And I'd like to show you the plans for the new cloister. Tommy will be the next master builder and is as silent as his grandfather was. Once, I heard him admonish his father to be more serious at work. Jack only smiled. He knew Tommy was right. Martha stayed in Kingsbridge as well. She was always there for every one of us. Is the judge done now? I don't know. Why don't you ask him yourself? Is the church done now? <laughs> it will never be done. Not in my lifetime. Not in yours. Remember us for what we did. For who we were. And maybe for what we tried to be. And when you turn your eyes to our cathedral, maybe you will see yourself.